Every chess master was once a beginner. Ich möchte dich fragen, möchtest du meine Frau werden? Ja. After a super long day, after the end of the round robins, two cycles, we have finally the winner of the tie breaks, uh, who is getting the four sport, Vincent Keimer. Congratulations. Thank you. It was a super long, super exhausting day for you. How was the round robin cycle? We saw so many misses, like you should have won so many games. How, how do you evaluate your performance? Yeah, of course, it was kind of painful, yeah, because it, I didn't feel like the general level was the issue in this tournament for me, but simply like I gave away so many points basically in one move, at least five half points, which is by far too much in a 10 round uh, tournament. So of course I was like already happy to be able to fight to get the match against, I think Maxime tomorrow, yeah, for right. uh, place number three. And yeah, I mean, okay, against Magnus today was tough again, but I managed to finally win one game against Ding, which was enough to get to the tie breaks. And then of mm -hmm. course I was like also, first of all, I finally won my first game. And in the tie breaks, I'm sure that, especially my game against Ding was everything else than clean. But you know, sometimes you play a great game and you don't win, or you can also play like a weird game and still <laughs> win the game. So yeah, in the end, I'm just happy. I managed to finally have like a day with a good result and then we'll hope, see, uh, look forward to the great fight tomorrow. Uh, at the beginning of the tournament, you were so many times down on the clock. Was there like uh, adjustment you needed for this special format? Yeah, I think that's just in general my <laughs> style. Like I normally like to control things a little bit before the middle game or in the middle game, and then like start to play from there. And you know, it was weird that I think my first game against Maxine that I could have won, I didn't win because of the time. And then against Ding, I made the mistake to play too quickly. Yeah, like seven minutes in the decisive moment and of course if I spent one minute I would never make the mistake I made but yeah I think that's just something you like I was yeah <laughs> not a good idea to uh, this time management but in general I think it's kind of tough this time control because it's a time control I think pretty much no one has ever really played and it's not really rapid and also not really mm -hmm. classical so we have this semi-long games which is kind of tricky to adjust to and uh, I think in general, the level was actually quite good in the tournament, simply that, mm -hmm. yeah, like from my side, there were by far too many one-move blunders. Vincent, uh, Grand Catches Open and Classic is a very special place for you. Last time you were playing here after you won the Grand Catches Open 2018, you were playing here as an international master with a rating slightly about 2,500. Now you're here at top 20 of the world. Uh, how does it feel? Like, how special this place for you? Yeah, it's really great to be back. I mean, this is, it's not just any other tournament for me, that's for sure. I mean, I think it's fair to say that this was kind of the start of my professional chess career, winning this tournament in 2018 here. And it's also the tournament that started to make me really like, more popular internationally. So yeah, it has had a great impact and I also really just enjoy playing here. Uh, so this year there is a new uh, record, more than 2,600 participants at uh, the Grand Chess Open and Classic all together. Uh, how is important it for the world of chess, for the German chess? I think it's very good, yeah. I think it really shows that even after such a long break we have, there are even more participants than before, mm -hmm. which really shows that this is like a tournament that really pretty much everybody wants to play. 
and it's just a great atmosphere, yeah, like the hall and uh, visitors mm -hmm. also, a lot of visitors as well, not only players, but also for the open players who maybe not be that ambitious, they can just play and also follow all games, it's a place to meet for everyone, so it's a yeah, great tournament. Vincent, what are your plans for the next uh, couple of weeks? Are you going to follow candidates and uh, what are you going to play, some tournaments? Yeah, for sure I'm going to follow <laughs> the candidates, that's not a question. Um, but yeah, except for that, I think I'm going to focus on training a little bit right mm -hmm. now to like prepare for the upcoming tournaments. Do you have some favorites for you and the candidates? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really tough to say because, of course, they're like the established favorites like Hikaru and Fabiano. But, for example, like all the young Indians, they, I think it would be wrong to say that they, have not, they don't have a chance. Yeah, of course, they don't really have the experience as much as the others, but still, you know... I'm, I wouldn't exclude the possibility that they might also have like a great tournament and might play for the win. So yeah, we will see. What are your um, expectations from the future? Do you want to play the next candidates? Because you had kind of a chance, yeah, if you beat Magnus at the World Cup, you might have gotten to these candidates. Yeah, of course, everybody wants to play <laughs> the candidates, but it's like there are only eight spots available. So, you know, even if you take the best of the best, not everybody can play there. So, yeah, of course, that's kind of a goal, but it's not really something you can plan with because they're like, yeah, it's also pretty far away still, but certainly that's the goal I'm trying to achieve. Thank you so much, Vincent. Best of luck tomorrow uh, for a fight for the, first, for the third spot against Maxim. Thank you.
Hello everybody and welcome. This is the final day of this year's Grenka Chess Classic. We yesterday saw the playoffs for the final positions of the double round robin tournament and today is crunch time because this is where we actually get the deciding matches. Uh, we've got the main event, Magnus Carlsen against Richard Rapport. Uh, they will face each other in a two-game match with the same time control as been for the whole tournament, 45 minutes plus 10 seconds. If that's then tied, uh, we'll go to the 10-minute time control, then the five-minute, and then finally Armageddon. And we'll also have uh, the playoffs for places uh, three and five with uh, Vincent Keimer playing against Maxim Vashilagrav for third, and Ding playing Fridman for fifth. I'm joined once again by the one and only. Well, well I was, was going to come up. <laughs> no, I didn't forget your name. I was coming up with a really cool introduction. Ah, okay, sorry. The man who can be considered one of the greatest from the Netherlands. I was going to say the greatest. Not even close. Are you the greatest? No, no, I mean, I'm not even close. Uh, As one of the greatest? Yeah. I mean, one of, let's say, it depends how long, but of course we have a world champion from the Netherlands. I know, you've got Uwe, you've got Diane Timmer. And we Timmer, who has a uh, massively better track record. He's world, world number two for, uh, like, proper world number two, and won 
so many tournaments, played the World Championship, sort of a World Championship final against yeah. Karpov at the time yeah. they the split cycle. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a lot more achievements to his name. Uh, and then there are others, of but course. But I think the maybe third spot of the best dash, dash, dash players ever, maybe third spot. Uh, well, is, is maybe Irwin, Irwin is above you. Uh, yeah, Luki okay. Boy. Okay, if you start looking at the you know, ca Boy character and you. personal integrity, then certainly I, I'm looking in the top ten. I'd put Daniel Stelwagen above you, but that's just each to their own. No, Anish Giri, ladies and gentlemen, uh, fantastic. Uh, obviously player, great commentator. If things start to go really bad on the board, I think you've got a great career in the commentary business. And of course, fantastic content creator. Get his Chessable course now. Wow. Available on Chessable. We'll get that out the way real quick. And also get mine. Like, buy mine. What are your courses? Or I've got courses? one on One Night C3. Oh, I remember, yes, yes. The uh, the, the it famous. might be weird because the thing is you transpose so often into something else, don't yeah, you? Yeah, but I offer a lot of novelties where you avoid the main lines. So I've got some really cool little ideas which you can find. I mean, one nice three move like in it's, the course. It's kind of a. It's not fully independent that move, no. It's not fully independent, but there are there are. Let's say I go knight of six. Like what are you gonna do? Yeah, for example, if I go e4 there. I go e5. It's basically yeah. like a Vienna. Right. So then I offer a solution there, and yeah. I, offer, I offer solutions everywhere. I'm a solution provider. No, I understand. You, you first create a problem, which is one nice three, and then you offer solutions. So to solve <laughs> the, the problem after that. It's a great course. Okay, what, else, what else? What else? And I also have a course on one b6 against everything. Oh yeah, I remember that. I actually had the e4 course for white, and right. then I was dealing with your. Uh, Yes, yeah, and the editor wrote me that, you know, Laura Strand, he offers this D5, you D5 kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, and it's good. Yeah, Go and get the courses, get the Anish's courses, you will improve your chess and build an opening repertoire. Now, with the advertising out the way, we are waiting for the players, and of course, as per usual, we've got Mr. Sven Noppers, the tournament organiser, who is uh, currently, uh, well, he is... Uh, Spitting some bars. As yeah, said. he's saying a few words. There's Christian Bossett there who likes to block the camera. Apart from that, great guy. Uh, and Sven is talking about the final day's action. Uh, Sven has been a staple of this tournament for years and years and years. And for chess in general, without his efforts, uh, there wouldn't be this tournament. Simple as that. Sven is the He is running the show, basically. Yeah, he is Mist the boss. Running man. The show. He yeah. is the boss man. And talking about the boss man, Mr. Ding Liren, coming in world champion, having just the most terrible time. Just cannot find any form. Cannot, uh, in any way, sort of uh, manage to stabilize. Finished yesterday with the window, so he, he, he did. The last winner uh, was Ding, and he can try and take the momentum and finish on a high once again, and uh, beat Daniel Friedman. That is his goal for today. Yeah, his only goal is to just try and get some confidence back. He should be beating Daniel Friedman on paper in two 45-minute games, but as we've seen, Ding did not win a single 45-minute game. Daniel is well prepared and yeah. is going to fight. Daniel is playing good, solid chess. He's happy with the way he's playing, and rightly so. Yeah, I think Daniel's chess level is one of the most stable things. He's, uh, he's playing so many tournaments, and he's just very, very stable. He's just good chess. And, uh, you know, if Ding brings his A game, he's going to be uh, KO, but if he doesn't, then Daniel is going to definitely use his chances. Totally agree. And there we have. The next best thing out of Germany, uh, well, the best thing in Germany since Franz Beckenbauer, um, maybe not, I mean, there, there are some people that would <laughs> maybe debate that, but uh, yes, we've got the boy wonder himself, the winner of the Grenger Open a few years ago, that is when he really, he was already being talked about, but when Vincent won the Grenker Open main, about what was it about five years ago now something yeah like it was that. a while ago huh? yeah uh, as a young boy 14 years old people understood that this was a mega talent and people were not disappointed vincent has risen through the rankings uh, nearly reached 2750 not even 20 years old fantastic player mature confident player playing against the french number one mr mbl who well 
he needs no introduction of course he's been a top player now for um, actually he was so high rated when he was young we could even think that I mean, it could be 15 years already at the time. Well, I think um, my uh, rating has been very close to his for a long, long period of time. So I've, I've been playing him for many, many, many years, I think, around 2010, 2015 is when, uh, you know, mm -hmm. he uh, broke through to, to the very top and stayed there ever since. Yeah, indeed. And talking of breakthroughs, Richie Rapport, great tournament. He had one bad day where he lost two games, but apart from that, he's bounced back. He's shown some great chess, uh, good calculation, um, and he's playing against well, a man who certainly needs no introduction. The goat, Magnus Carlsen, who again is fighting for another title. You see a full cycle of life there. Yesterday, the first move was made by uh, a couple who just got engaged, and now the first move is going to be made by some children. That's right. Beautiful, isn't it? By the way, check that out, guys. If you didn't see that, that will be on the YouTube channel, on uh, GrenkaChess.com. We had a momentous occasion where Ilya Schneider and his girlfriend got engaged live on the stage before the round. A very Beautiful gesture. Touching moment. Very touching. Very touching. Um, so we are happy to see that. Now, uh, we've got some young... Here we go. Oh, oh, Both oh, oh. playing the same move. <laughs> Too much enthusiasm. <laughs> Too much enthusiasm. All the way to e5. Fantastic. e2, e5, go. by the way, would be a bad move. Because then after d6, black undermines immediately the, the pawn. The pawn center. Indeed. e2, e4 is, uh, is a better one. And the games are going to kick off, and indeed, Magnus is going with pawn to e4. Hmm. Let's see how Mr. Rapport. Awaiting the Benoni, awaiting the Benoni. Uh, Richie is already surprised. He was counting on 1d4, where he thought to repeat the Benoni or not. Definitely made some plans. And now e4, and Richie is smiling. He has something not yet planned, but he is not sure whether he should spring that on the world champion. No, on the world champion. Okay, we'll trap it on this champion. Well. Wow, wow, we wow. Yeah, the French is one of the main openings of Richard, I think. Uh, he also recommended that to Ding in the World Championship match, and Ding, uh, you know, impl employed it as well. So. Are we going to see a Tarash again? Because I think Magnus mm. played a Tarash. That is true, right? he, did, he did yesterday, but I guess now he's no. switching to Knight C3. Uh, probably a V number of sorts is going to come. Yeah, Bishop D4. Okay. E5 probably is happening. C5, A3, this main line. Okay, e5, c5, we've got the Vinava. There was uh, this game between Magnus and Richard in the World uh, Blitz Championship a year ago. Uh -huh. One of the most fascinating games ever, they, they call it. Um, the, you know, there's a lot of uh, content around that game, some epic uh, twists and turns, a lot of good videos you can find online on, the, on that game. Um, yeah, now critical moment, Richard. Uh, Queen c7, it is the, the old main line. Probably you have to do it nowadays. There are some options like castle knight f5, but they're supposed to be dubious these days. So queen c7 or cd, of course, is also another move order to get the same. So my actually, I, I have a French course, and mm -hmm. in my French course, I go queen c7. Okay. But cd4 first is also a valid order. The point being, if you take yeah, it's a transpo after take because rook g8, queen h7, queen c7. The difference is in some sidelines, not in the main. In the main line, is the same thing. Okay. So Rich taking his time because you know both make uh, make sense. Oh, um, interesting developments on the other boards uh, as well. Okay. So Daniel Friedman playing a, a sideline against the Catalan, 96 to to a5. That's uh, uh, kind of a fashionable uh, sideline with Fabi. Fabi actually played it against Ding in um, a Grand Chess Tour tournament last year. Surprising that Daniel decided to repeat it. So the, the point is queen c2, b6. But I guess Daniel believes that the line is just uh, sound. And so he thinks that even if Ding is prepared, he'll still manage. Quite cool, quite cool. Because the traditional main lines of knight c6 is to develop the c8 bishop with bishop d7, bishop c6, mm -hmm. move eight. Um, yeah, instead of move move earlier. 
Yeah, this bishop d7 and queen c4, bishop c6 maneuver. It's not artificial, but uh, not, so, not so bad. And then the b8 knight uh, finds itself employed via d7 or via a6 after a5 as well sometimes. But uh, Friedman chooses another approach. It's 96, 95, yeah, you want to fianchetto the bishop from c8 with b6. Some cool lines are going to ensue. I think we'll it's let, kind of uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll let the players uh, take their time, but eventually some interesting stuff is going to come. Vincent against Maxim, yeah. This is also... Yep, this position in English four knights with d4. Oh, okay, okay. This is some um, old stuff that Maxim used to play a lot. I, I thought he sort of left this territory, but uh, in this tournament he seems to be back to his old ways. After the QGA... Um, Backfired very badly. He played the QC, his Queen's Gambit accepted against uh, against Vincent, I think, mm -hmm. in the first portion of the tournament, and he suffered in a horrible, horrible night end game. I don't know if you remember. And I think he I maybe decided that okay, this whole QGA thing, let's put it on hold. Let's go back to the Greenfield uh, anti Greenfield roads, and here we have sort of an anti anti Greenfield kind of position. Uh, yeah, Black has a choice here. Many different options. Maxim used to play. He denied d4, dc, I think. That's what he used to play. But e6 is another main line. cd, and now knight d5 was the main move, but you can also go for the tarash with ed, which is fashionable nowadays. But I think Maxim will take the knight. I think he does knight takes. He's thinking, he's thinking though. Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit dry, isn't This it? leads to some uh, bishop endgame. Yeah, yeah some this, this is the one where... CD knight d4, and yeah. c take, take bishop before. It was, that was Everything the, all is the rage, yeah. Yeah, but it, it's, the, it's not fun at all, but uh, Vincent likes it with white. He likes this kind of... Uh, I think Peter Lico suffered with black a lot mm. in those positions. I remember he lost one important game there. And I think Peter probably told him that, okay, it's worth, uh, worth trying. And Maxim doesn't like such endgames. He doesn't like passive endgames. So Maxim actually went for ED. A very surprising choice um, from Maxim. I don't think he he played this Tarash before. Uh, many people did. I played it with Black. Uh, Fabiana played it a few times. I don't recall Maxim ever playing it. But it's a very trendy thing, this Tarash. Yeah, after Bishop G2. Na every, named after Tarash, yeah. Everybody and their dog has played this move, the so-called Dubov uh, variation. Uh, which has become very fashionable, where it looks as though you're losing a pawn on d5, like so, but the point is... Bishop e6, I think. Is it bishop e6? Yeah, yeah, I think bishop e6 is the main move, yeah. After bishop e6, if you... Some compensation would, is there, yeah? Yeah, if, you, activity. if you take, you can take the queen, and basically, even though you're a pawn down here with black, you've got amazing uh, yeah. activity here. Yeah, yeah, plenty of activity. A king misplaced. Vincent goes for a3, which is uh, the move he's played before. Mm -hmm. I think he played this against me. Actually, I think I, yes, I, th I think I played this against him simply in some uh, rapid event. I think he played a3 against me. And uh, then, yeah, Black has choice to go c4 or cd94 bishop c5. The idea of a3 is that after cd94 bishop c5, you want to go bishop e3. And after queen b6, which would now be a mistake, because now you have knight a4. Mm -hmm. And with the bishop on g2 instead of a3, black has queen before check. So this is the point. And now you have b4, and now you win the piece. So queen b6 is not possible. That's the point of a3. That's a cute idea. Uh, but, uh, of course, instead of queen b6, queen b6 white, black can do something else, and there is uh, a lot of debate there. And c4 here is also principled. M most of the engines prefer c4, but that leads to very strategically complex mm -hmm. positions. Uh, that not everybody uh, likes. Meanwhile, in the rapport game, we're getting a typical closed win number position. There's also what I was uh, going for in my course. These kind of positions, I looked at them a lot. They are really uh, fascinating. This queen a5 move was actually... We saw this already once, I think, this tournament, mm -hmm. bishop yes. e3, queen a4. Yeah, against, uh, against Maxime Machila Graf, right? Yeah. But queen a5 move is always clever. You provoke this bishop to d2, because the bishop eventually wants to go back to c1 sure. to a3. So queen a5 uh, gains tempo. And in my course, yeah, that was a theme uh, very often. Rook g8, I don't know if uh, yeah, this is the knight move. 5 or rook g8, I think both are possible. I remember when I was uh, analyzing it for the course, I was hesitating which one to go for, I think. I think both were interesting. Uh, rook g8, yeah, it's not a problem because what black anyway wants to castle long usually. So the losing the right of castling is not an issue. 
um, for the most part. A4, knight c6. Richie is very experienced in these positions, and although Magnus is a, a brilliant player, this is a very specific position. It's a very mm. specific position, and I'm curious to see how Magnus will handle it and how deeply he has prepared this uh, position, because it's very hard to play these uh, positions without uh, knowing the right, the right plans and Queen H3. having the experience. Uh -huh, no, it probably, Magnus probably yeah. is in prep, yeah. Well, he must be in prep because there was already a game here. Yes. And there was one ridiculous idea by the computer that Jan and I were just like Queen F4, Bishop D7, and the computer wanted to go Bishop G4, which yes. is. Yes, that's the main it, thing. Yeah. It's probably just. Knight of five, yeah. It's just preventing Knight F5. And it's so. Was it here or with the Knight already on F5? Or you hit it? No, no, before. It was exactly, it was here, yeah? yeah? Bishop mm -hmm. G4. Because with the knight on f5 instead of rook g8, this was also a thing. Right. Queen five, bishop g4, and then if knight comes to f5, you can even chop it off and uh, go for the dark squares. Yeah. Queen h3, very cool idea. Uh, I mean, looks very mysterious. I don't know well, how okay, cool. So when he goes h6, what is the idea? Maybe bishop h5, or again, your bishop, uh, yeah, maybe bishop h5 is nice to uh, prevent black from castling uh, long. And uh, if you go rook f8 at some point, bishop g7, let's say 92. If you go rook f8, then maybe I can target the g7 pawn. With the queen. So queen g3. Queen g3, knight f5. Yeah, and that would maybe some queen. F actually, queen f. You have a queen f3. And if long castle, then what? Probably just wants to take. No way you can take. I think you can. Oh, and a king b8, queen h5. Yeah, king b8, queen h5. <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's the idea. That's how you prevent one castle. Not by hitting G7, but by hitting F7. But this is such an unbelievable. That's the prep, by the way. This is, this is, this, this is likely 100%. to come. This is likely to come. This is yeah, prep. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because as black, I'm sure, you really think that you can give up the F7 pawn. Because the queen is so pinned there. Uh, but this queen H5 unpins it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm really surprised that this pawn sack of F7 is not uh, okay for black. Really surprised. Incredible prep, and again, just illustrates how important the use of modern day engines are because these, I mean, this idea here would be laughed at a few years ago, right? Queen f3? No, you can't play queen f3, then self pin. This looks yeah, absolutely catastrophic. Without computer, catastrophic. I mean, I, if you ask me here, like three seconds for like position, do you say if it G6? works or not? I think it just doesn't work for, for white. You would just say you're gonna, you're gonna no, lose. The risk is too high. You might lose the bishop somewhere. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't even be analyzed thoroughly back Probably in the not, day. No, it no. would just be said that you cannot play like this. You had, of course, some people back in the day who were very greedy, loved their pawns. They would analyze this. You, ha it's, you had those greedy people. I, they, 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 they were, I mean, Yasser. <laughs> <laughs> Yasser's still around, still as greedy as ever. There's uh, Yasser, there's um, Victor used to love yeah, stealing. Yeah, Korshno is famous. famous loved the pawn. Uh, from uh, uh, our Dutch player, Sergei Tivyakov. Oh, he loves a pawn. He loves pawns. I mean, yeah, he'll he kill loves for a pawn. A pawn. Yeah, yeah. Who else loves a pawn from? Uh, Wang, okay, Wang Yu. I don't know if, uh, like, why, Wang Yu, yeah. why I remember it now, but Wang Yu at some point uh, was, uh, you know, top 10 player. Uh, for a short period of time, was playing all the top tournaments and doing it quite well for somehow a short period of time. Then he, uh, now he switched to coaching, but a very gifted player from China. Wang Yu loved his pawns too. He loved taking and would never give a pawn. No. Also, he would never give a pawn. I don't really trust people like that in general. I, I you think they're hiding something, yeah? I just think, what kind of life must you lead away from the chessboard? You take a pawn, you never give it back. What kind of no, tell me what about kind it. No of idea. psychopath, no, psychopath are you? Yes, no, no, I'm not. I'm not no, I don't mind if you if you don't like if you don't like giving all your pawns. That's mm. degenerate behavior. Sure, okay. I get that, yeah. but just somewhere in the middle, I can get on with that. Sometimes you take it, sometimes you don't. But to take it all the time, come on. Yeah, yeah no, it's, What uh, kind of life? Shout out to Yasser if you're watching. <laughs> President of the Pawn Grabbing Society, Mr. Yasser Sarah. Yeah, and what we learned nowadays, of course, with the computer, is that chess should not be played like that. You should right. not always take or not take. We learned that, you know, it's not a matter of principle. Like sometimes it's good to take, sometimes it's not good to take. It depends. And Magnus's idea yeah, coming happening. to it's happening. fruition. It's happening. Gorgeous idea. Sometimes he likes to fake that he, he is not in book, but this time it seems he he doesn't want to do that. 
too much. He loves being in prep. Yeah. Um, but he hates when the opponent is prepped, you know? He doesn't, he doesn't want it fair. He wants that uh, he's the one who is prepped. Yeah, he loves, he loves being in prep. Yeah, he loves. And he, he loves having a good position as well in prep, which is what he's got. Not necessarily. But now he's got a really. Good, I think he, I think he doesn't mind a bad position in prep too, but uh, he prefers a good one. But probably. come on, Wh why is this just good for why? Oh, this is good. This is good. Uh, this is probably good because again, the rook of eight on castle that's the way to go. And if that doesn't work, if I were Richie, by the way, I would probably go for a long castle and just see what comes here. I mean, I don't think g6 is the like for me. I know that Black can play g6, and Richie has played g6 in similar positions. But it's such a massive strategic concession. Such a massive concession, this g6 well, move. Yeah, this is just not a playable move. Uh, it's, it's, play it's very playable, I think. Really? Very, yeah, nowadays they play like that. Richie and had the. Uh, and if I go here, you. No, you just, doesn't mean just play. I mean, Rook h8 or. You just Rook h8? Really? He didn't h5. Oh, h5 Rook gives h8, up one queen more square. Queen h3 or Queen h4? Yeah, well, it's, uh, they play sometimes Rook h7 in these positions and they go long castle. And then they go rook f8, knight g8, f5. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they go for this rook f8, knight g8, f5 plan. And uh, this year are only helping me. I'm going to go rook h7. Rook h7? Yeah, this, that's what they do. I've seen such positions before. And then they go knight g8. Okay, you should go h4, I guess. Uh, yeah, knight g8. Queen draws back. And then I think I can already go f5, ef, rook f8, right? Or f6. <laughs> no, they, sometimes they go f6, maybe. Not even better to not allow any. Maybe yeah, I don't know. Victor Korchnoi is turning in his grave as we speak. Yeah, but uh, Richie does it. Uh, this comes from the queen, five, queen a5 maneuver, uh, where so there's a line on move six after bc3. Uh, it's um, okay. We, we shouldn't go six. all the way no, back, no, no. right? No, just just quickly. Queen a5 first. We should yeah. do queen a4, queen yeah. g4, and now you cannot. Uh, Defend the pawn by other means. I mean, you can do king f8, but that's also a concession. So Richard goes g6 here, and Richard plays a few times. Actually, that's what he played against Magnus. And then he puts knight on c6, uh, bishop to d7, goes c4 somewhere, castles long, and prepares his f5, f6 move. So this g6 move is actually possible, uh, but to me, uh, it still, yeah, it still looks very ugly because, of course, the main issue with g6 is that whenever you go for the f pawn break after ef, you can no longer recapture with the g pawn. So you lost a uh, certain dark square control uh, once and for all with the g6 move. Astonishing stuff. Just astonishing. Um, and again, the evolution of chess. Everybody watching. This kind of play was just... You would be laughed at by the old masters. If you showed this in the, in the 70s, 80s, even 90s, Gary K, he would just look at you and say, you want to go G6, Rook H7, yeah. how dare you? No, but generally it's funny how uh, in the past people used to bully other people for their preferences. Yes. Yeah. It was a very intolerant society. It was very yeah. intolerant. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's just a case of does it work or doesn't it work? There's no bias at the top level. Yeah, now people, they embrace, you know, all different uh, exactly. points of view. Exactly. All right. This is uh, very cool. Uh, Maxim reacted to this a3 move. He was already out of book, it seems. Mm -hmm. And he reacted with bishop g4. Mm -hmm. uh, which is... Has to be okay. Possible, possible. Yeah, very, log uh, very logical, actually. He's fighting for the control of the d4 square. Cool. Uh, bishop e3 is correct. You need to protect the pawn. And you know, the bishop f3 ef, this pawn structure is uh, surprisingly nice for white. Because whenever I get my king to g1, it's going to be so safe uh, I don't know if you, you're probably a Buckhouse lover, aren't you? No, I'm not actually. But you do I've know the game. I've got some friends that are, yeah. Mm. Uh, but those who know the Buckhouse yeah. well, they know that this structure is massive. Yeah. Having the pawn on f3 and f2 is like so good for your overprotection of the game. Do you like Buckhouse? I, I like it. I, like it. I, I used to love it as a kid. But uh, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I enjoy it less now than back then. Uh, but still, it's, it's still fun. Especially, you know, it's, it's a social, for me it's a social game. So it has to be in the, in the right company with a good mood. Why not? I like uh, Buckhouse. Uh, even like uh, in a good social setting, you know, anything. I even played like poker once. It was also nice when you have friends and then, then even the boring games turn out to be fun. Oh, you're saying poker is a boring game? Not a factor. <laughs> 
No, but yeah. poker is known to be a boring game, right? What? Poker is boring, no? Poker is boring? Is it folding all the time? Or is you're it folding is, is, all the is time? Just me? Or is it just me? Maybe you're folding all the time. I'm getting bad cards all the time, and yeah. I'm folding all the time. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of chess players are now bona fide poker professionals. Yeah, of course. I know. mean, they also wrote me at some point. I mean, they offer you to play for free. I mean, uh, and you can make money. It's an absolute free roll. It's literally a free roll. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, you, I would play, uh, if, if that's how you play poker, yeah, I want to play. I don't think that's the reality of real poker, let's No, say. but that's the reality of, I think, chess players playing poker. I think that's what you usually get. I, I've played a lot of poker with Magnus, for example. Yeah, no, but that's, player. again, you're, like, he is nicely trying to bully you as well. Like, it's a oh. social, social thing, right? He tried to bully me so Yeah, much it's a social thing then. Because yeah. he's just got unlimited wealth, so he can just put immense pressure. He's free rolling, basically. Yeah. He's basically free rolling. He's, he he's just putting you all in, then he's, uh, you know, yeah, he buying, just buying yeah, again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's not fair. Yeah. We yes. had a great game during COVID, actually. Uh, one day I'll write about that. I've got some cool stories. So, um, Richie did play G6. Now, Magnus is just going to come. Oh, G6, yeah, wow. I, I, from yeah. Richie, I was really expect to go to Cafe 8 and sack the F7 pawn and see what happens. But Richie, you know... He's, he's getting uh, old. No, but he's... He maybe doesn't like giving pawns as well. And he knows the structure very well. He knows that it's not too bad. Um, yes. I'm very curious to see how Magnus will handle it. Because he's uh, supposed to have a divine understanding of chess. But this is a very specific position. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious if his divine understanding will um, also... Trans translate well here because this is a very very unusual uh, position that's really difficult to play very curious Ding Friedman uh, is also uh, Ding is Friedman. also happening yeah this okay. is looks okay uh, well so let's let's see the, the whole thing um, after knight a5 queen c2 b6 knight e5 bishop b7 knight c6 queen e8 that's theory that's a the game Fabi game against uh, I guess Ding as well, and now Ding might have played knight d2 in that game, mm -hmm. and now played rook d1. Bishop c5 is key idea in uh, all of these lines. Mm -hmm. You you go bishop c5, kick that knight from away from c6. That's crucial, right? Because knight c6 it blocks the c pawn. You need a c5 break at some point. Mm -hmm. So knight gets sent back, knight e5, then bishop d6. Logical, logical. Knight c3. Logical. Uh, old knight d2 is a little more, feels a little more, uh, you know, comforting for me. I like mm -hmm. my knight on d2 to c4 to f3. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, knight c3 probably also has merits. You know, you're fighting for control of the d5 square as well. And now Daniel, did he spend time on knight d5? He did, yeah. He might be somewhat out of his main lines. Knight a5. The computer also, this I don't know what engine, but do you know what engine is? We have no running? idea. No. I'm very curious. Is it some ancient one from back in the day or is it some... No idea. Curious. Can't, can't in know. any case, this uh, engine also mentioned the move h6, which was sensible because now bishop g5 is there, right? I like preventing bishop g5. I really like that. Um, yeah, because after knight d5, bishop g5, black has to take a very important decision. Because if you go for knight d5, you get a pawn structure, you know, you get a structure. And that means, okay, some long-term strategic, you know, bishop f4, knight d3, especially because you already played b6, the c pawn is a bit backward. If you push ever c5, d5 pawn will be weak, hanging pawns. Some strategic risk for black. h6 would be sort of cleaner on move 16. Mm -hmm. You try to keep the pawn structure intact as is, as it is. And uh, okay, you spend the time, of course, and maybe now knight e4 comes with the tempo, I don't know. A difficult choice. Uh, I, I suspect that Daniel made this choice already behind the board, probably not remembering exact, exactly how his prep goes here, because white has many options. Mm -hmm. Maybe this was not the most critical one. Yeah, Ding out of book two, or at least uh, doesn't remember what's up. Yeah, bishop g5 logical, also can play another move. Bishop of four first. Now, if, uh, bishop of four first, now if knight d5, you just gain the tempo. But black will not go knight d5. Black will probably go for some c5, like with the rook c8, maybe some preparing some c5 move. I don't know. I, I don't know actually what exactly is. Yeah, c5. I don't know. It's very shaky. Also, I don't know what is black's plan in this particular position. Because black does have to free himself at some point. 
And bishop f4 is nicely ambitious here. Bishop f4 really asks black, what do you want to do? He played bishop f4, yeah. Yeah, so this is the position. Yeah, but we can still make a waiting move like h6. I think one issue white has is that whenever he goes e4, he cannot so easily push e5 after that because the knight is in the way. So the e4 push is less, less good than it seems at first. Still seems to me logical to go e4. I don't know. How bad is e4? Not so bad, but... Yeah, the knight is in the way just. What's my next move? Not so clear. Knight is a bit in the way. So this e4 move is maybe not from this, not from this opera. All right. Uh, very interesting stuff. Uh, in the uh, Vincent versus MBL game, we haven't got uh, that much going on. At some point, uh, Maxim is considering. Wow. Uh, at some point, Maxim is considering to trade on f3 and trade on d4. But you have to be very careful with that because in this, no, I'm taking with the pawn with for the sure, pawn. definitely, Always. definitely. Always. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have to, but I want to. I really want to take with the pawn. So let's say I play rook c1 here. Let's say you play h3. Oh, even h3. Let's call h3. Yes, bishop f3, ef, yeah, for sure. Ef is the ambitious way. And now, if let's say you take on d4, and to an innocent eye, you might think, okay, black is doing very well, right? Because you have the past d pawn, but you have to be really careful. After bishop c5, queen d3, I'm going to push f4 at some point. Then your d pawn will be weak. If you go d4, you expose all your light squares. I will play knight e2. I will uh, reroute maybe my knight to d3 one day. And uh, your bishop on c5 is staring at its own pawn. And my bishop on g2 is a monster after f4. I can then play bishop f3, king g2, improve my position further. Uh, usually in such positions, I will eventually gain control over the c file because my pieces are just much better. And your knight on f6 has no outposts. Uh, I one f pawn controls the e5 square, the other f pawn controls the e3 square. All the squares are taken under control. Yeah, this structure is, um, well, for those who are probably not experienced, they might think black is lo looking very good. But uh, with the pieces that we have on the board, uh, this is very promising for white. So yes, Vincent plays h3. Of course, uh, black should not go cd. Just pass the uh, coffee. Thank yes. you. Thank you, buddy. Coffee time. As you guys know, uh, just a small uh, interjection. We were here yesterday seven hours, I think. And you want an excuse to drink your no, coffee? No, no, I was saying, but the days can be long. They uh, can be very long. And I'm a coffee addict, so... No shame, but no shame in drinking uh, a little drink, tea or coffee. There's no shame. You don't, coffee? You don't, you don't need to explain it to anybody. You can do it. It's well, fine. It's allowed. It's fine. there's still some stigma about no, no, no drinking stigma. too much coffee. I oh, coffee, say. okay, okay. Yeah, no, not tea, of course. Uh huh, not tea. Bishop takes f3, this is actually on the board. And he takes with the bishop. No chess culture, this young lad. Shocking. No, you can do that too, of course, but. But I just gave such a speech. I mean. How dare he? Like, it's all in vain. I mean, Peter Liko was watching this. He's like, yes, 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 I mean, very nice, very nice, incredible. And then bishop f3 comes, you know? Peter's and then gonna Peter be really dropped, the, you know, his, his coffee, uh, coffee fell on the floor. Everybody, uh, you know, his wife like, Peter, what happened? He's like, yeah, just, you know, big drama here. This is a dramatic moment for Peter as well. For um, everybody. Uh, I mean, mostly for me, to be honest. I, I, I took my time. I gave an entire speech. And it was just not heard at all. Um, but of course, Bishop on F3 has all the merits as well. It attacks the D5 pawn. But it allows black to develop Queen D7 with tempo. Now you have to go King G2, let's say. Uh, you know, the problem with my speech was, and I uh, didn't finish it, is yeah. that after EF, black doesn't have to take on D4. So this oh. whole beautiful thing, it was only working in, the, in my fantasy land. Here black also goes queen D7. And I can never force this, knight, this CD4 concession. Because DC you always have D4, so you go queen D7, rook D8, and maybe even you go somewhere, maybe you go for C4, you know, and C4, B5 plan. And then it's okay, double-edged. Double so uh, the whole speech was mostly aimed at CD uh, position. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, Vincent takes with the bishop. Queen d7, yeah, good move. Now big, uh, big choice for, for Vincent. King g2 is the most evident move, uh, but there are options. There are options of queen d7. You can also consider like bishop g5, uh, very forcing. You'll probably lose a pawn there, but you'll gain, gain some light squares. 
I guess King G2 is by far the most natural. Bishop G2 also possible. Yeah, King G2, I like it. In general, King G2 is of course the way. In general, you should move your pieces. You should just you should move your pieces upwards a bit, a bit. <laughs> Everything should come a bit, uh, you know, it should come a bit upwards into the center. It should all come come together. So that's why Bishop F3, King G2 is always nice. Make the board smaller, you know. All right, we'll come on to that. Let's go back to Magnus because we have had some quite What's groundbreaking uh, developments. Bishop g4, h5 was played. Bishop f3, knight of foot. And g4 by Magnus trying to yeah, deep. solve the issues. And after Very castles, deep just takes. Yeah, that's, 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 you see, that's how you have to play chess. You have to understand and prepare very deeply. You cannot stop, you know? Uh, yeah. Pick. You have to continue. And uh, see how, how to play after g6, h5, for example, yeah? Not take anything for granted. Yeah. And uh, yeah, g4, bishop g4, all the difficult decisions, he, he just knows them. So let's try and understand this. So there's a that's critical where, moment. That's where domination is the, is the point. That's where domination. Well, there are, there are two points, right? Point number one is gf looks very hard to play because you give the past h pawn mm. free root, yeah. and this bishop can guide. Exactly. Pawn. If I get my pawn to h6, it's so well protected there. And you can. In, in the end, bishop to f6 and promote. It's just over. Yeah, I know. This is very dangerous for black, but EF is also horribly ugly. So EF looks more palatable. Yeah, bishop but g5. After bishop g5, let's say rook to e8, like and now two, queen. Or? Well, I mean, let, let's say king d2 or any, any move. Now, the thing is now you don't have to rush. You move the queen away, you go h4. Complete dark square control. Black has zero, zero activity. His only chance maybe to bring the knight to e6, That's what I'm maybe saying. seed it out. White can trade these knights with knight f4 and takes. Doesn't, doesn't have to, probably shouldn't. But then white is dominating completely. The rooks are completely immobile, black rooks, because both the d8 and h8 squares are taken. So rooks stand without any future. The bishop, uh, light square bishop is doing absolutely nothing. Uh, yeah, imagine you had time for h4. You slightly misplayed uh, it. Yeah, yeah but let, you slightly misplayed it. You should probably move the bishop, the queen first. You could have also instead of king d2, yeah, maybe. No, maybe not even king d2. Yeah, right? maybe just queen e3. Queen e3. Knight d8, h4. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, knight e6. You can go bishop f6. No, f4 then. Maybe king d2. You can allow knight g 5 I think knight king d2 is more. Uh, yeah, um, nothing moves basically. And black maybe can sit it out, and maybe it will hold as a fortress probably not um, but that's basically your only hope you're already in the fortress mode so yeah very very sad uh, positioning coming for richard uh, he has to try and stir up something maybe gf after all instead of ef because here you have no plan at all maybe gf and then try and go for f6 very fast because with ef you allow bishop g5 now you prevent it you don't allow bishop g5 and maybe you immediately want to play f6, ef, e5, or something like that, and just try to exploit the fact that white king is a little bit vulnerable being in the center. Very important decision here for Richie Rapport, and not an easy one, and not a pleasant one. Both look like they offer white a really comfortable game. Uh, EF is a standard way, but he made that face like, he made that unsatisfied face. Yeah. He doesn't, uh, he does with a heavy heart. Do you know a lot about that unsatisfied face? How that Never works? seen one. Really? Life, no, no. All my customers are satisfied. Oh, really? Mm. That's weird. I saw your wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my customers are satisfied. I was also a bit covered. It was a similar looking face. No, no, you should have. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking you're going to make uh, some more innocent, chestable answers. But it wasn't jokes, innocent. Joke. But you went all out. No, no. You went for the below the belt okay. one. Is she it's watching? Always, it's always. Is no. she watching? No, hopefully not. Probably not. Hopefully not. So if not like that she liked you anyway, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is certainly the end for you. <laughs> Shout out to Sopico and the Not going to be satisfied with that one, I can tell you. Sorry? Not going to be satisfied with that one, with your, with your remote. No? No, no. Is she not? No, no. She not. won't see the funny side of it? No, no. I think oh, she I'm not she will, of course. Of course she will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yuck. Bishop g5, rook d8. Now, though, I have to say, um, as we were showing the lines, yes. uh, white 
I don't see how white gets everything, everything. Because if you go for queen e3, like I showed uh, in the last line, the move you are going to make. Yes. Knight d8. Yep. Hold on one second. H4. While I'm trying to get the actual stream up. Um, knight e6, king d2. Yep. Now black can activate with rook h8, rook h5. That's at least some, maybe some improvement. Okay. So if you try to prevent that with bishop f6, a move earlier. Yeah. Maybe there was uh, f4 and maybe g5 or something like that. I don't know. So bishop f6, let's say. f4, maybe. Queen somewhere. Maybe g5. Nah. Maybe. Really? Okay, I have desperate mode, so I'm trying something. I can't go h5, that's the problem. But I yeah, can tell you. G, knight g, bishop g, rook g, queen f4. Uh, maybe something dynamic here because your king is in the center, but not really. Yeah. Book of, book of 5. Book of 5, queen e3. And f6, f4. Yeah, I'm having no play at all. No play at all. Yeah, I didn't, didn't manage. So maybe this is the right way. But um, okay, you play oh, king d2. Let's go king d2. Okay. Is that a slight inaccuracy? So if knight d, by the way, knight d8. Um, if I take, I don't get to you stabilize. Take on d8. Now I want to see if I can take on d8. I, I, I don't get to stabilize the dark squares, right? Because you get g5 and f6. Yeah, queen d8, yeah. No, I'm not in time to. If I were in time to somehow stabilize, it mm. would be not so bad maybe to give up this bishop. But yeah, no, no, the bishop is holding. Bishop also controls all the f6 uh, breaks. Mm -hmm. So you need the bishop. He went rook h8. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, right? He got that rook to the h file. Now the question is, is there a major difference between g3 and e3? e3 feels more natural to me, but what do I know? You know? Yeah, I think very hard to say what's more natural, right? Because indeed you could also say that queen e3 is in, you know, is in, in the, the line e of the rook. The line yeah. of the rook. Yeah, I'm not sure Magnus could have prevented this because if Queen E3 first, also Rook H8 was there, maybe. I'm not sure this is such a big deal. The rook, because Black Rook on the H file is just as stuck, possibly. If I go, let's say Queen G3 H4, you imagine that's going to happen, and we trade Knights on E6, your Rook on H8 or H5 is still stuck within a certain corner. It doesn't really go anywhere. Now, if you just come down to uh, how does White break through? But usually the answer is somehow. I imagine that at some point white queen will come across and activate via a3. I think that's what's going to happen at some point. Queen will make it to a3 and leak it through the, that side. And rook will come in through the b file somewhere. This is going to happen. It's going to be interesting. It's definitely going to be interesting. King g2 played by Vincent yeah. in the other game. Rook fd8 totally as planned. And rook c1. And black is nicely centralized. White cannot take as because of the move d4, which is a double attack fork. Um, so Vincent trying to make some improving moves. Rook c1 is a One course. is a bit stuck though, yeah, for, yeah. Uh, for moves. I think he wants to do this. Ah, he likes this stuff, yeah. He loves yeah. this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he wants to provoke c4. Maybe with black I would go h6 and then go c4, because direct c4 allows bishop g5. It's h6, let's say rook c2. Maybe even a e6 first, or? Oh, then DC. No, then I can say DC and Rook D2. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. maybe not even. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, not sure. Bishop C5. Yeah. Knight A4, I'm afraid, uh, by the way. Knight B6 is coming. Oh, this is very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's a problem. No, no. So C4 first. Uh, rook. Yeah, this Bishop A4, Bishop E5, of course. That's uh, yes. another thing. Uh, Queen E6, though. Yeah, I want. Do I want G5 or. I can go g5, but maybe I, no, I don't really want to weaken myself. I'd rather, uh, rather not. Well, we could get I something like that. Too, yeah. And if g5, bishop b5 still, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it could, could be uh, could quite equalish. Yeah. Could be equalish if we trade everything. But uh, okay, anyway, currently uh, Maxim is contemplating his options. He doesn't have to go for this exact line, but he has to, at some point, likely, he will have to push c4. And he is going to try now to find the best version to do that. Um, because, yes, uh, Svensson will eventually probably force him to, to push this. C oh, he could go, by the way, queen e6. 
Idea being that after rook c2, I can play rook d7, rook d2, rook cd8. I'm refusing to bow, and I'll just... This is d4 still in the air, and I'm not going to go for c4 uh, until I decide to. Yeah, how do you uh, keep putting pressure now? Difficult. Yeah, you move the queen out, let's say queen b1. And by the way, all of this is happening because he didn't take on f3 with the pawn. If he took on f3 with the pawn, he has 92 in so many lines. Yeah, but then c4 anyway comes after 92. C4, B5 comes. Not so simple. Not simple. Yeah. I mean, Chess is so hard. I, I mean, every little move, every little thing. I think, anyway, most people would take EF just to look cool. Uh, I think you just take EF like... Well, I'll tell you this. The next time I have any position where I have the choice between bishop takes F3 and E takes, I'm just going to take with the pawn out yeah, of it's, principle. It's sort of common knowledge that... EF is the cool move, right? Yeah. It's just the cool I'm just, move. Even if it's worse, I'm yes. going to do it. No, but you're supposed to do it, kind of. And then I... I'm gonna, and then I'm going to tweet you. Yes, yes, yes. No, that's what but not during the game, because I can get disqualified. Uh, you will get disqualified. Nowadays, very strict. You can't issues. tweet during games. No, 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 it's no. outrageous. No, I checked with all organizers. They refuse. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to be able to tweet mid-game. Wouldn't that it would be, be great? very fine, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Grow the game, basically. Yeah, playing wide against... Uh, Lamy. I mean, Hikaru, he does this uh, confessions, right? In the Norwegian yeah, confessions, confessions booth, right, yeah. where he's giving his recap, you know, and he's. Uh, I like whenever Hikaru gives free content for others, he always. Uh, it's always an ad, yeah? Yeah. He's like, so here we have this, this, this. If you want to see more, like, join my. <laughs> you can find it on my YouTube channel. <laughs> and people anyway like it because, okay, it's, you know, it's a win win. Yeah. But it's just fun. It's just good fun. Uh, okay. The. Um, yeah, Magnus game slowing down a little bit. He put the queen on f3, interesting. Oh. Yeah, because of knight f4. Like, because probably it doesn't matter, yeah? That's probably why. Knight e6? Yeah, it doesn't matter where the queen was, right? Yeah, knight takes e6. And he wants to just take. Yeah, generally I think you always wanted to take. I guess, okay, bishop takes the most normal. Now, F3 weakens the g6 pawn very much. Yeah. I find it a bit ugly. I would take with the bishop and hope for some kind of fortress. Um, but yeah, now h4. Okay, it's uh, so not a fortress, just... <laughs> it's really not a fortress, I'm sorry. It's probably, it's probably like that game with uh, Magnus had against Vincent, where yesterday, where it looks like maybe it's a fortress, but then he just wins effortlessly, because he just brings the pieces to all the best squares, breaks through and wins. The line is very thin between a fortress and a position that loses automatically. Like, it's... it's Would you say, then, you think that this position is probably losing, then? Practically, because very often what you have in those positions is that it's not a fortress. A humans try to play it like a fortress and then lose. Mm. But it is a position that is still holdable because the computer at the right moment will always find some sort of defense. But I think this one is beyond that. I think this is just probably lost in com computer terms too. But it's even more lost in humanly because humanly, like, it's such a clear position that even a uh, grandmaster can play it like an engine because there's just everything is clear there's zero counterplay everybody can just tell okay you have to improve your pieces right bishop is already perfect probably you have to improve your queen so you just see the queen can only activate itself via a3 or via you know h5 break so so little things to consider and you can try also different things i mean it's very hard to really go wrong here and um, by the way magnus played a really nice uh bishop f6 this is obviously very good, because now when the rook moves, he goes knight f4, and you have to take a but, time uh, out to defend d5. Yes. Does he by any chance want to take the pawn on d5? Yeah. Like if rook h7, let's say knight f4. Yeah, knight e6, queen d5 is possible or not? Yes. It's very uncalled for. I, I would never really do that, by the way, because queen oh, c7 maybe. There's a, there's a bishop queen c7. Queen c7. No, bishop 6 I have knight e7 check. This I sort of saw. Oh, yeah. Um, although even that is not good conversion, but especially Christian, like I think this is what you really should not do. Like you should not allow your opponent counter chances and take pawns that uh, are blocking their entire position. But we were just talking about taking pawns. Exactly. Yes, yeah, Victor. Yeah, but this pawn. I mean, they also had limits. Yeah. I mean, they they had limits. They would probably not take this one. Free pawn in the middle of the board. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, you're right. The, the counterplay, oops, sorry, that's not the move I wanted to, to play, but the counterplay uh, down here is just going to be too much. Rook to h6, deep. Rook to h6, not the square I would choose, but Why then not? again. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Doesn't matter where you put that rook, I guess. Okay, for me, I would go knight f4, and if knight e6, I would just take. Yeah. And the way I would play this, very similar, this is what I, I would do. Is so I'd play rook b1, the bishop will probably have to go back to d7. Okay, sorry, I should have taken with the rook, by the way. Because then bishop anyway is on d7, and I can activate my rook on the 6th rank at least. Okay. Uh, at least I can... So let's say I go h4. Maybe I can swing to b. Okay, maybe first of all, uh, rook h5, just to... Avoid any h5. Okay, I'm gonna go here. I mean, you allow some rook f6, rook h4. That's one thing you should avoid them. Yeah. Rook f6, rook h4? You should avoid uh, any oh, counter play. I mean, you can also easily avoid it. Just play some queen. Okay, I put my bishop yeah, here. Yeah, first. bishop g5 is nice, yeah, yeah, to avoid any tricks. And now I wonder, do I, like, what if I play rook b6? But maybe, oh, maybe it's a horrible idea. Because maybe that is one rook that I should still keep. Because if you trade this rook, my other rook is for sure dead. But this is only going to make li life easier for white. Because yeah, without this rook, black has no rooks left that can do anything. And, and if you go super greedy like this... Yeah, but this pawn in Vinava, it never changes anything. Yeah, rook a1, it just, it just doesn't change anything. You have to go like... b5, queen b5. Actually, you're just totally stuck. And queen b5, this is kind of a famous construction where you're completely tied up. Uh, yeah, and in fact, bishop yeah. f6 just dead well. Some yeah, just e6, e6 somewhere, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some yeah. E6 is just yeah this is just you're getting infiltration. You're getting infiltration. H4. H4 played. Uh, peculiar order. Peculiar order. I'm wondering, it don't, doesn't matter, but you know, maybe Magnus doesn't want to change knights at all. There's other ways of playing it as well, like queen e3, f4, knight g3, h5 type plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe he thinks that um, it's very likely, it's more likely a fortress with knights than without. Mm -hmm. uh, or the way around, more likely a fortress without knights than with. So he keeps that, he keeps that extra piece on the board. Yeah, I would for sure trade knights, of course, to eliminate uh, any potential counterplay. But what, uh, what he potentially chooses is potentially more more ambitious because there is a limit to how much counterplay black can generate with knight on e6 if i play queen e3 let's say mm -hmm. also this rook on h6 i don't know why richard provoked this queen e3 move but okay whatever rook h5 let's say or rook h maybe rook h7 is better sorry because I'll, I'll you'll be hit rook h7 i'll go f4 let's say what is actually your counterplay here with black I don't, I don't see any counterplay anyway. Knight g3, h5 coming. You know, I've really enjoyed commentating with you, Anish. I just want to, I just want to say that. And I'll, I'll explain why to the to the viewers. I, I no, I don't trust you. Something. No, no, it's not a joke. It's me being okay. just dead honest. Mm -hmm. You have got an astonishing uh, understanding of structures, ideas. Now, of course you are, because you're one of the And ones. yet, yeah? And no, yet. there is no idea. <laughs> and yet. <laughs> I just think if I compensated with you for like a year straight, I would, anybody would just improve their level so much. And everybody watching this, I hope you're appreciating the gold that Anish is dropping. Look at these ideas he's dropping, you know, just talking about every single position. It's, uh, it's an honor, my friend. Thank you, Lawrence. I mean it. It's really like... Do you do private coaching as well? Uh, For me, no special occasions. So special occasions. maybe yeah, you are, you, are, you are my special occasion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but seriously, absolutely brilliant stuff, Anish. Brilliant. Yeah, but also we have the computer here. So yeah, but and I have like I'm particularly good at working with computer because I've done it for so many years. So I'm basically very good at interpreting what the computer is saying. So it not not all of it is uh, is my understanding. A lot of it is me sort of just reading out what the computer says. But that's not true, you, you were talking But you still, you know, you can still misinterpret it. And Whoa. I'm... Whoa. 
I think Magnus misinterpreted. This was a bit hasty by Mr. Carlson. Wow. Why he missed g5? And the idea is that after queen takes f5, knight takes d4 is catastrophic. No? But that's obvious, right? With the double attack. Oh, wait, there is some, uh, some point to this. Okay, g5. Let me try to understand. No, 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 no. Well, there is some kind of human point to this that he blundered. Okay, what if rook a g1? Yeah, queen e3. Okay, but it's complete collapse, yeah? No, no, I'm just losing. Yeah, knight f4, rook f6, knight g5, yeah? No, this is not what he missed. What did he miss? Oof, no, he missed this. He missed this. f4, knight f4, rook f6. He's missed this. This is the move. This is... Yeah, this you think he, this is... This, this is, is the move. Yeah, simple, this yeah? Is, yeah, he just missed this and knight g5, and then mm. you come in, and now suddenly you collapse. Oof. Wow. Wow, no, no, but Richie's no, going to see this. Richie's uh, going to see this. But maybe he planned something. So after g5, can I see again? What could he have missed? Because he clearly thought here, I'm going to find 94 is not what he missed. He is, he is, this is, of course, uh, uh, too obvious. Yeah, he thought the construction falls apart for black. Queen. And knight g3, knight d4 also is not something he would miss. So strange, or so uncharacteristic of his uh, of him, because he uh, he knows all about uh, you know gradual play and all about you no know, hurry, all this kind of uh, stuff we learn. Like he's uh, he's representing that. He lives that. So he knows everything. Um, he understands also everything. So it's not um, understanding mistake. It must be some sort of a tactical oversight. Yeah, probably it's that line. It's a rook of six. He missed rook of six. He missed rook of six. Yeah, that's what he missed. Yeah, he, because Magnus he makes tactical oversights. He doesn't make positional wow, mistakes. Wow, and Richie found it. Of course he did. Richie Rapport. and no, Magnus no. now yeah, is gonna him. look at him. He's not happy. He's, he's not, not, no, now, now, now we're gonna watch this reaction from Magnus, and we're gonna see the pain. So he understands he can't take on d4, and the problem is if you allow Black to play f4 and g4. Just no, but I mean, there's so many resources here, like uh, root takes f6 again, yeah, g4, root takes f6, knight g5, knight e4, even without, it's also a thing. He could lose. It's getting very double-edged now. He could lose. And it was so uncalled for, like, he could have played it so safe, but he, of course, I mean, he understood he could have played it safe, but he wants, he wants to get the maximum out of his advantage. Um, you know, that whole tingling thing we talked about yesterday, that, that, that's there. <coughs> But he over uh, yeah no, he no, must no, have he overlooked he must have overlooked that tactic. This, this was the first time I think this tournament I've seen him be a bit ru rush. He is human after all. He is the the best of. Can all you tell me after rook g one rook g eight what happens? I just want to see what what was going through his mind. Rook g eight yeah make that bad move. Queen e three f four knight f four yeah. yeah he uh, he saw that. And bishop b eight check at the end. No, but bishop b eight can you see exactly? So f four knight f four knight takes f four. Is it bishop g5 simply? No, he no, wants to take. Ah, gf rook g8, bishop e8, rook e8 just continues. Yeah, yeah, it just continues. This is ah, you're just winning again. Yeah, this, yes, yes, yes. I thought bishop e8, but then just rook e8, rook e7, rook f7. You're just completely winning there, yeah. And if this. Yeah, I think he saw this, by the way. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what he saw. Rook e7. Uh, I think that's what he saw. He thought black's position is collapsing after rook e1. This is actually just winning for white. That's the only explanation. And he missed uh, the entire uh, rook takes f6 thing, uh, yeah. the yeah. whole pattern, he just elu uh, eludes him and he was just thinking g4, queen e3, uh -huh, aha, he's there, he's cracking, so rook g8, and he liked this rook g8, queen e3, f4, knight f4, he thought it was very pretty, he liked it, he went for it, missing uh, everything, and now he has to change gears, he's very good at that, of course, He is all about changing gears, uh, solving problems that are in front of him. I don't know. I'm I'm worried for him. Wow. King C1 is uh, King C1 maybe. King C1, C1 is, is maybe. A tough move. Well, you good disconnect damage. the rooks. But well, you just you try to get out of this knight G5 check yeah. thing, like. Tough move, though. Yeah, but it, okay. You have to. At this point, it's all about. It's you know, it's an emergency break kind of situation. You damage control rather, just damage control. Clearly, you're not lost here. Uh, no, no, no. 
We played really no, well. No, 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 no. Pay one also, also, also actually very, very good uh, What's consolidating. The move? Consolidating move. You try and consolidate. And if he does the same thing, g4. Yeah, g4. Uh, queen e3. F, yeah, now after f4, knight f4, uh, rook f6, ef9, g5, you have queen takes e8. Bishop e8, rook takes e8. That, that's sort of the point. Oof. That's uh, nine, nine, nine g5, yeah, not knight f4. Yeah, yeah. So he prepared for the sequence. But of course, the difference is that you are not at all forced uh, to go for. Um, for g4 is black. Yeah, this is winning somehow. It's not so obvious. Not, but, uh, not so obvious? Uh, I mean, knight f3, three, three. Three, I thought. But uh, anyway, this is not going to happen because you don't have to go for g4 sequence. Right. By the way, I see where to save there, and I just want to have a little peek. I guess we're not going to watch the games. Uh, we're not going to watch the open games, yeah, through the broadcast, but we can just have a little is peek. Is it the here. final round of the It's the final round, so I'm okay. a little bit curious uh, okay. at how it's, how it's you going. Watch, you watch for that, Anish. We'll keep it on this. By the way, Dean against Friedman is. Suffering for Daniel Friedman, who is Let's just see how he lost that pawn. A pawn down. Let's see. Ninety five, bishop d two, b four takes gate. Ninety four is nice. Takes oh wait, something here. Takes and then he missed this. Mm -hmm. Oh and now you you yeah, you have to lose a pawn. This was very nicely calculated by Ding. This is the thing we know. This is a bit more of the old thing. Now he's going to grind this out, and this is just pure disgusting stuff. Black never really got, uh, let's just go back a bit. Black yeah. never really got that c5 break. Yeah, b5, very, very anti-positional move here, of course. Uh, okay, he, he dropped the knight back to c6, logical. Uh, knight b4, knight d5, also sensible. Yeah, but this is a very anti-positional move, because now you got this hole on c5. And this is... But it's very clearly bad for black, right? Yeah, b5 is a terrible move. Terrible move. At least go f5. Uh, sometimes you can play f5, abandon the whole c5 plan, and go for the kingside uh, play, which is not going to be checkmate, but some play. But the b5 is absolutely a horrible decision. Mm. Pretty obvious, too. Yeah, because even, even de is nice for white. But yeah, bishop b4 is very clean, very clean. And just a full full pawn here for white. d5 is nice again, very clean, clear cut. Rook d1. Yeah, you know, the amazing part about these positions is not only are your pawn up, the b pawns, uh, it's very nice to have the b pawns because let's say if it was b against a, there is some potential to trade them. But when they are both b pawns, they can never be traded. So all the rook end games, they're going to be always uh, lost because you can never trade the, the queen side pawns. So every, like, you're basically just, if white is careful, uh, a little bit careful, you just uh, lost. Yeah, he's not careful, he blundered the uh, rook. Oh no, he didn't blunder rook e8. What? Queen b5? Rook b8, queen f5. Some, yeah, some weird deep line, yeah? But this is a very weird move by Ding. I mean, this just is play rook d2 any or something. move, yeah, yeah rook, rook d2, d2 is just so classic and just carry on. Yeah, queen e5 suddenly allows a very weird sequence, so rook e8. Rook A is the most obvious Queen B5? Queen B5. Rook B8. B8. Uh, somehow managing to trade the B pawn, which I just said is not possible. But okay, this way it's, it's possible. Yeah, Rook A, B2, I guess the back rank will happen after uh, Rook B, B2. Yeah, and now there is some kind of trick. Rook D7. Rook F8, normally 4 against 3 uh, would be a draw. But here there is Rook F7. Oh. Okay, I've seen this kind of uh, end game recently in Isle of Man, and it is very close between a win and a draw when you have these two pawns on mm -hmm. one wing. It's very hard to convert. This is hard to convert, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because you sort of, at some point I will put two rooks, you know. Yeah, it was something like this. It was very hard to convert. I mean, it's kind of easy to play, let's say, but at some point black might get some kind of a defensive setup. It would be hard to break through. But it, that game white won, and I guess this one he should win too. I'm curious, did Ding see the entire line or what? I mean... For a change. Wow. If he see, if he see... By the way, this is how much of a chess Neanderthal I am. I would just assume that this is relatively easy. Not easy, but... 
Well, I guess the point is. Let me try to remember when, when, when who played the, the game. The moment you start pushing the E and F pawn, your king gets exposed. Yeah, though you can play h4, king, h3 somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I would do. I would do something like the setup that feels most natural to me here would be something like king g2. Okay, let's let's say I don't know. He doesn't have a useful move here, so let's just say he goes h6. So I go h4. Maybe h6 is already a blunder. Yeah, I'm not sure about the. Yeah, H6. but what I'm trying to illustrate is, let's say he moves the rook away. Yeah, I'm wondering now if the if this is not a much better version of the positions that. Was in that like Isle of Man game. If even if you double no, but against yeah, him, yeah, yeah, no, but now you don't have a threat, yeah. yeah I just need to protect the f pawn because yeah. I'm up two pawns. Yeah, knights or even queen on f5, then on d4. But even this, yeah, on e5. Oh yeah, you want to check, check. No, it's just even nice. We're gaining time. I'm just trying to illustrate something and go e5. Like from afar, this just looks very winning, and I. But maybe it's not. Yeah, the guy had two pawns uh, on one wing. Which game w w are you talking about? Yeah, I, I remember the game because in Isle of Man, it was this open tournament, yes. uh, Grand Swiss. Yeah, and everybody had to wait for that game. I think it was actually a game of Hans. I think Hans was on the winning side. It was like around like 2-3. Okay. Let me see. Grand Swiss. Hans against Peter? Could be. Grand Swiss. Nowadays, it's so hard to find games, by the way, of the tournaments, you know? Like, yeah. uh, I mean, we're playing chess. I just want to find the games, the chess it's games. Really hard. Very often on, web, on websites, you know, you even, you have all the information, but you don't have games. <laughs> it's kind of funny. In the meantime, uh, we're going to quickly look at this Vincent game. Got horribly wrong for Vincent. Horribly wrong. Ever since he didn't take on F3 with the pawn, it's gone wrong. C4, he's come back given, I mean, Anish was talking about how Black wants to play c4, so he's given MBL a whole tempo. Now h6, and bishop d6, and a6, threatening b5. And Vincent went for a very um, committed, commi this is a very committal decision, bishop f4. This is clearly a decision to, um, yeah, he, he just didn't like his position here at all, but of course you damaged the structure. The knight has now got a beautiful square on e5. Black has got play on both wings. He can go b5. Uh, this is just not a good position for white. Even if you put the rook on g1 and the king on h2, there's just nothing going on down the g file. The knight will sit on f5. The knight can come to h4. The knight can even reroute to d6, of course, and the e4 square becomes possible. When the knight comes to d6 like this, impossible uh, to when the knight comes to d6 like this, then a5, b4 can happen. So MBL has just got multiple plans here. And Vincent cannot be enjoying his position. This is just a very, very difficult position to play as wide. Yeah, it's uh, a disaster. It's a disaster for Vincent. It's a disaster yeah. on the left, right? Uh, Everywhere. In the center. So MBL should be very happy. Impossible to find, by the way, any chess game. Nowadays, yes, it's just impossible. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I remember who played it. I remember even one of the early rounds, but I just cannot find. Like the websites are so clumsy. But uh, yeah, the here it's just you, you've got the queen side and you've got the king side. This g5 break at any time against the pawn structure is like king h8 rook g8. Uh, common, common, common idea. This is just dreamland for MVL. Dreamland. Yeah, uh, this bishop f4, yeah, by Vincent was too risky. Yeah, finally, too yeah? risky. Too risky. Too risky. Uh, that moment was, was somewhat desperate, I guess, because he just didn't see counterplay against the queen side. He just thought b5 is coming. He was trying to generate counterplay. Yeah. He should have gone queen d2 and, and then bishop at least uh, bishop f4 mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah, is yeah, much yeah. more yeah, sensible. Yeah, yeah. And then take with the queen. Yeah, and then at yes. least you've got some e4 ideas. Yeah, though e4 is also not like a very promising idea because then I'll just no. trade and have the queen side, but at least it's drawish somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, this was a much more better defensive attempt because here, just very risky pawn structure. Wow, very risky. Of course, he was hoping maybe he has some kind of play on the, on the king side, but mm, very unclear who's going to have the play on the king side. Because after king h8, rook g8, which is, uh, which is a thing. Also, knight can get to h4 sometimes. Yeah, not, uh, not good. Let's see maybe the Magnus game, because very exciting uh, stuff's happening yeah. there. Wow. 
Uh, this, yeah. The okay, so we lost right after rook a1. He's finally getting that thing, by the way. Rook e1, f4. Rook g1. Oh, and now it works. Now the whole thing works again. Because g4 you can just take with the rook, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. because before you couldn't yeah, yeah, take yeah, with yeah, the yeah, queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the pawn was on f5. So now it's on f4. Yeah. It doesn't now, work. Now you can just take with the rook. Also, he nonetheless regained uh, control after k1. After k1, by the way, it was difficult for black to find the right uh, here, yeah? Difficult yeah. for black to find the right solution. Maybe you should do nothing. The computer says just do nothing. Uh, is there a th There's no threat, actually. There's actually no threat. Mm -hmm. Just make a waiting move. b6, mm -hmm. even a6. b6 rules. Oh. I don't know if... What, what, uh -huh. Okay, and can b8, can I do, or there's some... Ah, now after rook g1, uh, uh, g4, queen e3. Oh, queen f5, there is the seventh bishop hanging now. Okay, so do you, do you cannot. Yeah, just a waiting move, yeah, just literally a6. <laughs> it's almost Tsuksan. White plays rook h2. <laughs> kind of Tsuksan, neutral Tsuksan. Incredible. Funky stuff. Funky stuff, just a Tsuksan. Because f4, yes, now, yeah, now rook g1. Very hard to see, of course, that you now switch. Yeah, and now knight f4, yeah? Now that same thing, it works. Oh my goodness, knight takes f4, shebang! Played by Magnus Carlsen. And Rapport is in bits. Richie's like, huh? Ah, what just happened? You know what he, um, what he might have... Uh, oh. Missed. He thought rook takes f6. Yeah. E takes f6. Knight takes f4. Now after yeah. queen f4, gf rook c7. Rook j. I can play king c7. Yeah. And he thought, okay, he probably stopped here because if h6, bishop f5, h7, queen a4. And you are not not able to protect the c2 pawn without giving up the. Uh, yeah, rook c8 actually nice. Rook c8 nice try, but then king b6. Oh, <laughs> that's a beautiful try. Trying to divert either the bishop or the king, and after king b6, now you can, oh, wow, now you can give a check here, king yeah, a4. King a6, king a6, and it's no checks anymore. Yeah. So. Yes, so uh, this would be good for black, but after king c7, move 31. Yeah, apparently you can, you don't have to rush the h1 push, you but can just go to the side. No, well, not until you play it, let's say. Yeah, it's not obvious, but once you're here, you play rook g7, the position plays itself, let's say, now. Okay, now I just push h, h The chest point. speaks for itself. Yeah, now it speaks for itself. Bishop f5, rook f7, king d6, rook c1. And... Uh, Even this is, by the way, just totally like, I would see queen e8 from afar and just think, okay, I'm not queening this pawn. Yeah, it's counter plays there, huh? No, no, no. This, this is not. This not is, clear. No. This is no, 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 no. This not is not how to play chess. Not straightforward. Yeah, it's <laughs> this very is unclear. Like, and it's like because here sometimes when the queen, could, this is a check here at all. Like rook b seven f three. I, I mean, white has to be very accurate. Here, I mean, so. I would think that yeah, I'm just rook losing. Rook one. Okay, rook one. Queen h six. Queen h five. F six. Seven. Queen g six. H seven. Uh, I don't know. F seven probably. Yeah. Look, h seven. Oh, f seven. Yeah, h seven also looks good, but you got to go to h five. F seven allowing queen takes h six. Yeah, and rook, and rook e three. This okay, somehow there's some uh, there's some um, some magic there, yeah. Because the the key is also that. Yeah, actually, there's no key. I just go, want to go rook b8, and if if you protect, I can also go rook e8 somewhere. Yeah, but it's just. But this is just not possible. I this is not gonna happen. Uh, maybe it will happen. I think it will happen actually. Yeah. Unless there's something really clever here. It will actually happen. How bad is queen takes d5 here? Finish? No, no, no. What? No, no, no. Queen d5 is not working. Why? Uh, you queen c7. I'm just queen c7? Yeah, yeah, just queen c7. No, no, it's... Does he? Ah, uh, because it's no, queen takes f4, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not working. No, you, the whole sequence is absolutely forced, right? You have knight f4. No, can I go h6 after knight f4? Is that an alternative? So, no, now I... Yeah, you have knight f4. Yeah, can I go h6 here? That's maybe an alternative. Looks logical. Yeah, this is a position. A weird position. Push the pawns, and if you move, I go h7, rook h8. Yeah, and okay, yeah. just just queen e3 and uh, and play. I don't know because you are of course my h1 is very far. It says I'm not going to promote, but maybe it is. I don't know. 
you don't have that much counterplay. I have everything under control. Queen e3, even rook takes g5 is an idea somewhere, yeah? Yeah. And okay, I don't know. Somehow. It's gonna be hard to make that final push uh, to h8, but, you know. Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is very good, of course. Um, you know, the ding game is actually taking that trajectory we're talking about. Oh, wow, well, it, it has. It's exactly that. Uh, one. Just one thing, the queen a2 here, it's losing instructively. Oh, uh, there's some rook c8. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Some rook a7, maybe. Now, what about rook db7? Yeah, that's a move. Or rook a7, yeah. Uh, but maybe rook a7, because rook db7, maybe I have like h6 or something. But rook a7, maybe, is the move. Sort of here. Yeah, what, what he's saying is queen a2 and now some back rank themes with rook a7. Yeah, that's queen beautiful. a6 I've taken. That's beautiful. Yeah, nice. so he, he, he does go for the sequence. No, I actually have to find that game. I, well, it's impossible. I mean, I try everything. Somebody tweet at Anish Giri. We're looking at the, the game where we have a similar ending to what we're going to get on yeah, it was, the It was a game of Hans and Isle of Man. That's, I can absolutely assure you of that. But it's impossible. There's not a website which just shows you Games just like games of Hans Niemann. Can I just Google, Google maybe? Maybe Google just chess games of Hans Niemann. Yeah, chess games. Meanwhile, uh, we've got that position in Carlson. Big moment. Is he going to play Queen X F4? The spectacular Queen X F4 computer line, uh, where you give up the queen and looks difficult from far. But or are we going to see? Uh, the more human pawn to h6, uh, which looks also very, very tough for black. Well, epic if they go for that sequence, by the way, epic. Because again, the straightforward line doesn't win. The h6, h7, h8, that's what you calculate as like a human, like you just want to queen the pawn, that doesn't work. So you have to take it a step further, you have to go for rook g7, and then of course you cannot calculate it anymore because it's no longer forcing. Then there is like, you are afraid that you might miss a move somewhere, some queen e8 somewhere, so uh, this you have to, have to go, uh, you know, a little deeper. I'm curious if um, curious if Magnus goes for it because he can also go for h6. But queen f4, yeah, very tempting, of course, very tempting. All right, guys, keep on coming in with your tweets. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, try to find us the game of hands. If you can help us find this game of hands, that would be superb. <laughs> As Anish is. Because we've got exactly a similar ending here in Ding against Friedman. At Lawrence Trent I am. I'm looking at thank you everybody for your Tell comments. Me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank thank you indeed, people. But yes. uh, I was wondering, so your uh, username is Lawrence Trent I am. Yes. You didn't have the confidence. No, when I created it, I, w I well I've been an IM for like twenty five years. So but still, a okay. little belief. Well, twenty five years, no, wait. How old am I? Nearly forty. Oh god. <gasps> It's going to be nearly 25. Okay, I'm sorry. Some existential, <laughs> oh my goodness. existential crisis. Yeah, that is an existential. So when I do get the GM title, and I will what get will it, you do? I'm we'll going to change my Twitter name. Uh, you'll write to Elon Musk saying, can you No, please? you can change it. Can you change the ad thing? I think so. Can the you? Ad? No, you can change oh, the no. name, of course. I'm not sure you yeah, can change yeah. the ad, because ad is your, like, your like, right. email address type of thing, yeah? That's I don't know. I think you're doomed. That will be it. I think, you, I think you've cursed yourself. Do you think I can do it, Anish? Uh, change the name or become the GM? Become a GM. Become a GM. Tough one, huh? Hard nowadays. You need to find the right tournaments. <laughs> You're telling me. You need to find the very right tournaments at this point. So many good players. You need to find some, some bad players somewhere. I don't know where they are. Where, <laughs> are, where, where, where are they hiding? I don't know. <laughs> Why is nobody bad anymore? No, you need to find some bad players. Not easy. Okay, Magnus didn't go for Queen of Four. He didn't go for Queen of Four. Yeah, because again, the direct line didn't work. Yeah. What worked was, uh, was the second wave. The computer sees that. Humans don't see that usually. Uh, by the way, the Maxim uh, position it changed dramatically. Wow. We are now having an endgame. Oh, no. But this nice for black, but uh, no longer, like, it's, it's not, not anymore so bad, of course, yeah? Probably it's quite equalish. We have this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he, he decided to, okay, it appeared as though white is bringing pieces to the king side, and it started to feel dangerous for Maxim. Knight g3, f5, rook, rook dg1, and the queen side and the, uh, the queen side kind of play was a little bit abstract still for him. Let's say you go b4, let's say I go knight g3. 
Okay, this Queen side counterplay, I mean, let's say B3 you go even. Okay, it's a very, very long term project there on the Queen side, Queen B1. And in the meantime, there is some direct F5 kind of thing, which doesn't really work after King H8, but it sort of is in the air. And um, he just, here even knighted to back to C3, like it doesn't look so clear cut. And so he decided to bail out into an end game where he thought he's just better for free. Uh, but the end game is not so bad. Not so bad. Some counter play H4, H5 coming. Deep on is a passed pawn, particular passed pawn. Not such a bad end game. Chances for Vincent to get back into the game. Still looks rough, right? Because I put the king on f6. Yeah, exactly. I put the knight on d5. If you go h5, I go g5. I try to go g5, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, if h5, you go g5. So what was this whole thing for? What was the knight g3, h4 for? You probably missed know. that. They missed this h5, g5 thing. His pieces aren't... They're not talking well with each other. The rook so on g2. Wait, why did he play this whole... Yeah. You can go h4 directly, right? h5? Knight g3 now, double attack. That's important. h4, h5, knight g3 is a really important double attack. Well spotted. Oops. Nice. Yeah, he just... Uh, I think he missed uh, this whole thing with uh, that h5 is g5. Because I also, somehow, I also didn't somehow notice that. Yeah, because he misplayed it a bit again, because now uh, suddenly looks comfortable indeed. Because uh, without h5, there, there's no the whole, whole king side, the knight, rook, and the pawn, they are aiming at h5. And if that doesn't work, you have to bring them all back, but he lost a lot of time. Yeah, there are lots of breaks here. There's not just b4, there's a c3 idea as well. Like if this, if this knight comes to d5. I'm just curious. Um, yeah. Um, the question for black is here, do you go for b4 and take the rook, or do you go for a5 before, which is keeping the pawn structure more fluid? Of course, a5 before is the more ambitious way of playing. Uh, you just try to create the a5 before, knight d5, c3, rook, rook behind the pawn, and push the c-pawn and win. That's how you're supposed to win these positions, but black is going to try and resist. Some move like this. Yeah, rook, rook dc8. I want my uh, before move. Yeah, if you play passively, you're gonna lose, I guess. Yeah, rook g1. Like, if g1, I go before. Knight d5, six. Yeah. yeah, no, Maxim, you know, he's been there, done that. Uh, he's been there, done that. Got the t-shirt. Yes. I have one question. Uh, yes. In ding game, ding. how did the queen end up on f2? I'm just. I'm, it doesn't doesn't matter at all. I'm just curious. Why did the queen ever came to f2? Like, I, I want to see that. Where did that happen? Ah, because it was chased by rooks. It was chased. Mm. Yeah, that's why. Because I was wondering, like, how can the queen ever end up on f mm. And now we have this position here. The, the good thing for white, it doesn't matter. The queen f2, then e3, then queen d2, you crawl back out, and you have that two pawns uh, thing. Yeah, so, big question. Maybe h5 is a chance for black, yeah? To try and uh, block the exp mm. further exp expansion. Because I don't like uh, allowing g4, g5, and, like, it's going to be a disaster. Maybe h5. No, I think h7. So shaky. Yeah, he's got chances to hold, for yeah, sure. f5. You have to try and break. f5. Is that to go f6, or is that just to disrupt the... I think the one issue was that root ac3 was maybe a threat already. I was thinking that. So let's let's just see. Let's say I go here. Is this just a draw? Yeah, this pawn end game could be a draw, yeah? And importantly, if this... Because f from afar, this doesn't look like a draw. Yeah, it's some sort of a miracle here. Yeah, I like... King, the, I, king of 7, king of 7, yeah? I keep the... G6 the would lose, but I... Yeah, yeah, I, sort of whenever I can meet king of 4 with king of 6, I'm, I'm okay. And why will outflank... Uh, Ding has to them. watch out. Yeah, this happened. Ding has to watch out for this end game. Watch out, Ding. Please watch out. The king of seven apparently is drawn. Yeah, this is some sort of a draw. Pretty trivial. Just don't uh, go king of six before white goes king of four. Just stand e seven of seven. And king of three g four doesn't do anything because then you could take in g six and you have only the h pawn. So there's, uh, there's nothing there. A uh, very exciting moment. Ding uh, is going to win now because... Freeman doesn't have the king oh. on h7. He was not in time. 
He should have played this king h7 move at some point to try, but he never had the time. And now you can't go g6 because... The queen d4 wins the rook, I think, with checks. One, one rook or the other. That's beautiful. So if the king goes here, queen d7 wins the e rook, and if the king goes to g8, queen c4 wins the wins the b rook. And that's that's about all she wrote. Ah, queen c5 is very strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Daniel realizes now. He will resign now because he lose one more pawn for no compensation. And three, four against three one. Three against yeah, four against one. It's too much time. No, Ding is winning his first game, and finally a convincing victory. Very. Nice. Um, Daniel made a big, big uh, strategic blunder with b5, but. You know, he made mistakes yesterday too. Ding didn't exploit them as well as today. Today, Ding really showed the... Today's game of Ding is classic Ding, like normal Ding. Normal Ding. Normal Ding, just normal Ding game. It's how it should go. Ding leading against a uh, uh, player low rated than him by so many... Um, you know, this doesn't work now. This doesn't work anymore. Is that... Yeah, because King uh, H7 and F5. Because, because F5. Because F5. Yeah, and F5. Yeah, F5. Just in time, so f5 just, just in time. time. Yes, yes. Okay, oh, five f5 also. But uh, yes, just in time. And then the h pawn will fall because I'm outflanking you, of course. King e5. Basic, also uh, good. basic stuff. Yeah. And Daniel. Yeah, good. Uh, resigns. GG. It's a GG by Ding. Could be a historic moment, guys. World champion coming back to form. This could be a pivotal turning point. First good game of Ding in a very, very, Actually, very long time. Actually, in, in living memory, basically. No, I mean, uh, okay, yeah, but in a long no, time. No, in really, in in really a, a, I can't remember. Time, yeah, this was beautiful, time. though. Yeah, yeah. Well done, Ding. I'm happy for, I'm happy for him. By oh, the way, we're Magnus... Having, we're having exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. This Mag is an epic position, yeah. Magnus did do this, so he went h6, knight e6, h7, rook h8, queen e3, and he did take on g5. Yeah, uh, we have this funny position. Uh, white cannot f f force a win directly because black blockades on h8, but black can't do anything either because the bishop from d7 cannot reach the h7 pawn since I control the f5 square. So we have some sort of a, you know, some some sort of a weird standoff where, yeah, somehow white is close to breaking through but cannot quite break through and black cannot solve the problems by force. So it's a question again if white can find a way to break break black's defenses. I mean one way would be to go rook h5, queen g7, and then rook g5 and, and queen then. and take. No, but it doesn't work anymore, right? Because uh, if you take on g8, unless my king is on, I can pre put the king. Okay, so let's say you go king c7, right? And I go rook h5. Yeah, I go bishop e6. Let's say just bishop e6, yeah. and I put the queen on g7. Yeah, but let's say I make some a5. So yeah, nothing, nothing move. Mm -hmm. Uh, you play rook g, rook g5. What I meant is that you don't have a threat now. Because queen takes f6 is always there after queen g8. Ah, you uh, play queen g8. Yeah, but that doesn't... And that was your win, queen g8. It does and, threaten And queen takes d8. And then rook g8. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it, it, but it unfortunately there's this, which is... Uh -huh. Yeah, you could, uh, in theory, if your king was elsewhere, you could go queen g8, queen f6, rook g7, yes? Maybe. Let's say both your king was on b2. Oh, that's cute. Let's say king c1. Just for demonstration purpose, king b2. Uh, yeah, king back to b6. Yeah, queen g8 does win now. Queen f6, rook g7. What a cute So you did, you did have a good point there. Maybe that's sort of White's winning idea. Well, we might. We might. I mean, look, it's not ridiculous that we get something like this. Yes, black has to uh, not stand and wait there. Black has to do something active. Uh, some try to, I don't know, do something at some point. Not sure what it is. But black can't wait here. Uh, meanwhile, by the way, is Maxim breaking through? Uh, or is Maxim breaking through against Vincent? Or what's happening? Wow. Uh, yes, looks I good. I really don't like this move G5. Oh, because, wow. I mean... Oh, but he didn't. Maxim just grabbed... Uh, no, sorry, Vincent just grabbed the A-file. Yeah, this was smart. Rook A1's a nice move. Yeah, he just grabs the A-file. Ooh, Vincent out playing him. And suddenly here, with the A-file... The mm. whole thing is different. My whole knight d5 c3 thing, it's not working because rook c5 is there after knight d5. Mm -hmm. That's really important to point out. Knight d5, rook c5, and suddenly... Yeah, that's the key. Now the whole thing changes around. You're collapsing there. Just one tempo to short for black, and suddenly, as that key idea doesn't work, nothing works for black suddenly, you know? 
there's just no it black suddenly worse it's a bit weird yeah I mean I was saying this whole thing but I didn't anticipate yeah in hindsight you should have taken with the rook here and gone for this other other plan but yeah that's not as ambitious it'd be normal of course he thought that he would get 95 c3 but just not in time yeah now uh, Yeah, complex endgame. Very complex endgame. Really end tough. Game. Really very, very tough. Probably quite balanced still. But black has to watch out for this rook c5 idea always. But white shouldn't do it in the wrong moment. Because now rook c5 doesn't quite work. Because I can take a rook d2. So rook c5 is a motif that's in the air. But it's also not exactly a threat. Okay, so white still has to be very careful, in other words. A G, logical. What I like is, uh, I like the idea of freeing the four square for my knight and just planting my knight there. Just FG knight f4, it feels good, but I should be careful if I do that. Whenever I put knight f4, you'll go c3. So I, I, I'm not sure at all I should do it so prematurely. Yeah, now I have to see, I mean, how, well, what's happening here. Knight on the 4 is nice, but it doesn't contribute anymore to the queen side. Yeah, here probably some rook c5, some kind of draw is going to happen, but... Not clear who wants a draw in this position, even. Not so clear mm -hmm. who's playing for a win, and... I guess at this point, both players are already not, not so sure. I know one player who's playing for a win, Magnus Carlsen, with the white pieces. Rook h5 is just... The most. Yeah, can you tell me what is Black's counterplay against the plan that uh, you have outlined? What is Black's uh, defense? There is some idea of going King B6, King A5, King A4, but it's a little wicked. Like I say, after Rook H5, you just kind of go, okay, it's a little bit sick to go King B6, and after um, King C1, King A5. Uh, yeah, and then you, uh, you have the rook g5 that you mentioned. King a4. Queen, queen. <laughs> yeah, king b2. Uh, you join the queen, probably some. I was thinking some queen. Yeah, it was hard. Hard to do it, yeah? Because if the queen gets active, then I take the rook on h8. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say. Let's say you pass and I go Queen G8, Queen F6, Rook G7. Okay, now you can. Yeah, but now the whole situation is different. You can even just One. take on H7 already, it's not so clear. But yeah, Bishop F5 is, is nice, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Queen no, no, no. Seven, queen, no, queen no, 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 forget nice. it. But you could also do something more human. Let's say you could probably do. Okay, you can start with Queen F7, it also wins. What if you go Rook H7? How bad is that? Oh, you have you have checkmate ideas there too. No. No. Okay, that's, uh, that's also sick. <laughs> okay, the position is probably sick. It's just crazy. But that all said, I do like bringing the king to a5 and a taking mm -hmm. on a4. Like that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Oh, there's some other plan as well. Rookie one. Because of course, that one plan you showed is only one of the plans. There is also rookie five, a four, a five idea, by the mm -hmm. way. And currently, yes, the chip you, you pointed at. Yeah, let's say now king b6, I go rook e5. King a5, I go f4. And then I want to go f5 and break like that. And this uh, plan is much more, somehow more, more centralized with white, right? You're more mobilized. Because when you go for this rook g5, queen g8 idea, rook g7, you put all your pieces in the right corner and every, the rest of the board is uh, not co covered while here with the rook on e5 and f4, f5 your pieces are still very much present and able to switch to the, to the queen side No, this I looks good for, for white, looks very good for white I love it I think this is just winning There is some bishop f5 idea here just very sharp very concrete very desperate and very sharp so Magnus, the by the way, could have played rook g5 instead of 
Why do you keep playing rook g5 instead of rook e1 to go to e5 via via h5? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, rook h5. It was on h. It was on the h file, right? Yes. Yeah. So so let's say rook h5, and now after king b6 that we made, now to go rook e5. Mm -hmm. That would have been much better, right? I think so. And the four. Uh, yeah, he, he thought this is more forcing rook e1, but he he forgot about this bishop f5 move. Because that's the extra option he allows now. It looks very dubious for for black, of course. I mean, this position looks very dubious for black. But it's an option that he could have avoided by going to e5 via h5. Hmm. A little slip there. A little slip there by Magnus. Let's see if uh, Richard can exploit it. How is this just not winning? That's. Uh, isn't uh, Vincent also winning, by the way, meanwhile? Vincent just winning? Looks winning to and me. And Vienna just collapsed? Oh my goodness. No. Ah, no, it's not so bad. Okay, I just saw that he loses the pawn and I just made a, you know, a judgment suddenly. But he's not losing. He's, he's losing a pawn. Actually, it's still holding according to the computer. And well within according to the computer. But, okay, I, I mean, to me it looks like, uh, you know, the beginning of... Uh, I mean, he's definitely uh, com you know, lost control of the game completely and things are turning around against him for Maxim, but maybe he can still hold. So rook c5, dc, uh, rook c6, rook c3, I just thought that this is kind of winning, but okay, it's really not, because you go king e5, and you want to go knight d5, maybe? Maybe. And maybe, yes, then you collect the c pawn and you are in time to draw the pawn Just even, even that pawn ending. Okay, I'll go king h2 here, by the way. Knight d5, I'll take and go king g3, so it's not exactly. so simple. Yeah, this is happening as we speak, by the way. King h2 is the only move. Or king g2 also. Why not to g2, by the way? Why, why to? That's so weird. Why to h2? Like, this is... Yeah, but wait. Oh, Ooh, intermezzo. Okay. This is a massive intermezzo. But let's say simply, uh, king takes d5 instead. Yeah. Just our demonstration purpose. King g3, king e5. Isn't this also holding? Or? Holding holds. Hmm. Okay, it's getting very close, yeah? Okay, so we're getting this, like a waiting move, rook c1. Sort of a Tsuksong type situation. Yeah, because king d5 always king f4. And now if you go back, I have king g5 and I have outflanked you. You can still play king e6, then I have king f4, king f6. I still can't make progress, probably. I can go like rook a1, rook a6 check, king g5, king, king e7, king g5, rook c2. Mm. Holding somehow. Holding somehow. Barely, Miracle. barely, yeah. Miracle. Yeah, king g2 played. The computer was very accurate. 95, 95, rook g6 check first. Somehow the computer that was very accurate. I don't quite see the big difference because I can still play king h3. Knight g6 is more logical, yeah. Knight g6 is more logical. Um, well, king because four. you can king h4, I thought. Ah, but then king c6. Yeah, the king can. The, that's that's, yeah. that's uh, yeah. Samantha. He played by the way knight g6. I like knight g6 very much as well. But uh, white doesn't have to take now. Maybe you can try knight e2, but then f4. Yeah, no, this is this is just going to be a draw. Too little material. White is better, but uh, too little material. It has to hold for back. By the way, um, Richard didn't exploit this opportunity. He didn't try bishop f5. He let the rook e5 happen, but he played queen c8. He wants to go bishop f5 now. Although, yeah, so what he wants is f4 bishop f5. And the point is, if I take you, take Yeah, I'll have perpetual. Mm -hmm. I have perpetual. Perpetual check. So after f4, bishop f5, bishop f5. And if okay, I take, okay, I've seen rook h7, queen d5, rook h2, king e1. I have nothing, yeah, I'm just losing. Yeah, why is it completely winning here suddenly? Yeah, it's completely winning from there. Like, I mean, the, you're so mated there on the and you're thing. Mated. And you have, you have not a check. Yeah, but wait, so uh, what's the point after f4, then? He has no point, no? I 
I don't see the point. Rich is losing, I think, isn't he? Yeah, I think humanly it's very difficult to defend. I think he's losing now. Bishop f5 opportunity was huge, by the way, because that position of the 36 mm. bishop f5 was very unclear. No, no, it's bad. And Richie with 3 minutes 30 seconds left. By the way, Vincent is trying some last resort tricks. He's trying some tricks. But even king c5, rook a5, king c4, rook a5, king d3, yeah. even that should probably still hold because of this uh, cutoff. This pawn structure is very dangerous for black, but because of the white cut of king, black having direct counterplay. Yeah, and rook g4, rook f8. Rook f8, king g2, king, king e2. e2. Yeah, rook f4, rook g8 rook, again. Yeah. So if white were to get like king f1, rook d7 check, smoke you out, this end game two against one is very, very tricky for, for black. Mm -hmm. um, but this version is a clear cut draw, and Maxim is good end game technique, seasoned professional, he will hold this, no, no problem. Yeah, I found it. We are reaching this very end game. No, this is not the, where the intrigue lies. This game will be drawn. But the game of Magnus, that's, that's the, the fun one. This is the fun game. Is there any hope here for Richard at all? I, uh, I don't really uh, No, I mean, uh, it's a big bummer that bis the Bishop of Five doesn't work. Uh, but, okay, the A6. I think this doesn't lose immediately, and uh, yes, and actually, okay, King C1, White will also improve the King, because F5 now is a much worse version. Although it has to be checked, can you can you see F5 briefly? It has to be checked because it's a very forcing move. F5, Bishop F5, Queen F7, much worse version. Uh, rook H7, Queen D5. The problem with this version is not so much that I'm missing an, a pawn, the f pawn, this is not but uh, the king is much safer now because a6 has been made. So you can play like even bishop g6, there's no mate. Okay, so f5 doesn't work, that's why you should just play king c1, apparently. King c1 and king b2, as we had initially uh, And maybe go a5. Announced. I like that as well. Yeah, you can include that. Oh, and you want to go f5, bishop f5, rook f5 after all that. So let's say king c1, uh, king. Yeah, let's say king a7, uh, king b2. Let's say you go a5 with black. And now you're back to f5. Bishop f5, now rook f5, I think simply. And there is no more perpetual because my king has already escaped. Magnus plays king c1. Yeah, when there is a human win, he, <laughs> he finds it. The engine wins, he doesn't find sometimes, but the human wins, he finds. You can go f5 immediately here or not? Uh, oh, take, 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 and... What's wrong with f5 just here? Yeah, I think he can. He can. He can, actually. He might, actually. He might. Why... Uh, why put the king the on The question is also... Yeah, true, true. Why, on one hand, you could say, why rush it? On the other hand, why not, also? Yeah, no, I think he can. Bishop d7. Uh, it will be played. Bishop d7, by the way, is a good defensive attempt because now queen f7, then you go bishop f5, mm -hmm. I guess. And it's a different mm -hmm. uh, story once again. Okay, played f5. Yeah, yeah, f5 is a human move. Bishop d7. Now he's going to play a5. This is so madness. Yeah, a5 is pretty. No, no, he's going to play a5. Yes, yes, yes. There's just no question. Yes, yes. I'll bet my house on it. Yeah, a5, a5 is coming for sure. I once bet uh, my house. Uh, I, I lost <laughs> On a it. move and it lost and you and lost. Then I, I doubled down, pretending I have two houses, but I lost both. Wow. So I owe... Uh, you owe two I houses. I did it to Sagar, I owe him two houses, yeah. To Saga? To Saga, yeah. Okay. But he owes me a candidate spot, so it's kind of easy. That's true. Yeah. Magnus just will... And the way he'll play this a5 move as well... Yeah, will be... He'll just, he'll just massage this point. But he likes to think before such moves. Yeah, he likes he's to think. Three minutes. Yeah, yeah, he likes to think. But he's going to massage this pawn to a5. He likes to think. Yeah, he's going to. I mean, it feels so good. Yeah. A5. There's just no doubt in my mind he plays a5. Yeah, feels so good. And if queen f8, just take on d5. Or what? 
Um, yes. I don't know, Rookie 7 move is, uh, is sometimes there. Also King B2 maybe. King B2 I like the most. King B2 just, no, no, you have no move. Yeah. Oh, he did it a bit more forcefully. Yeah, because he has too little time for massaging. Right. Okay. No more time for massage. A5 on the board, Richie with 2 minutes 30. I think uh, he spent the whole time uh, on this move. He knew he was going to make it. He was just wondering whether to massage it or, or to make it forcefully. And he decided making it forcefully is the right, right way to go for some reason. Because I don't think he had any doubt about uh, making that move. Yeah, Black is now completely tied up. Magnus loves this uh, particular thing. Black is just completely tied up. There's no... There's no moves. There's no moves. There's no counter, counter play. I think Queen F8, King B2 is very instructive that you just, yeah, now King B2 will come. Just not even giving you a chip. You just have no moves at all. It all worked out really well. I mean, at least reach out to put a pawn on A5 somewhere. To at least, at least it will be lost, but less ugly. Now it's lost and also ugly. You have no space for your king. If you move the B pawn, you have 7th rank issue. Rookie 7 will be a pin. You just have no move at all. And the A pawn controls the B6 square, the C3 pawn controls the B4 square. You don't have a check, you don't have a hope of a check. It's just uh, lights out. Computer by the points out this rook 7 line, it also wins by force. Rook 7 bishop of 5, take, take, a rook of 7, rook h8, rook g7. Difficult line. Uh, you have to take with the bishop, f7. Yeah, and you are losing because if you move the bishop rook g8, if you, and otherwise I'll take on h7. Next move. It's very nice. This wins by force. But king b2 is more conceptual. I don't know which one he will choose, by the way. He because will play, he'll play king b2. Not sure. He likes to win by force too. He's good at winning, and if, if you. A good advice in general to people who are trying to win games of chess, at some point you have to try and calculate the win. Like it's all nice and pretty, all this a5, king b2, but at some point just winning is winning. Like just, just put it in the bag, you know? Just force it. So I'm not sure what Magnus will do. He can do either. He can He's do an either. artist. He's going king b2. Mm. I don't know. He does, right. like, he does like winning. I'll tell you what we'll do. Rook e7, you win. King e7, I win. Who gets the chocolate egg in the break? Oh, there's only one, yeah? No, there, we're, no you're, we're going to have to go and get one. Uh-huh, okay. To, it will be some, one of our tasks to get the chocolate egg. Okay, okay, so I'm, okay, King B2 you, came. King B2 what? Yeah, King B2 came. Unlucky, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, chocolate eggs o'clock. King B2 is nice. Yeah, it's it, nice. It, this is just... Yeah, the other line was quite yeah, difficult. He's an artist. Quite difficult. Quite he's difficult. an artist, he's a Kunstler. Is this a German word for the artist? Yeah. Okay. In Dutch, a kunstenaar. Okay, okay. In Kunstler. Dutch, kunstenaar. Yeah, it's uh, kunstenaar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kunstenaar. Yeah. Which is a very tricky because word kunst, to say. Because kunst is like the the art, yeah. 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 But you have. It's a tricky word to say. You'll be very careful on an English broadcast how to pronounce it. Never mind. Don't worry. Queen C8 on the board. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't know all these naughty, don't worry about naughty it. British slangs it's that, all right. you, that you are. It's you know? really good. You and your homies, you know. I know. Yeah. Uh, do you like also the English, what it's called? I like this genre. Uh, I'm not sure I like it, but this... Um, when English, they have this rap, but they call it... Drill. Drill, drill, drill. Yeah. yeah. You like drill? Can listen to some drill. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, I like the combination of uh, the accent and the, you know, okay. It, it is basically like any other rap The undecipherable letter, words. Yeah, but, but, but somehow to talk about... Uh, you know, all this gangster stuff mm. with a very thick British accent. Mm. The contrast there. Like, yeah. I associate British accent with, you know, with the Queen and, you know, the, the breakfast right. and all that. And suddenly you've got, like, the, the guns and, you know, and, the, and everything. Yes. And it's just such a contrast. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, here's a question. Bishop C6. Play. No, there's no questions here. Let's just enjoy the show. Let's just enjoy. Just prepare your, uh, your stomach for a chocolate egg. Because in this position, there are no um, questions, there are only Oof, answers. I am looking forward to a chocolate egg. Yeah, I mean, there's only answers here. White now, just it all just flows. You have to just, um, the final stage of the game, you just push stuff uh, forward, you collect the, all the hanging stuff. Uh, there's not, no questions anymore, only answers. Yeah, because you can, even the deep one rolls. There are no checks. Um, you can just take on F7 here. 
Bishop takes f5 difficult. Rookie, rookie seven. Take on seven? I don't know. You don't need to take, you won't take on f7. No? No. Bishop f5 and what? I wanted to go rookie seven. Rook h7? No, you're messing it up, I think. I'm mess oh, completely messing so it up. Right now, the black has no move. Right. Oh, he took on f7. Okay, then after bishop f5, there is a win. But it's not, it's just not the move you mentioned, but it's some other move. What does he want after bishop f5? Yeah. Can you play queen e7? Oh, rook c5, rook c5. Ah, uh, rook c5. Yeah, rook c5 is the move. This is nice, and if queen d7, he actually wants to trade, this is brutal, and then go f7. Yeah. And if yeah. bishop e6? Yeah, rook c7, yeah. Rook c7, mm -hmm. like this, this is... Unusual, but look at the king. Oh, rook h7, very nice. Rook takes b7 in the intermed, so not to give any hopes for, um, not to give any hopes for a right. uh, some sort of fortress. Yeah, the, taking one more pawn is. Yeah, you're not holding this ever. Yeah, there's the thing also, as I mentioned earlier, it's Are all you? nice and uh, pretty. Oh, you want to build a fortress here? I know. Uh, yeah, you close, but not there. If you if your c4 pawn was on d5 and you had rook on c6. You have almost uh, even that you know, C4 somewhere, but here like D5 is coming, Queen B6 is mm -hmm. coming, all collapsing. You cannot quite uh, do this. Yeah, Rook C5. Yeah. How many games have you played against Magnus Lifetime? Would you say? Um, rapid Blaze as well, or yeah, all cool? of it? Do you yeah, think it's I think only classical is probably not that many, like maybe twenty. Uh, all of it over 100 right must be with all the blitz and i don't know if it's over 100 but we're speaking around 100 yeah i would guess i would guess and your school is not that bad right uh, to be honest if we combine all of it it's not that good either no, yeah. not that bad it's probably up there with the best um uh, i don't know i mean probably like our rate like we, we both keep our rating maybe if we play each other mm -hmm. i would guess I mean, I have periods with him. I have like periods where I do a few good games and then periods where it's a few bad games. So I don't know. I have, uh, currently, I'm in a good period because I don't play him. But before that, I had some bad period. No, this is nice, yeah. Yeah, this is nice. Bishop f5, rook g7 is what he's going to do with the similar lines from what we saw. We before. just saw that before. Yeah. Uh, except that time, white didn't have the deep one. Now he's got the deep one as well. Yeah, this is just, just lights out. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, pleased. Richie knows. Richie he's knows. pleased. Richie it is a very aesthetic finish. I Bishop H7, F7. A very so aesthetic, aesthetic so finish. So beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I like this A5 thing. It's so Richie nice knows. there. This is it. This is resigns here. Richie, R Richie resigns. Oh, he tries one move. Bishop D3. <laughs> okay. Rook yeah. G8. Oh, some stalemates. No, it's not stalemate. No, you've got, even got rook a8 check. The, the, but there's also b pawn can move, so... Oh, I like rook h2, rook g8. No, that's not, so what, what is it? Why yeah, he just... Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to think what kind of stalemate did Richie try to... What was, what was the joke there? But I guess there was no joke. No, no. Magnus Carlsen doing Magnus Carlsen things. Yeah, there was a slip there at one point, remember? There was one little slip. One little the slip, yeah. but then uh, it was like a mutual substance position that Rich didn't uh, grasp because it was very, very unusual. And then he re recomposed himself, regained himself, regained the composure, gave one more chance to Bishop of five. But yeah, it was all difficult and Rich didn't, uh, Rich was not, not on it in this game. He didn't use the chances he got. And yeah, got the end was very beautiful. The final stage of the game was, was uh, really nice. starting with rookie five. Yeah, um, yeah. The f starting from rookie five it was a perfectly executed stage. It was very beautiful. We missed it. Well, look. I tell you what, we'll do. We'll go for a, for a break as I can't control the mouse. Uh, we've got game two coming up now. Very simple situation. Uh, Magnus wins with white. That means when you're white to stay in the tournament, you have to win. Richard Rapport has to win on demand. <laughs> as does Daniel Friedman. In the Kaima NBL game, that was a draw, so uh, still not clear, but... We might have no tiebreak. We might have no tiebreak depending it's possible on... possible now. Now it's possible. What, what goes on, now but... it's very possible. For the tournament and the tournament win, Richard Rapport has to win the next game. I mean, he's going to have to play his very best because it's clear Magnus Carlsen is in fifth gear and cruising, so... We'll be back in just a few minutes to see the finale of today's action. Don't go anywhere. 
history, prestige, legacy, words synonymous with the most coveted title in chess. To be a world champion means your name etched in the history books alongside greats of the past. Dingley Ren, a deserving world champion. Ding is overtaken by emotions. What a match this has been. But for eight men and eight women, it's here and it's now, as the road to the world championship goes through Toronto, Canada. Over three weeks, chess's elite compete for their right to challenge for the crown. For some, it's a story of redemption. He knows this might be the last few moves of his world championship. Oh my God. There's experience, there's youth, and for one nation on the rise, fortune could favor indeed. An amazing day for Indian chess, making their way into the candidates tournament. Only one will advance. Only one will play for it all. Watch the 2024 FIDE candidates on chess.com. Looking for new ways to enjoy chess? Check out our schedule of chess.com community events today. Mondays, play rapid opening roulette and expand your opening repertoire with a new opening each month. Tuesdays, compete against other untitled players in Untitled Tuesday. Battle your way to the top in Arena Kings on Wednesdays. Join the crazy fun of the Variance Community Series each Thursday. And finish the week off each Saturday with the blistering Community Bullet Brawl. All happening in the Community Club on Chess.com. Hi, I'm Grandmaster Anish Kiri, and welcome to Left Hand Repertoires 24. The so-called Latvian Gambit is horrible, a 5 knight takes e5. This is not how Chess has played. He played too many moves with pawns and the queen um, and didn't develop his light pieces. And if knight e4, this is a very important trick to remember. Many people fall for it, actually. Knight to b5, brilliant ID. a, b, and queen g7. And after rook f8, bishop h6, queen c5, and f3. And surprisingly, queen f2 is almost checkmate, but it's not. If your opponent wants to be solid, we go for uh, aggressive for the kill. If your opponent wants us to go for the kill, we play simple chess. And just use the fact that we have more space in the center, clear-cut plans, and uh, nothing uh, to worry about. Do you know about Nobel Prizes? No. Over 50 members of the Athenaeum have won Nobel Prizes. Bertrand Russell, Winston Churchill. Rudyard Kipling, have you heard of? Uh, you're too young, you don't know all these people. Tactically, I'm quite... I'm still quite strong, I can still... Re you give me a position in the paper white to play and win the first move I think of is usually the answer. I think I'm quite good at the weekend games, but I'm not sure about my weakness. This is, the mo I think, the most expensive re library in the world after the British Museum. Oh. This is the Darwin chair. Have you heard of Charles Darwin? Darwin is chair. Yeah. They play between each other chess. Can I go up the stairs or am I not allowed? Do you, do you want to go up the stairs? I've never been up the stairs. Let's go up the stairs. This is high. What's this thing over here? Okay. It's an old thing for parcel posts. So if you have to send a parcel, you weigh, you put the parcel in one and you put the weights in the other. And when it balances, you know the parcel weighs four pounds or um, so many grams. I think the optimal age for playing my first chess will probably be when I'm somewhere around a teenager. Mid thirties is probably the be the people reach their reach their strongest, and um, so at age seventy nine, I'm probably a bit past it.
Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get there just in time. Thank you. Don't go and do that, please. Hey, you do whatever you like. We can't condone anything of the sort. No, we can't live!
Hello everybody and welcome back to the Grenka Chess Classic. It is the final day and we've just seen round one of the placings uh, tournament, let's call it like that. Uh, if you have just joined us, um, in, after the 10 round double robin, uh, we had the top two players now fighting it out for the first position in the tournament, third and fourth fighting it out for third, and fourth and fifth fighting it out for uh, fifth position, fifth and sixth, I should say, fighting it out for fifth position. Uh, so playing for the tournament crown is, of course, Magnus Carlsen, and he is playing against Richard Rapport. Magnus just had uh, an exquisite win with White. Some beautiful opening preparation, uh, a small hiccup earlier on, but Magnus did Magnus things. He quickly took the initiative, got control, and before you knew it, it was um, it was all over. It was just a beautiful performance. So what that means is Richard Rapport has to win with White. If he doesn't win, the tournament's over. Magnus wins, and I will say, if he does manage to avoid losing, fully deserved, Anish, because the level of play has been exceptional when he switched gears a couple of days ago. He had uh, some, not so, well, he had some unusual moments, let's call it like that, but when he started to get into full flow, yeah, he just blundered a few times in the first day, right? That's what first day, he just blundered. He literally blundered a piece against Richard. Exactly. Um, but then he got warmed up. Yeah. And um, I just realized just one small detail in the first game. At some point, Richard played rook h6. And I understood later that uh, he wanted to go knight e6, take some, take the f1. That's why he put rook there. To, to defend the g6 yeah. pawn. Yes, so um, that's what he wanted. And th that is maybe also what Magnus decided to avoid, that position. For some reason, they both said to avoid maybe because Black can defend the g6 pawn with bishop e8, and then it doesn't look so bad. Maybe the rook from h7 can swing across the seventh rank. Maybe they thought it's not so bad for Black, and that's why they both were avoiding that position and going for it. And uh, Magnus opened up with h5 and so on. So just realized that yeah, the rook h6 move, move was not uh, was there for a reason. But uh, okay. They are discussing about the water. There's a water issue apparently. Players do need water. Uh, but uh, Richie, of course, understands the yeah. task in front of him. Water or not, he needs to win. In the other matches, uh, we've got MBL against Kaima. That was a draw in their first round, so we could have, uh, if that ends in a draw, we'll have some more uh, tiebreak games, playoff games. And Daniel Friedman needs to pull out all the stops with White against Ding after a beautiful performance by Ding with White, something we haven't seen in a very long time. And they are off in the main game. We're going to stay here, of course. Richard looking up, wondering what's going on here. E4, E5 on the board. Yeah, Richard probably checking out the other games, the other opening scene, you know, what are the other pe people playing, right. uh, trying to get last minute inspiration for his own game. But, uh, wow, going for uh, in Italian, Italian, quite conventional. Often Richie does something weirder, some Vienna game or Bishop's opening. Now he goes for the Italian, which is as mainstream as it gets. Um, maybe he'll come up with some kind of funky, uh, unusual setup early on here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Richard wouldn't surprise me, you know, with, with anything. Could do some, you know, some early A4 or maybe something even more obscure. Let's see. Well, I was thinking already because you can develop the bishop to c5. You can also develop it to e7, which is very fashionable lately. He's already taking a time, his moment here. It's interesting because for years people used to do this, and it was kind of. This move order, especially, people used to do this, and it was the, you know, uh, the, the done thing. And then bishop c5 just became all the rage, and everybody played it. And now people are going back to this idea, which was certainly, I mean, I remember Levon playing it quite a lot back in the day. And, uh -huh. uh, so you're saying that at some point bishop c1 was common? Oh, I think it was much more, I think the, diff the uh, frequency of bishop e7 versus bishop c5 was much more balanced years and years ago, but I'm talking, oh. because I don't yeah, think Bishop yeah. C5 has always been. Yeah, no, because I think the, uh, at that point, the Italian was not so common in right, general. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the times where the Braille Lopez was still yeah, the yeah. number one by for distance, sure. I think we yeah. saw a lot more of this. So it'd be really interesting to see where Magnus wants to put He's his He's thinking for a bishop. long time, by the way. Okay, yeah. I, I, he couldn't have imagined Richie playing the Italian, I understand that. 
but still he's taking quite a thing. Um, I understand where that's coming from, but it's quite a thing. Maybe he's gonna go h6. Uh, yeah, yeah, and even, uh, okay, you can do h6 and then play normal, develops a bishop to c5 or, or e7, but you can play h6 and play g5. g5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th th this stuff is not, uh, not too bad either. Uh, but he's not gonna do that. No, it doesn't suit the tournament situation. I think it's really, for him, he's choosing bishop c5 or bishop e7, knowing him. I think he's really choosing. He might do bishop e7. Uh, that he's thinking long enough that he's getting himself ready for bishop e7. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on it. We have to keep on it. It's the tournament game. Very quickly, though, there is a game that Anish Giri will know a lot about. This opening here. Yeah, uh, Vincent Remember plays bishop before uh, all the time. Uh, in this tab, yeah. yeah in this tab, yeah. yeah. This four knights English with the reverse, reverse Sicilian, it's called. Uh, four knights English. Didn't you have a famous game in this line? I, yeah, actually, I don't know if it's famous, but I, for me, it's very famous. Yes, I beat Levon very, very nicely. Yeah. Uh, you were commentating there, or how did you Probably. Remember? Probably, because otherwise you won't remember. It's an obscure game in the uh, Leuven Rapid Tournament. That's right. That's, that's right. That's right. You yeah. were there, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. No, I played a suddenly very beautiful game there on my, my birthday. Actually, maybe I was managing Fabi at the time. Ah, I, it's possible I was with that's Fabi. That's possible. It was not long ago. I remember a, a beautiful game by you, though. Yeah, it was uh, very pretty indeed. Uh, I, I think it was b3 here at this very moment. But a3 is the more modern move here. Um, Magnus, by the way, finally p put the bishop out to c5. Okay. Um, Friedman Dingleren, by the way, is a following their yesterday's game. That's right. And we're getting this reverse Benoni again. But this time Friedman uh, did it. Let's show that. Uh, we'll show that in a minute. Yeah. Let's stay with this because there's a lot going on and mm -hmm. a lot of people are probably wondering what's going on. So first things first, um, the knight is on h4 and that is uh, important because, for example, after the move bishop g2, d6, if you castle here, you do run into g5. Now, in some lines, that is possibly not the end of the world. They often sacrifice the uh, often piece sacrifice, here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you D4, I think, is the D4. move. And then often what happens is you actually give up the h4 knight, but you win the b4 bishop, because a3 before c5 is trapping it. I and think you have bishop g5 as well. I think h6 is the, ah, the way they do it, yeah. yeah. Because here you probably have bishop g5. Yeah. So it's not the end of days. There's some tricks going on here. But we've got a slightly different variation where a3, bishop a5 has happened. Yeah, the, these lines there are all so similar and different. You could play bishop c5 as well, play bishop a5. It's also confusing. Uh, famously, there was a game recently between Pragnante and uh, Hikaru Nakamura. Hikaru was white in a World Cup, the first rapid game. And Hikaru mixed up the order here, but he mixed up in such a way that... So this g5 came, and he made slightly wrong order, and he just lost the knight for no compensation. He was just a piece down and he lost the game and then he couldn't come back in the game after that because he was then hitting the black pieces, which is a lot harder to win than with white pieces. So he just got knocked out of the World Cup because of that. So this position is very double-edged, very tricky also for white if they don't remember. The h4 knight can just, just be lost. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, because, as Anish was also saying, Daniel has got a similar position, a, a identical position to his game against Ding from yesterday, where we've had this uh, Reti with uh, e6 and then. Yeah, the, the reverse, reverse Benoni, Benoni yeah? yeah, sort of. Mm -hmm. Reverse Benoni. The, yeah, the exa exact same sequence happened uh, yesterday. The only deviation is on move 14. Yesterday he played c5 giving up that uh, pawn after f5, 96, uh, which eventually happened. And today he went for b4. Takes, 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 takes. For a must win, this is not uh, an obvious choice because a lot of trades have happened. And often what you see is the um, position gets very simplified. I think theory here is f5 is the main move. Then uh, white plays knight c5, black castles, white goes rook b1. I think that's how it goes. Knight b4, rook b4, queen c5, rook b5, and this position is very, okay, it's still very, very unclear, uh, but it's somewhat simplified. You know, we have only one pair of rooks, we have only two, pair, two pairs of flat pieces, and uh, it is a little bit drawish in, in a way, uh, but uh, rich enough to be, you know, to play for a win. 
Maxim and Vincent, by the way, trading pieces at a light speed. Um, I wow. think this, this, the way Maxi played, uh, it is a possibility, but it's a very safe possibility and uh, lots of trades. Anything but a draw would surprise me here. Bishop b2, bishop b2. Yeah, bishop, this is the thematic idea, yeah, you, you get rid of those bishops and everything is traded actually. Wow. And some sort of equality here, you would yeah, 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 it must be very foolish. Um, very unlikely anything exciting happens and so a very likely tie break happening yes on this board on this board mm -hmm. um, so we are in, in here for uh, quite a while uh, for a while longer even though the tournament might be decided the tournament the victory on the first spot might be decided the third spot is still uh, going to be contested okay And in Rapport against Magnus, Richie's actually gone for knight c3, I mean... Yeah, he played actually against... Oh no, he didn't play against me. Yeah, he, he didn't play... No, he played against me. No, sorry, he, he played this against me in the Seafield Cup uh, last year, in classical game. It was quite recent. Okay. A few months ago. So, uh, he actually played this very system. No, I didn't allow knight a4. I didn't play d6. I probably played like a6 in the a6 instead. Yeah, it's great. and then his knight from c3 went to e2 and then to g3. He didn't get much there in that game, but uh, d6 is not supposed to be the most uh, critical because, because yeah, black often doesn't like giving up this bishop, but it's not the end of the world at all. Usually it goes bishop b6, and then after knight b6, ab, black is very solid. And white doesn't rush with taking usually, and black often trades light square bishop afterwards and bishop against knight. Pretty close position is not a, not a problem. Uh, so this, this yeah, this is uh, very solid for Black, very very solid uh, for Magnus. Position that suits his style also. He likes Absolutely. this. He likes this quite uh, non-threatening positions. With Black, he's always worried that something forcing will come his way, something dangerous, double-edged. With Black, he's not worried about a quiet position or he's just very slightly worse. So he's feeling not threatened at all. He's quite comfortable. Uh, by the way, I did get uh, a lot of tweets coming in in the break, and the game that you were looking for was Neiman against Shamsidin? Yeah, I knew that it was the game I was looking oh, for. Okay. I just couldn't f click on it. But oh, I, then I afterwards, uh, I got a link sent to me, and I, yes. it was actually FGH against H. So it was 3 against 1. Yes. The game of Ding was 4 against 2. I yes. think Ding had a better version, actually, than that game. Yes. Easier to convert. Okay. I suspect, yeah. Because I guess 4 against 2 is better than 3 against 1 when you are... The pressing side, you have more pawns, so more room probably to, Fantastic. to outmaneuver your opponent. Okay, keep those uh, tweets coming in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm keeping an eye on everything. Thank you for being so uh, so communicative, and uh, also tweet at Anish Giri as well, of course. Uh, so yeah, so A3, they do this A3 move, yeah. Uh, the idea of a3, I believe it is, first of all, to give room for the c4 bishop, so that not knight a5 can mm -hmm. come back to b2. And also you sometimes want to expand uh, with b4, sometimes. Um, so that, that's sort of the idea. Ah, bishop g4. Bishop g4. He loves this move, by the way, in, in these structures. With white, with black, you'll play bishop g5, bishop g4. I don't understand it. I'm uh, curious after h3 because I have a feeling I've seen this, but I'm not quite sure anymore. So after h3, what exactly is the? I have no idea. The point? Because I think after bishop h12, you can go g4 here. Knight takes, let's say. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, take c3 or something. Yeah, maybe c3 directly. Okay, he went c3 first. Even more logical, but then. What you can do is, uh, you can play like queen d7. Mm -hmm. After h3, first of all, bishop h5, g4 is no longer possible, but also you can just go back to e6 and, uh, and take with the queen. So that this maneuver is something that you can imagine. And taking is out of the question or what? Probably in this version, I can take knight h2 and I'll uh, go queen f3 and I'm quite safe. 
Uh, after taking on B6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, or with, I mean before as well, we're just taking H1. Yeah, that doesn't work. It doesn't work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is H3 first? Uh, more principle, but you should also be very careful with white, you know, when you play H3. Yeah. Like can even play like bishop d7, and nine, nine to h3, let's say, instead of c3. They can even play a move, let's say, like bishop d7, and then suddenly g5, g4 is there. Mm -hmm. You have to definitely reckon with that as well. So this h3 move, when you have castle, the opponent has played h6, it's always tricky. So you don't have to rush, uh, rush uh, with yeah. that. Yeah, I remember this game I was commentating at the Berlin Candidates, uh, when was it, 2018? Oh, Kramnik, yeah. yeah. He just goes, Rook G8 yes, and throw the G pawn down the board. It yes, was Levon. just beautiful, yeah. Shocking, actually, but that is modern yeah. chess. No, it started so well that tournament for Vladimir. It really did. He looked yeah. like he was good. And Mamajarov had a good chance that tournament as well. Mamajarov, what's what's happened to Shakya? He's kind of yes. Nobody's talking about it, but what's I, going on? Um, I was also surprised. I was thinking the other day, why did he drop uh, from so high? So low, wh wh relatively. Quickly, but maybe, maybe it wasn't so fast. Maybe it happened gradually. A lot of, a lot right. of years have passed. But at some point, Schaff was world number two. He was twenty eight hundred, and he was firmly world number two. Yes, he was beating Carlson every he now and then. He was, yeah. And uh, he was older age. Yeah. He was uh, completely number two. Yeah. And uh, okay, it's not suddenly. Many years have passed, and now he, of course, you know, as strong as ever. But uh, his rating is a lot lower. A lot lower. I think he's out of top ten for sure. Out of top twenty, maybe even or at the bottom of the top 20. Um, so, yeah, but uh, you know, many players have joined uh, the party. He's one of the older players. So, it's not like he's gone down too much, but just, you know, at the time there was no uh, the Satorov, there was no Lukesh. Yeah. Uh, it was a different uh, world. Uh, you know, sh also Levon Aronian was world number two for even longer and even more convincingly, I guess, because he was, his peak is higher, than, his rating peak is higher than that of Shah. Uh, Levon, I think, was 28, 30 at some point. Uh, yeah. This is how I remember it, and he was world number two for much longer, I believe. But you know that generation of players, uh, okay, they were dominant at some point, but now with younger generations, I guess you know they also have some energy issues, motivation, motivation issues, a big thing. Yeah, you've already mm -hmm. played for so long, mm -hmm. uh, so I guess yeah, they they slightly they slightly dropped some of them. But it is still unfortunate. To see somebody like Shakya just no, but it's normal. I mean, okay, it's normal. You know, the cir it's circle of life. That uh, yeah, I, at some point mm -hmm. he peaks in the ranking, and but he's still, you know, I mean, he'll play top tournament tomorrow. I have no idea if he might win it. He's still very strong. Of course. So you just that okay? Yeah, probably stability is gone. Uh, probably he dropped the rating. Uh, and again, the chess landscape changed. New mm -hmm. players, mm -hmm. new tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, at some point he lost some rating. He tried to regain some of it in opens, but that's very tricky path because if you try to regain the lost rating in the opens you might only lose more so um, yeah currently he's in, in a bit of a rating dip but Shah is still uh, yeah class players great player still all right we have had some moves here you uh, see it's so missed why, why by the way why not to d7 ah maybe he wants to meet h3 with bishop d7 ah this is probably the reason why yeah takes takes bishop b3 and now regrouping. Mm. And funky, funky. A bit funky, right? But the black does have a direct threat, knight g6, knight h4. Yes, Magnus is playing uh, as if he is in the must win, you know, in a, in a way, because um, he doesn't try to equalize in a modest fashion. He doesn't uh, want, you know, to gain uh, symmetry, king safety. He basically is aiming at kingside attack. Which is a risky approach because um, you know the attack can work and also not work. One way of dealing with knight g knight h4, by the way, is um, I like that way a lot. Is uh, to unpin yourself with queen e2, queen e3. This is quite uh, quite nice. I like I like queen e2, knight g6, queen e3. Uh, you unpin without getting any weaknesses. You could also do that, maybe that would be more appropriate with h3 first. Uh, instead of queen 2 maybe you could start h3. But then, yeah, then probably bishop d7. Bishop, bishop d7, you go knight h2 maybe. Knight h2 and... Uh, yeah, g5, g4 is not at all 
Yeah, there's just uh, Jivan Queen F3 just wins. So, yeah. So c maybe H3 first, Bishop H5. I guess you have to go after H3, and maybe then, um, maybe then Queen into Queen E3 is more appropriate. H3 Bishop H5, and here, sorry. Queen E2. Queen E2. Yeah, that's Queen E2. Okay, G5. G5 yeah. is really going for it, huh? Yeah, Queen E3, G4. This is the uh, Blitz try. Yeah, Knight H4. Didn't you? I, we played the Blitz game, Lawrence, one one time in Germany. Didn't you do that? Some G, G5 against me. I don't know. You did. You played. Did we? You, you played H5 against me. Yes. Oh, maybe Italian. Maybe you played some. Yeah, I think it was either H5 Italian or it was a Spanish. Because you used to remember you beat Siddler on stream famously. Yeah. That one where it doesn't work oh, yeah. but does it. Yeah. And uh, that was you had some weird Knight G7 Spanish face, right? <laughs> face. Yeah. You had some weird, uh, and you were doing some face. against me. Not a face, no. No, I don't know. I don't mean to but you were doing something like this against me, some uh, desperate okay. attack like that uh, in the blitz game. I remember. And did it work? Did it work? No. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately not. When did we play? No, it was some weird German blitz event, team event. How many? How many years ago was it? Uh, yeah, many. Must be I way for before Zollinger. COVID. Yeah, 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 of course. I played for Zollinger. Well, like six years ago or something like that. Five, six uh, years. Ago. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2018, you mean? Could be. Has to be, right? Could COVID be. was 2019? 20, no, 2020, 2021. Like COVID is 2020. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I, it's it was really kind of a it. funny, obscure, like it was a very weak German uh, Blitz tournament. Right. But our team showed up pretty strong. Right. I think Erwin was there. Uh, some other Grandmasters were there. Probably Marcus I Rager. Remember. I can't remember. Peter Nico was there. He was the only... He was probably the strongest player after me there. Peter Lico was there. Playing on the same board, I played him actually. Also, I got a Lopez also. This one, Sarah Lopez, remember that term? Sarah Lopez. I don't remember. It was some kind of play hole, like, like a gym type of. Honestly, my brain cells are just yeah. destroyed. I would think that that was your highlight of your chess career, that with our quiz game there, but you don't care at all, yeah? Okay. Sorry, I need chess. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was probably the highlight of my chess career, which is why I remember. Ah. By the way, That's the games are very interesting. The games are very, very interesting. interesting. Let's, uh, Especially the Friedman Ding Liren game. Yeah, Friedman Ding is... Fascinating. Fascinating. The king is protecting itself. We actually went down the line that you said, which was Queen A1, F5, Knight C5. But I thought Castle knight was the line that uh, I knew, but Knight before also is possible. Check. Ah, okay. Maybe this just is the other way. Piece. Maybe it's a different solution the black can play because yeah he's up a pawn here but his king is gonna come to f6 let's say I play queen b5 bishop c5 knight e5 you'll have to go king f6 you have no other move knight g6 yeah, is there but the king on g6 but is kind of super okay. safe right kind of very safe actually because they have no pieces other than the knight and once so you, odd once you get this in at some oh, you're point you're pawn up actually black yeah so pawn up winning yeah. Rookie one. Why is this compensation? Because of, of that e5 square. And also like yesterday's the game again. Similar. I think I might still take white here, but. Yeah. Tough uh, to say. Yeah, yeah. White, white is always kind of nice optically, but. Yeah, I think Daniel actually um, shouldn't be unhappy. In a must win, this position is okay. Like if you are. Uh, not in the must win, okay, you're nervous, maybe black has winning chances. But if you are in the must win, you don't care about black's win, you care about your own winning chances, and you're kind of quite happy. Yeah, queen b5 played, bishop c5, probably knight e5 will be played. King f6, probably rookie 1 will be played, or f4 first. I think you'll go rookie 1. Maybe f4 first, maybe some g4, oh. maybe some g4. <coughs> yeah, okay. f4. Yeah, nice, nice, maybe some g4 somewhere. Yeah, Ding still has to be careful here, right? I'm just not sure when I look at this position uh, why the queen is on b5. Because I wouldn't mind to swing my queen across e2 or f2 to the king side. So maybe he could have played it with queen on b2, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like here, yeah, you can go queen b2. Uh, bishop c5, knight e5, king f6, f4. And now I, I like my queen a bit more on b2 because I, I want to swing somehow. But not at all, yeah, it's just a matter of taste, it's hard to say. It's just, uh, just a thought. Yeah, this is going to be very exciting. Daniel going all out here for a win. Uh, Maxim's opening completely 
completely uh, failed, right? Failed, yeah. yeah. Failed is the right word. He is not going to lose probably, but it's a failure of, of the opening. He has no winning chances, slightly likely worse due to vulnerable pawn structure. Vincent traded uh, everything. I think when Maxi went for f3, move 16, he was counting on something like queen e6, he was maybe hoping to go g4. Maybe hoping to go g4, bishop g6, f4. But then probably realized that, yeah, just f5, and the c pawn is hanging mm. too risky for white. So after f3, queen e6, he just went for f4. But yeah, this pawn structure uh, slightly, slightly less good for white than it is for black, and without any active play, so in a position without any light pieces, white cannot exploit the active um, open f file pretty much. And if you can't explain the open f file, then yeah, this d2 e3 pawns are just a little bit vulnerable. So yeah, white has to be accurate and just try to, to make a draw. I would have gone bc first. I don't know why cd. I would have traded one one more pair of pawns just to be sure. Bc bc cd now. Yeah, that looks much more natural. Yeah, it looks even more uh, solid. And this looks. But it doesn't good. matter much. Probably it will transpose anyway. But no, because after this I can take with the queen and it's yeah. a little bit different. Yeah, it's all too little. I mean, you are white. White is not on the good side. Really? I mean, it's Look, it's you would beat me in this position ten times out of ten with black. I remember you drew Kramnik once. Yeah. And something similar like that. So oh. I'm. I wouldn't say ten but out of ten. Nine out of ten. Kramnik is no Gary. Ooh. Kramnik has been insulted a lot uh, recently, but this one I think is just too far. <sighs> this is going too far. Vlad knows I love it. Shout out to Vlad. I talk to him occasionally. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know things have been tough for him recently. You mean the uh, why? Well, I mean a lot of the controversy, the cheating stuff. Yeah, but he sort of went in there himself. Right? No, I know, but it's still kind of. I mean, like it's strange to sort of feel sorry for him. He took a decision. To to to. Uh, he, it's it's he not that something happened to him. He's he himself happened to him. Yeah, I mean, he has a conviction, but it, yeah, it, 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 I'm not sure how it. healthy it's been for him, to be honest doesn't feel like it's been healthy for him to mm -hmm. obsess over this. Yeah, but I, okay, you mean that it sort of happened upon him and without his... Uh, well, I don't know about that. I thought that. it was a conscious uh, decision to sort of... Well, I think it probably was a conscious decision, but irrespective of whether he's right, wrong, or whatever, I, I think the path has not been a particularly... Uh, I'm not in this at all. I, I wouldn't no, go down the path uh, at all. Not, not, I think not all this me. talk about uh, cheating, anti-cheating, yeah. like you cannot prove anything anywhere um, the thing is you can't even prove innocence of anyone, you also can't prove the guilt of anyone, so the whole thing is just, um, yeah, just uh, empty talk, basically. And of course I was saying that tongue-in-cheek before, Vlad knows I'm one of his biggest fans, and For I, sure. it was, it was, uh, it legend. was legend. Ah, he's a legend, he's a legend, and... Uh, Do you, you think know. many other people have beaten Gary Kay in a match? Well, not many, not many people have beaten Gary Kay in a match, that's true. Uh, Let's see how Vincent will recapture. Board, interesting. Yeah, the more drawish option. Uh, they are both, I think, fine to coast. Yeah, I think he's basically saying he wants to pressurize yeah, here. Yeah, and yeah. Rook d4. Well, um, well, coast, but black is still more comfortable. I couldn't anywhere. Something like this. Uh, if I were white, I would uh, try to encourage a rook endgame, a drawn rook endgame. Mm -hmm. I would try to encourage a queen trade mm -hmm. because. Uh, with more pieces on the board, with the queens on the board, slightly weakened king uh, can can be an issue. White's king is slightly weakened. Yeah, that's the problem. Besides the d2 e3 pawns, the pawn on g3 is also ugly. Had the pawn been on g2, it would have been a bit nicer right. for white. Now, um, yeah, but not the most exciting position. I think they will find a way to uh, to make a draw. Maxim is a very sharp, uh, good player, good defender. He should not lose. He doesn't lose such positions usually. No, not really. I don't think he loses such positions. So no, the okay. Richie against Magnus. Yeah, this is uh, super exciting because uh, Magnus's pieces they are calling for g5. Yeah, they are. He has uh, put. He's, he's gone all in on g5. Yeah. It's too late to castle and try. I mean, Bishop Queen C, Bishop D7. Like he's gone all in on. He, he has to go g5 now. Yeah. Otherwise, Richie's just going to go d4 and have a very pleasant position. Or, you as you can said. steal, like you can steal, um, fold, castle, d4, knight, g6. 
you can still fold. It is late, maybe it's not too late. Maybe you're still very solid, only slightly worse. But at this point, you are somewhat pot committed to G5. Right. G5 knight H2. I mean, when you usually when you meet G5 with knight H2, it's not so dangerous. Very risky for uh, for black. Very very risky. Kind of not exactly long term, but kind of yeah, you could say long term risky because the king, uh, black king, is also very vulnerable. So it's safe nowhere. The g4 business is not coming, not happening at all. So you sort of are gonna play for knight g6, knight f4, but then bishop e3, d4, sometimes h4, sometimes g3. I imagine some g3, knight h3, f4 somewhere. Very risky for black, very risky. I'm curious what he will do now. He's thinking, normally you go g5, but he doesn't wanna lose. Yeah, Magnus is actually in a, is a tricky moment. He was sort of bluffing, uh, it seems. He was bluffing, thinking that he is not, he can always fold. But now he realizes that folding is not fun. Because uh, Queen C8, Bishop D7, what was, uh, Queen C8 is a, for sure a lost tempo. Like it's a very, very odd square for the Queen. It only makes sense in connection uh, with G5. Because you, he made this move queen c8 to delay castling and to have this g5 thing. Let me see how did Richard trick him. Yeah, Rich was yeah, go on, carry on. Tricky, yeah. Bishop a4 check also. He 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 tossed that check in. Sharp. Very sharp. Very very sharp. You betting on G5 or not? I think he has to do it. As you said, I think But he's, he's thinking a little bit too long. But he just has to, no? Well, let's say he does castle. It's just bad, knight, right? Knight H2, knight H2, yeah? knight H2 in F4. You make knight G6, just F4, you have bishop F4, knight F4, rook F4. Yeah, queen on C8, that's the culprit. Like, you have to come back, then D4 comes. Some kind of insane uh, King's Gambit here. Yeah, because this is actually... Yeah, some King's, King's Gambit on steroids here. D4. No, no, he cannot castle. But what, so he's not thinking about castle, he's thinking about something else. Um, okay, knight g6, knight g6 directly, yeah? Uh, his other move, not, not castle, but knight g6 first, of course. Yeah, no, castling is out of the question, but knight g6 first, maybe. That's maybe an option. Knight h2 now. Maybe now knight f4 or something, I don't know. Looks really... No, looks very sus. No, no. It just takes d4. Take d4, no. it's just... No, no, what are we talking about? No, this is a disaster. Okay, so not knight g6. Okay, chances for Richie Rapport. Magnus, yeah, Magnus shaking his head there. Magnus blowing his cheeks. So he's thinking, basically, he's thinking, why did I end up here? Yeah. You played such a timid line. Why did I put myself in the situation yeah. where I have to go all in? Like, yeah. what, wh why am I here? He's like, it yeah. was a must draw. What yeah. am I doing? Why am I? Why am yeah. I doing it? Because if he was not in a must draw, he would just go g5 and I just just play quickly, right. uh, bluff him a bit, uh, keep putting pressure. But in that situation, the psychological situation is not at all favoring him. Wow, Richie coming back would be huge. Would be, would be absolutely massive. Richie coming back. What an unbelievable story it would be. We'd love to watch the games between Richard Rapport and Magnus Carlsen forever, wouldn't we? 96 was well, yeah. 96 actually played. Yeah, and this, uh, he's not happy. When he's not happy. Oops, no, so no, no. Two, Shaking his head. Is he, is he lost on Magnus 2 or, or what? I think it's losing. I mean. I mean. <laughs> it's lost, no? People are going to say, who are you to say whether a position is losing or not, but. I'm, al I'm allowed to. No, because the lines that the computer is saying, they look lost to me. It so. looks dead. Knight h2 is just horrible for Magnus. And the lines that look not so bad for black, the computer says they're lost. <laughs> so, so, I don't know. <laughs> like, looks very bad. I mean, one line the computer says is completely insane. That's knight h4, f4, knight g2. It looks so bad to me. Like, 
so bad. Okay, just take on G2. No, no, I don't see why I need to go with Fe. Yeah, and then just go King G1, Bishop of 1, Queen of 1. Two bishops. Two bishops for a rook. I mean, okay, you, you have two pawns, but we have full board full of pieces. Your pawns are not going anywhere. I don't know, this looks very bad to me. But okay, two pawns, maybe there is some. Peter goes for one castle, 26 on one castle. But yeah, this is not happening. It's too way too. Uh, it's just bad also, and the risk is an understatement. So after knight h2, what does he want? I'm not sure the players are, will realize how bad castle f4 is because it yeah. doesn't look as bad as the computer says it is. But it's pretty bad. Knight h2 f4 is pretty good. Magnus. Surely, surely not. Richie, to, to win this and go on to win the tournament? Is it possible? It's not likely. I mean, uh, you know, being in a must draw, Nadesh to play. Nice. Just castle. Oh, he hates it. He hates his position. No, I think Richie will, might win this, but you have to understand that to beat, I played Magnus in a lot of these matches, to beat Magnus when he's in a must draw, is a lot easier than to beat Magnus. Because also when you are in a must win against Magnus, finally, that whole psychological thing of you be, being scared of him, that's gone. You're not scared of him. When you uh, are in a must win, and you are equally scared of a draw as you are scared of losing to him, you can play normal. So that, and he also suddenly, suddenly, you know, the hunter becomes the prey. Mm. When you are in a must win, Magnus is in a must draw, whatever he is, uh, whoever you are, Suddenly, the situation is such that you are the hunter and he's the prey. Just by these are the rules now. You are hunting. And that shifts the situation completely. So I've beaten Magnus much more in situations, or I was close to beating him also, much more in situations when he was in a must draw than otherwise. It was also much easier in a way. Um, I even beat him with black ones in the must, uh, mm -hmm. must win situation. Because, yeah, the psychology just works so much more in your favor. Very interesting insight, that, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, what you've just heard there. All right, let's quickly go to the Friedman game while I get pinged here by the people. Um, what do we think about this position here? H4 is uh, cool. H4 is cool, right? Yeah, it's cool, just, it's just cool. I, I don't really understand uh, anything here. I don't know what's happening. I mean, I would take white here every day of the week and twice on a Sunday yes may I just add yes but your resources are rather limited as well you are missing uh, some you're missing a piece that's that gives a check you know <laughs> like everything is nice but you need to check that king nobody's checking the king the king is just chilling yeah. there the king is kind of surrounded in the back house you need, in the back house this would be lost for black because I would be able to put a piece somewhere. So I would put like a rook on g6, or a bishop on g5, or a pawn on g5. Yeah, this is just totally losing. I need to bring one more piece. But in the game of chess, it's difficult here to somehow get to the king. It's just there, it's chilling on f6. Not this position, it's not. It's not looking so bad. Knight h7, maybe. Magnus position is not looking so bad. All right, we'll go back. Richie did, in fact, play f4. Maybe knight h7. It is very bad, but it's the first impression it's not so bad. Very little pieces and in the attack, but yeah, just d4 and d2. Queen on C8, so misplaced, so misplaced. Yeah, no, he's fixing the queen. Yeah, queen D8 makes sense. Yeah, just D4, okay, D4 I guess. D4 will be played. And yeah, so Vichy would love this position with white. I think anybody would, but uh, Vichy would probably convert it the best, yeah? That's what you mean. I think mm. Vichy, like, if I had to choose one player in the world to play this position with white, it would be Vichy. 
Yeah, I choose Magnus first. So. After Magnus. It'd be Vichy. Then it would be Fabi. I think. And e yeah, Fabi, I don't know. No. Because. No, Vichy. This is a Vichy position all uh, day. Fabi is too used to getting advantages in e45 positions that he takes, the, he takes them for granted, you know? He doesn't, he doesn't, uh, such a position that he takes for granted. He's like, oh, another, another. Uh, you need someone who appreciates it. You know who should get a nice shout out now? Who will, who will be, who is now watching and is like, me, me. You know who is that? Peter Lico. My boy Peter would love this he position love this. as well. He would love this. If you said, Peter, you can have this position every day of the week and twice on a Sunday. <laughs> He's like, I'm back, I'm back. Come in, like, come in. back. Guess who's back? <laughs> He'll be back to competitive chess before you know it. But um, one plan, uh, idea rather, that might um, might be an attempt to bring some harmony back is g 6 h 5 g 6 h 5 is a nice way to try and somehow regain the coordination. But th that also has its, right, I've, Very I've, vulnerable. Got, I've got an idea. Hear me out. So after g6, I want to go like queen d3. Knight h5. Knight h5, let's say rook uh, f2. Oh, no, I was, rook f2, queen g5. Queen g5, yeah. yeah. Uh, then I've got knight f3, you put the queen somewhere on g3, it's a bit unclear actually. Mm. Yeah, just since I don't see immediately what's... Uh, because what is happening here is I am piling up on the f6 knight, the knight has to leave. It has to somehow exit the pressure, leave. And um, yeah, I was going to g5. Yeah, it doesn't look so bad, huh? Yeah, looks all right. I'm gonna say there's a close to loss though. What does he know? He doesn't. Has he ever played Magnus Carlsen? I have to Carlson? say honestly, the evaluation of this engine is really slightly beyond me. Uh, to my eye, if I would look like this at the position, try to ignore the computer. Yes. Yeah. No. So you'd say it's slightly. I imagine I sit there uh, across Magnus. I have yeah. this position. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think I have time. We, I, I mean, I, I'm happy, but I, I don't think that I have already won the game or something. Like, really not. No, I think we're only getting started here. Right, of course. And I see myself, like, there are so many options. I can totally imagine um, messing this one up. Oh, he does it slightly differently. Rook a5. Uh, but I think the idea oh, is the true. same and maybe even better. He wants to go knight h5 and then maybe rook g5. Mm. By the way, it's really far from over. Like, I'm, I'm sure you're gonna give me very nice odds and I'm going to bet on Magnus not losing. You're giving me nice odds, right? Of course I'm not giving you nice ah, odds. Okay. How can I give you nice odds? Because I thought the computer's evil will nicely I mean, tilt what, the balance in my you favor. Can have, like, e you can have like even money that he's not losing if you want. No, but I wanted really nice odds on that. That I mean, is nice odds, you're getting even money. No, but come on, his position is close to lost according to the computer. Yeah, but rich. Oh no, I know. even money, of course, I'm not. Uh, even money you know, is the best. Actually, I think this money is, the, is, I think it's a fine it's deal. It's a fine deal. deal it's but I wanted to scam you for, for a better. You want to scam me? I want to scam you for something better. <laughs> Great. More scams. I actually think even money is a very fine deal here as well. Yeah. On uh, Magnus not losing this? Oh, yes. Oh my god. You get a draw and a win and yeah, yeah, even yeah. money? No, no, it's completely fine. Yeah, yeah. No, but I want, I want to it. scam you out of even more. You can have it. Because you owe me one chocolate egg, so this is this is you to get your chocolate egg yes, back. Yes, no, Magnus is not losing the position. I'm sorry. I actually think Magnus will lose, but somehow I've got a feeling that the the the, the game of Vincent and Mag uh, and uh, MVL it has the potential to uh, simplify uh, further. Mm, and uh, yeah, this is uh, yeah. It, it is very likely to end in a tie break, this one. Yes. Very likely that this match will, will be 1 1. So, not much action there. The Daniel Friedman's position is still. Oh, it's a draw! Wait, wait, no, something, some error. Oh, oh no, maybe it's not a draw. Shouldn't be. Can, can we see the, the camera view? No, it is! They drew! But wait. They drew. What is the last move? Bishop c5, 95, and maybe. Oh, they repeated moves. Are they repeated? They repeated moves. Oh, Daniel, I think Daniel just doesn't, doesn't He just didn't want to play, yeah. yeah. I think, honestly, he doesn't like to play Ding also. Yeah, I think he has a problem against Ding. I mean... He, he doesn't enjoy playing Ding. No, he doesn't like... No. Like, he feels Ding's vulnerability. Yeah. Doesn't like it. Mmm. Bit of pity. Yeah. 
Maybe. Strangely enough, I think. I actually agree with no, you. No, I, I think that I'm, yesterday I was even wondering, like it sounds insane, but I was wondering maybe subconsciously yesterday he, he didn't want to win that game where he could win with Rota AC5. Like subconscious, on a subconscious level. I have, that because it makes no sense uh, to not fight for, for the fifth place. All right, well, that means, well, our job is a lot easier. Uh, Ding gets fifth. Daniel gets sixth. That is confirmed. So he can definitely make a move here, and he knows it. Of course, he can play rookie one, he can play queen b2, he can play... Yeah, I think he just doesn't want uh, to play. Yeah, he yeah, doesn't want to play. He was done. Yeah, it's uh, underst okay, understandable on some level, yeah. Okay, well, that means we've got two more games. Let's stay with Carlson. Yeah, no, this one is uh, really very exciting. The most fun games are always uh, when Magnus is either in a must-win situation and doesn't have a big advantage, or when he's um, in a must-draw and is half-lost. These games are really fun to follow. Because then, actually, it actually is close then. It actually is exciting. Otherwise, he usually just wins with the margin. But now it's kind of yeah, it's kind of exciting. I think he's okay. I think he's kind of okay here. Relatively, relatively speaking. For, for example, this move queen d two that the computers are just. Well, I mean, I think this is that, that, that's not most logical. No? Yeah, but it doesn't look great to me because I'll go knight h five. And queen g five. And queen g five, yeah. Ah, rook f3, queen f2. Okay, okay, queen f2. Yeah, yeah, I missed this rook f3 thing. Yeah, yeah, this is very nice. Sorry, I missed rook f3 somehow. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, so queen d2 actually, yeah, then queen d2 is, uh, is a great move. Yeah, then actually, why are you even doubting that? Just make play queen d2. Yeah, it's just the, the, the classic. Okay, but maybe rook g... Maybe rook, rook g5? Knight f3, and you want to park the rook on g6, or...? Um, but you even g3 e4. is not out of question. I'm trying some knight h5, some some concrete knight h5, rook h4, rook f3, gf. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, this is win this is winning for you. He goes to d3, which sets up a nice little idea. For example. Guys at home, if you think this is sort of position where you can just play any move, well, you can't because now White hits you with e5. Pawn six are now very nice, removing the defender of h7. Amazing, and he is very happy, of course, to provoke bishop b5 because bishop b5 makes the rook on a5 looks look very of very dumb. Yeah. Now, if you go rook e8, the yeah. same idea rook doesn't quite work. Rook f1 but you just go rook f1. Now you really threaten this yeah. exchange sacrifice in a lot of lines. Do you um, think Magnus will allow the, the will f will realize this the best he got? Because the computer says rook e8, rook f1, rook g5 is not so bad. But of course, it is so counterintuitive to do that. Like for me, it is. It would be very hard. Uh, but I thought even. Yeah, because now I'm escaping with the king. Yeah. Also, d rook f6 e4. Yeah, is a thing. This e4 move all the time is a thing. Uh, that's. That's actually Otherwise, you would probably win. That's what I'm, I was thinking. Yeah, you e4 probably is win. massive yeah. because this check, king f8, we take check, and I win because king e7, queen takes f6, and I and I and I uh, mate you on f7. <laughs> just don't think Magnus will allow. Uh, I don't think he'll allow rook f1. This is just and, ro and rook takes f6. And here, rook g7. Probably I have a few wins here. Yeah, rook f3, rook g3. That's a nice one. Yeah. Rook f3, rook g3. It just wins the, just the rook on the, on the pin, yeah. Yeah, we've even yeah and king, king g8 is a nice finish. King g8, rook g3, rook g3, um, and, and bishop uh, mate. Bishop h7, bishop, 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 bishop g6. This famous mate. I teach my students this. Yeah, you know, this is the. You mean when. <laughs> when you called. don't do the commentary, you teach your students. Well, when I sometimes coach, I, I, this is one of the key ideas. So, what does this all mean? Well, this all means that. Uh, you have to be careful, but as Anish said, in this line after e5, there's a fantastic counter shot, Zvishensuk, key classic e4, and that is a cold shower because here actually you just lose. There's no more mate, black is solid enough, and you lose. 
Yeah, this is the line that Carlson has to find, it seems. It seems that there is nothing uh, better than that. And I think you need the move rook e8 because currently e5 is a threat. I would strongly, very strongly consider knight h5. And since I'm a noob, I would probably play knight h5. Nothing wrong with this move. No, a lot of things are wrong with this move. <laughs> no. Your whole thing is not, black pieces are just not I mean, you got guys on the rim. No, it's not this happening here. I mean, why is play so easy? I mean, you've got rookie one, you've got e5, always is an idea. Now, the drive is what the noob would play, and the castle will play is uh, rook e8, only move. There yeah. is also, of course, the c5 idea, e5, c4, but c5 is just rook a4, yeah? Now, castle will play rook e8, rook a1, and rook g5. He has to play it, apparently. Yeah, I don't, don't know, I don't think I would find it. I, I, I still think Richard is going to win this game. I think it depends on the next move. If Carlson finds rook eight, rook five, because for me, like, I feel that when rooks are lined up against the knight and there is an exchange second coming, I need to remove the knight. Like, I just need to remove it. That's, that's what, I, what I usually would think. But you have to think here beyond that, you have to allow the sec. And so if Carlson finds it, he's back in the game because Richard will be frustrated not seeing a win. But if Carlson doesn't find it, his position will be very, very bad. And then he will very likely lose this game. Yeah, he might find it by elimination. Let's see. I don't know. Rook 8 or knight h5. Let's see. Let's see. He's getting ready to He's move. just about to make a move. That's why uh, he's going to play quiet. Rook eight. He's about to make a move. OK, now he's back. But yeah, he's back into the thinking pose. Yeah, this position is all about peace coordination. Black is trying to coordinate these pieces. They're not coordinated, but they're just trying to get them all together, mm -hmm. get them to work together, mm -hmm. and avoid the direct attack. Knight h5, knight is here, rook is there, bishop is there, everything is, you know, all different. They're crisscrossing each other, rook uh, a5, mm -hmm. knight on h5, don't queen on g5, mm -hmm. rook on a5 is not, you know, disturbing everything. It's mm -hmm. just the whole thing doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Rook a8, rook g5, it puts it all together. Magnus clearly still unhappy, of course, with... No, because it, it's an, uh, like an optical... Um, Obstacle. This rook takes f6 thing, you know, rook f1, like, you want the knight out. This is the culture uh, thinking, you want the knight out of the way. Um, but you have to go beyond that, uh, slightly, go slightly beyond that. By the way, not that it's um, very, maybe not this a big deal, but Vincent lost a pawn, right? Oh, right. Let's have a look. Queen c1, no? Ah, black is to move. Sorry, black is to move. Black is to move. Okay, we didn't lose nothing. So I thought white was to move. Yeah, now I just take and take on a3. Yeah, this is just equal. Okay, so no, no news on the in, in this game. Uh, Daniel's game is over. Yeah, so basically, uh, all, eyes on, all eyes on Carlson. 19 minutes versus Richard's 26. So that's quite a nice little time advantage. Yeah, this is a crucial moment. I'm very curious what move is going to come here. Very curious. Yeah, he was ready to move and now he's gone yeah, back. Yeah, and I'm curious what, what move that was also. Which move was he ready to make? Indeed. It's an absolutely critical moment in the game. Whether you lose or you don't lose is decided. It's uh, largely decided here. Of course, Richie can still uh, let him back into the game somehow. Oh, he thinks he's lost, or what? No, I think this, 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 yeah, no, he's just disgusted. He, he's disgusted. He's just like, what a disgusting position I have. He doesn't see rook eight, rook g5. Can you just tell mean, me how bad is the uh, rook takes f6 sack? Just if I just sack what? directly. Rook eight, rook f1, yeah, rook g5. 
the stroke takes f6. That is, uh, yeah, that, OK, this no, not at all a problem for, for black, no, yeah? No. Not at all. No, so not at all. You have it's this an this optical this illusion. Yeah. yeah. It's an optical illusion. So he should just allow it. And e5, d, e, rook, f6, e4, he should see that. But he is disgusted. He's disgusted, of course. He doesn't see this uh, rook 8 idea simply, I guess. What else is there to play? There's though? nothing else. That's why he's disgusted. He should find it, actually. Especially given the, that he understood the, the gravity of the situation. He understood fully the gravity of the situation. And so without the trick, he is lost. He, he got it now. Mm -hmm. Now he needs to find the trick. Yeah, don't, don't play knight h5. That's what I would play. Don't, don't be a noob. MVL versus Kaima is about to end in a draw, by yeah, the way, via repetition. repetition. Yeah, yeah. So we are going to get a game. Uh, Tiebreaker, right? Tiebreaker, yeah. Yeah, this is a GG. And this GG. is yeah, this, repetition. Uh, well, let's go back to the only game, basically. The only game of the round that's left. Let's go back to uh, okay. NC. I want to see. Let's watch, you know, the man at work. All right, the key game. Magnus now, like, looking at the skies, like, disgusted. Yeah. 16 minutes, nice 10 minute advantage now for Richie on the he clock. He really feels the critical moment. That's yeah. a good, good sign for his fans because he really feels that this is the, the moment deserving, I think, mm -hmm. a proper thing. And you've got there a nice uh, overview of the hall. What is, uh, let me briefly check with my phone what happened yeah. in the open. Let me check what happened in the open tournament. A very exciting finale there. Hans Niemann was fighting for the first place. Uh, okay, Kolars Fedosev is a draw, so they are out of the running. Uh, Sharic Regaisi and Hans against uh, Mr. Ivich. Hans is, by the way, Hans is actually winning, so Hans might be the winner of the tournament, unless Ergaisi. Let's see what, what's up with Ergaisi. Ergaisi is, yeah, Ergaisi is a very, very complex position. He might win, he might also not win. Okay, Hans is basically D5. leading. Whoa, that is uh, uh, understandable. Basically, what it is, um, he understood this how dire the situation is. He didn't see rookie eight idea, and he. This is the ultimate sort of, you know, desperate attempt to solve the problems. It's Richard, a very desperate. Richard move. is coming back, but a it's bit happy really and shocked and. No, it's really bad, by the way. No, it's really, really desperate. He didn't find rook e8, huh? He probably missed the de4 idea. Surprising. I thought he would find it. Especially after a long thing. And Richie's like, okay. No, Richie completely... Uh, Loves it. Richie's like, wow. Oh. Wow. Ed? I mean, you just take. So, okay, what else and do you, you want you now? You can't take here because rook takes f6 is immediately the end of the game. And his idea is just, it must be g6, the only move. g6, but now rook a f1. Then I want knight, why not knight c4? rook takes f7 doesn't work. Knight no. d5 rook f7 you want. Ah, no, but then rook g7, yeah. No, but why not c4, c4, no, just. No, no, I know c4, but c4? this move is also crying out to be played. But knight d5, I think there's no. Rook f7, there's no mate, right? No, because I have rook f7, rook g7. Rook g7, yeah. No, 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 uh, c4, c4, b5, I think. But b5 even. Yes, yeah, c4, b5, b5, b3. I'll oh, take, take b5 again or something. Oh, maybe also rook of rook of 1, b6, queen d2, rook a6. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, b5, rook of 1, b6, queen f3. Knight d5, rook of 7. b5, rook of 1, knight h. I think b5 is the only move. I mean, there's nothing else. Like, what are we even talking about? b5 is his idea. b5 is the only move. Yeah, rook f1. The b6, queen f3. Now, this is just losing, I think. You're just losing f1. Now, this is lights out. Instead of bc, I think your only move I can see is knight h5. Rook f7. Oh, you take twice. Oh, man. King takes f7. Take. King, King f8. f8. 
Take. Can you just take knight g7? Queen h8, yeah. Queen h8, and you have to go king. No, it was is mate. Queen g7 was mate until, yeah. Oh. B5 played. Okay, rook a f1. Rook uh, a6 is the. Rook a6 is the, the resource you have. Rook a6 ah, is the okay. last resource you have. Rook a4, rook a6. D6! Yeah, rook d6, though. It's not obvious. Rook d6, c5. This yeah, is rook, rook back and queen and f3. Or bishop b3. Sorry, why not queen f3 directly then? King ah. g7. Ah, queen, king g7, yeah. This looks so clean. Queen f3. King g7. And d5. You threatened to shut off the 6th rank. With c6. Yeah, but let's say that it also kind of feels so shaky for black. He's already down a pawn and he's still shaky. No, this and is queen c3 and no, it's over. No, Carlsen didn't, he felt, the, he felt the critical moment. He saw that ordinary moves lose, but he, he didn't find the sick rook e8, uh, rook g5 idea. Wow. It's findable, findable, of course, especially if, uh, given how much time he spent. But yes, he tried something else desperate, but uh, okay, this whole sequence is not easy, of course. Yeah, you need to see rook f1. BC queen f3, it's one difficult move. Rook f1, rook f6, d6 is another difficult move. A lot of, uh, a lot of difficult, difficult moves. I explain to me, rook f1, rook f6, why not just queen f3? I don't understand. Oh, maybe it's also good, I don't know. I mean, I don't get it at all. Same thing. No, but why not just c5 now? Or c5. Uh, g5, g5, yeah? c5, g5, yeah. Yeah, suddenly my rook is trapped. <laughs> That's actually quite cute. Yeah, so maybe he saw this far. Mm -hmm. Maybe he saw this far. And d6 is uh, d6 is very deep. D6 is super deep. But even other moves are good here, yeah. Like let's say even just b3 is quite good, yeah. Yeah, b3. Although is then maybe again bc bc b5. Yeah, that's what I think he would do. This is the natural form. Yeah, not clear if you have improved as uh, white. Okay, Richie knows. Richie knows that he's winning, right? Richie feels. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's gonna go. Repeat. No, Richie has got that vibration. Yeah. The vibration is is on today. Richie feels the when he's winning. The vibrating sensation is there. Richie's in good uh, shape in this tournament. Very good shape in this tournament. So fantastic shape. He has one bad well. day. Ah, yeah, yeah, and then he came back fully. And then he came back fully. Yeah. No, Richie is. He's already beaten Carlson once in this tournament. Yeah, so it's not the first time for him. Carlson is away. I guess he's probably somewhere backstage, shouting at himself. Well, you shouldn't panic. I mean, um, he's been there so many times. Um, he he just has to recompose himself and beat Richie in the tiebreak, and he likely will do it. He's done it many times. He's many times he's had those matches where he would lose the comeback game and then win, win it anyway. He plays particularly badly games that are must draw. Uh, not only him, I think everybody. I think if you make a statistic on how people play must draws, mm. people play very badly. Especially if you make not only the result, but especially the quality of the games. The level is so bad in must draws really? and must wins. Yeah, horrible. From my, okay, my, my own games particularly maybe, but in whenever me or my opponents are in must win, the games are so bad, so bad. So much, so much nerves and so many mistakes. And Did we find out who uh, is actually uh, winning the opens? Or? Hans uh, is for sure one no. player. Yeah, yeah, Hans. No. Yeah, yeah. No, Hans is uh, likely to win his game. And uh, Arjun might catch Marjun or Sharic actually. Arjun and Sharic are sh sharing with him and they are having an unclear equal position. But Hans is having a winning position already. Wow. With 97.8 accuracy so far. So wait, so if, if Hans wins, he wins the whole thing? Uh, he at least shared. He's on 7 out of 8. And the other two people that are on 7 out of 8 right now are playing each other, Sharish and uh, uh, Ergaisi. So Hans, if Hans wins, he guarantees himself a share of first, second. Uh, possibly unshared first. Yeah, rook 6 yes. Now, now is the moment. Uh, this rook is it. Yeah, rook 6 yes, yes. This D6 move, yeah? D6 is the queen. I think he's going to see it. It's very thematic. You cut the communication and you gain a tempo with c5 after, and it allows, it's clean. It's clean, the bishop can come to b3. Yeah, because first you see queen f3. You yes. see queen f3, yes. oh, you first don't look at b6. First you see queen f3. 
You see king g7, you see c5, you see g5. Problem. You can miss g5. Then. No. You can. No, no. You, no, but if not g5, then you don't. You don't think that you. Your default thought is not that I'm beating Carlson. Your default thought is okay. What does Carlson want? So you 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 see g5 because there's no other move. So you find g5. It's not a bullet game, also it's 20 minutes, so he will see g5. Because you also think that Carlson has some thought, right? He do, you don't always assume that so he has some idea. So you should always assume that Magnus has some idea, basically, right? This is Definitely. not what you should do, but this is what you do, right? You okay. just, I think but do you have the same thing with other players? Like, yeah, 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 with other strong players, yes. Yeah, but yeah. if you were playing, I don't know, let's say you're playing, let's take a weak player like um, Laurent Fessinet, for example. No, it's a joke. Shout out to Laurent. If you're watching, buddy. Uh, no, let's say you're playing. Yeah, uh, Laurent uh, depends on the time. Like, let's say you're playing a 2300 player, right? Yeah, I rarely play those. I don't know uh, what sort of mistakes they can make. But let's say even if I'm, let's say I'm playing a player like Laurent, if he spends some time and he has 14 minutes left, I think he has an idea. An I idea. think that, that idea doesn't work probably, but he has an idea. An idea. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that against the most direct play, probably he has some defensive idea, which probably doesn't work because it looks also bad. Uh, if Laurent play makes a move with no time on his clock. I think very likely he's just panicked, yeah, and he doesn't have an idea. So that's also possible. But that goes even even with uh, uh, Carlson. If Carlson makes a move with zero, you know, with one second on the clock, you could also think he panicked. So, but when Carlson spent like ten minutes, he has thirty minutes left. Clearly, he had some idea, and you find the idea is kind of flicking g seven c five g five. Then you go a step further. You think, okay, what what I what else can I do? And I don't know if d six is a given, honestly. D6, through D6, C5. I think it's a given. Oh, the, with, it's with which so order? thematic. In which order? order now? He plays D6. But there is a bishop C6, bishop C6 no, somewhere. With, when queen no, comes D5. to F3. I play D5. I mean, uh, so what is your, your order? D6? I will go D6. Rook D6. Queen, uh, queen F3. Uh, sorry, C5 first. I beg your pardon. C5. Yeah, now I, yeah, now I can play Rook. E6 probably loses even more, so rook a6. Yeah, queen f3. Yeah, I mean now there was bishop c6, but bishop c2. Okay, queen, queen, f2. F2. queen f2. Queen f2, yeah. No, Richie plays d6, I trust. I know Richie. I know my Richie. Carlson has certainly seen it. Uh, of course, he's seen it. Yeah, uh, no, he should play d6, you're right. It's true, it's true. It's uh, quite it's doable. It's thematic, it's in flow. Yeah. It's the cut, it's the gain of tempo, it's the. Opening the diagonal, it's the, it's, uh, you know, the money move. It's the, like, who, like, Levon would just play d6 in two seconds. <laughs> okay, but first, not, not, not a problem yet. I mean, maybe. What do will, I know? No, no, but clearly he, I know. No, no, but he may, he'll maybe he'll play d6 next, move, next move. Next move, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, King g7. King g7 is the only move. And then d6. Yeah, now he's got it. No, then he's going to go d6. Yeah, he's not. He's move. going d6, yeah. one move, heal the next. He has to play d6 here, yeah. Because if he doesn't, then uh, no, bounces back uh, in the game. There's no other move. Like, no uh, other move? Uh, that wins, let's say. Yeah. No. So he's going to go d6. King g7 played, and then he's going to play d6 in the next 30 seconds. Because you see king g7. Yeah. And there you go. And Magnus understands. No, this he, is bad. I understand. So yeah, he sense. really understands. He, uh, he can smell it, yeah? No, no, it's... He, he, might, he might even resign after rook d6, c5, rook a6, d5. He might just be thinking, you know what, this is just too disgusting for me to play. It, like, this position could be resigned for Magnus. Here, rook a6, d5. He might just give up. Because there's no. really... Yeah, yeah. No, no, you won't. Why not? Uh, g5, he still has rook d4. And yeah, and there's no direct ah, okay. threat. But yeah, no, but if this move, but if g5 doesn't exist, no, there is a direct threat here, of course. D6 is I mean, after g5, rook d4, there's no in the direct threat. Yeah, exactly. Threat. Yeah. But what I'm saying is if it was white's move, yeah, d6 yeah, yeah. wins exactly. the game. No, that's why g5, rook d4, and g5. now some move. But uh, of course, he will lose this position because this position is dead lost. But I don't think it's just resignable just yet. And this guy comes here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you will lose, of course, but you need to make a couple more moves. To ensure. Yeah, it's bad news for you on the Easter egg front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, not not on my good, no, my no. best. Uh, Easter but I mean, egg. I gave you a good price at evens, but yeah, no, Richie is just too good. But it's more fun for the crowd. Yeah, uh, absolutely. To watch not only the match for the third place, but also the match for the first place, right? 
Otherwise, it's a bit of a bummer. Like you suddenly you're watching a match for the first time, decided. Yes. So now you know they are playing uh, for the biggest marbles, yes. the biggest stage. Yeah, it's uh, GG after C5. Actually, there's one little line that you have to say: C5, Bishop C6, Queen F2, Rook E6. Yeah, G4, but no G4 is. The no, it's, uh, it's straightforward. It's really straightforward. No, that's Queen E7. Queen E7. What is this? Queen E7 and yeah, Rook E2. There no is, way. There is hope. No way. And there is hope. No way. Always, oh, still the game still goes on. Oh, this very much goes on. I mean, Queen G3, Rook G2, okay. Game definitely goes on a little bit. No way. I think he's gonna find it, by the way. I think he definitely finds it. Yeah, yeah he definitely finds it. That's why first D6 was slightly more, because this position is completely winning, but the fir initially D6 first. It because he didn't have that didn't option. Have that option, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah this option is unfindable for uh, normal humans, but maybe now Carlson in, in a deep tank maybe he can spot it and then he's dead lost there in the end according to the computer but it's, it's a little bit of a little bit of hope because white king is a little bit open yeah i think he'll go for it yeah yes yeah, so at this point the other stuff is losing even more wow that's just incredible um he's the kind of resource that hikaru finds in some kind of blitz game and then you mess it up anyway <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Magnus Carlsen, will he find this brilliant idea? He knows back against the ropes. How many times, though? I mean, people also have to remember, right? We've been talking about how Magnus Carlsen is cruising, how he's just winning every game. There are times where he, you know, his positions are bad. And there have been periods where he's just had bad positions. And the reason why he's been world number one for... Uh, over 10 years is because he finds a way out of those positions. So he's a guy who can play on the front foot and on the back foot and under pressure, has got a good nervous system. All of these things contribute to his success. This is something that a lot of the other top players can't do as well. They can do it, but they can't do it as well. Uh, when your back is against the ropes. I think he said one, one time years and years ago when I started commentating, he said, if he, thinks the, if he thinks that there is sort of 1% hope in a position, then he should give 99% effort. In other words, he, he always wants to, you know, this thing has been said many times before, but against these kind of genius top players, you have to beat them numerous times in the same game. They find resource after resource after resource after idea, and so you think you beat them, whereas, you know, if I were to have this position against somebody of my level, they collapse immediately, and I don't really... I know they're going to collapse, and I'll probably convert. If I play somebody world-class, like a niche, they find the bishop c6, queen e7 genius rookie to... And then suddenly you thought you had won the game, and you're ready to celebrate, and now suddenly you've got a technical conversion, which is a mess, and you're thinking, how, why, why is this happening, and... Why, why can't they just resign? They just never resign. You just never resign. Well, until you do. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't, true. you don't resign until you do. Um, and, okay, luckily for Magnus here is that he, even if he loses this game, which is still the likeliest outcome, uh, he, he's got that, you know, he's got, he's got uh, still the whole tiebreak left. And, um, again, you should not judge him by his must draws, you know? His must draws have sometimes been not on it because also he usually mobilizes for moments where you know for crucial moments. In some sense, must draw is not a crucial moment. If he loses, he's still, he's still in in business, so he's not also not fully mobilized. Though. I think that this game he will probably lose, even if he finds this idea. Richie will convert it. The, the position in the end is kind of lost still. Either rook knight bishop against queen. It's lost. He should probably lose eventually, but the tie break, the tie break, I still have him as a favorite. Of course, this game, by the way, he will be really thinking like, what was that? Like, why did he, 
play so risky in the opening. It was so uncalled for and unnecessary. Know, but do you know one thing he's really good at? Just immediately forgetting about it and just getting on with the next game. He can just like, you know what, that was really dumb of me. He's got his father here, his girlfriend's here. Um, you know, they're going to just say, forget about it. Look, you just play a new match, two game match, off you go. Do, do what you do best. And he'll just say, yeah, okay. He can bounce back real quick. Real quick. He doesn't let it affect him. Actually, I think that's one of Fabi's big uh, assets as well. He, he's got good bounce back ability for getting a game real quick. There's some players, I think, at the top that still can't get that, how did I do this in this game out, out of their head. There are still some yeah. top players. You have to show up to the next game as if nothing has happened. Yeah. Or play, no, not, not play as if nothing has happened. Yeah. Now, of course, he found the only uh, resource. He'll, I mean, he, he found it, of course. He also tried to find it, so he, he did find it. But I just think it's probably no longer enough to save this particular game. But we'll see, we'll see. I don't know, I'm worried about my Easter egg now. Really? Yeah, yeah. No. I, I've got a weird feeling. No, but that position, it, no, it's it, looks, too it looks murky, but... It's, it's too brilliant, this is the idea. Lost. Queen M2, no, this position, Nigi Hori, I was thinking about it while you were giving a speech, I think it's lost. I think it's quite, it looks quite lost to me. Yeah, Queen G3. Oh, by the way, Rook There's some Knight H5 as well to think about. Them. Yeah, but then just GH and Queen, Queen G5. G3. Queen G5. And Queen G5. Yeah. What? Yeah, and then Rook F7 is nothing, or what? I think I'm, I better see Protector there. No, you don't. King H8, Rook F7. No, no, but I'm going to take on F7 just. Your Queen is already on G3, right? Ah. What? You speak about 95 GH? Yeah, queen you're G3. saying queen G3, queen G5. Yeah. Ah, sorry, the bishop was on C2. I thought it was on yeah, B3. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah, no, this is fine. No, you uh, can't do No, it. but you have queen F6. I was just wondering uh, how obvious is rook takes C2? Why do you take on G2? Why not take on C2? Ah, yeah, good point. I have some queen C5, no? Not D5. D5? Queen C5, rook 4 F6. I mean, what is this nonsense? I think White had a more trivial win uh, instead of d5, more normal win. Just rook, uh, rook four f2. It's not a win, but it's uh, yeah. Rook takes f2, queen takes f2. Yeah, but this doesn't look winning. No, but it is. So rook, <laughs> rook d8. I think uh, yeah, d5, queen d4 is probably the point. Yeah, it's not all. You have to see all this a little bit in advance. Yeah, it's not it's so easy all of it. Just, and the nerves and the pressure are a little. Yeah, no, not so easy. I think not so easy. Richie probably suffers from worse nerves than Magnus. Well, that's for sure, actually. Um, you think so, yeah? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I guess he just put it Richie gets so. more emotional than Magnus. Mm, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know him that well. How, hard also, you know, to tell the way people talk and. You can't always tell how they feel. That's why it's nice to have these heart monitors, heart rate monitors, because the, the numbers don't lie. The hips don't lie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rishi very annoyed, yeah? He's so queen in seven. Very annoyed. Wow. Ah, so that's the way to play chess, yeah? When you're dead lost, you have to think real hard, yeah? <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Mm. That's what no, he I never, said. I never tried. Yeah, I should try. Yeah, you should try it one time. You know, I had a coach who, uh, who had a different theory. But yeah. maybe this one is more practical. Yeah. Okay. Rookie six on the board. We're going to get this. And there is bishop b3 option as well here. That's uh, what uh, Rich is thinking about. Bishop b3 is a move as well. Bishop b3. g5. Rook f5. You are mm. losing material with bishop b4. Bishop b6, f6. Yeah. Okay, it goes on. Rook, f5, rook e5, bishop d3, it goes on somehow. Wow, there's some discovery as well. So Nine, yeah. Uh, Nine, 97, you mean, yeah? Yeah, 97. Particular, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Queen G3. Oh, Queen G3 and Queen E5, Queen E4 in the end. So this is just yeah. uh, winning. Yeah. No, this has got super sharp suddenly. Okay, it's all kind of blackest kind of, you know, 
kind of lost, half lost everywhere, but it, it, is, it is not trivial just yet. The final line of defense has been erected. The final line of defense. If it crumbles, game is over, but it's, it's still there. Richie is in a tank. Crucial moment. And he has the time, so he will take his time, he'll think. Knight g4, queen e7. Knight f6, rook e2. Queen g3. Let's think about rook c2 and rook g2. Wow, this could actually get to a, a, a... If they use a bit of time here, which they probably will, this could get very, very uh, exciting with just a few minutes left each. Hmm. They, they could easily be on three minutes left each, so... Yeah, I still want my pizza. I'm still hoping to get a pizza in this in this room pizza? one day. Pizza. Oh, I think we're a bit late for that. Later. Yeah. Oh, Sunday. Do they do pizzas? Monday, no. Monday. Yeah, I mean Easter. Easter. Easter Monday. Yeah. Do they do pizzas? They probably probably do. not. No. I wouldn't have thought so. No. Pizza would be nice. Just to celebrate this beautiful spectacle of chess. Me, you, pizza, Magnus, Richard, MBL, Vincent. Well, how? What is a better way to spend Easter than, True. than in this wonderful company? I agree. Some nice greasy salami pizza. Yeah, it's a crucial moment. Carlson. Uh, he just really finds disgusted. resources. Yeah, he's still disgusted. disgusted. With yeah, 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 yeah. He just took a sip of water as if it was uh, it came from a bottle of Grishuk, but it's uh, <laughs> it is the position that disgusts him, not the, not the water. The water in Germany, I heard um, the tap water is amazing. I heard it's good. Yeah, yeah, I heard it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Tap water is good here. Can't complain. Which is nice. What is it not good in in the Netherlands? In, it's also good in the okay. Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not good in some countries. Some it's not, co not good. I don't re remember now. Yeah, I always check it whenever wherever I am. I, I don't know how it's in Spain, for example. No, it's it's not good in Spain. Yeah. You can't you can't drink it in Spain. Yes, but not yes. not not in uh, a lot of places. It's really nice when you have good tap water because you often want to drink water. Yeah. And then if you are yeah, you can just take it from the tap, which is very nice. So I think in that glass, Magnus might just have tap water. I'm not sure. I would actually say he doesn't have tap water. I think he has a bottle. I water. think he has a bottle. Yeah, that, that's what happens when you get, you know? When you become more So champion. rich and so famous. Yeah. Even in Germany, you just get yourself bottled water. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I mean, this is like fly private jets, drinking bottled water. That's it. That's the life. That's all he yeah, does. But, do you, but yeah, but is that the life you want, though? <sighs> yeah. I mean, really? <laughs> So no, just just one. fly business, drink from the tap, just be normal, like. Okay. Why this whole like? The charade, private jet. The private jet. I mean. Not needed. The bottled water. I mean, what else? Gold chain. What is it all for? Richie is in a massive, massive tank. Yeah. Because this could be the last thought um, needed in this game, and for that thought, you take a lot of time. If you find the win here, you don't need to spend any more time. And, and also he feels he has got that vibration, right? That he knows that there's a win. He feels there must be a win. And um, he also noticed Queen 7 resource. And so he's trying to calculate the consequences. I have to say that Knight G4, Queen 7 Knight 6 Rook 2 Queen G3, Rook G2, even if that's winning, um, even if you think that's winning, it is just doesn't feel clean, right? You don't right. want this kind of imb material imbalance and right. open king a little bit opened, a little bit. Um, you might think it's a win, but you don't define it in your head as a clean win. You're looking for, mm -hmm. I would be looking for a cleaner one first before mm -hmm. settling on that. Mm -hmm. Like computer might say to plus three and a half, but this is not the plus three and a half no. that you want. Absolutely. Like I want the plus three and a half with an extra piece on oh, the board absolutely. and everything else clear. Now there is some kind of imbalance. I want a cleaner win. So, um, so bishop, bishop b3. b3. Okay. Now yeah, that was the other one. But yeah, yeah, this l allows the complications with g5. This is this is. We're not talking about it, right? Yeah, g5 yeah, only g5. move. Rook f5 only move. Bishop e4 only move. Bishop e6 only move. F3 only move. Rook e5 only move. 
Should D3 only move? Should D3 only move? No, you exchange down. You exchange down. You're dead lost. You exchange okay. down. You have to go to Should D3. And now you have knight H4. So now rook E6, I can play. Yeah, but that's exactly how you don't win against Carlsen. Yeah, pawn, pawn. No, 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 yeah, no. Just one pawn. You don't want just one pawn. And you've got the blockade. Rook E8. Rook E8, Queen E8. Some kind of technical conversion is needed. Maybe knight endgame is winning. It's probably winning, but yeah, it's been more winning before. Okay, let's see. Let's see. This still, this position is still winning, but it is uh, not trivial. Not trivial. Yeah, bishop before only move. Because uh, otherwise you're collapsing. You're collapsing. I'm curious, has, has Richie seen the whole line? Did he see bishop d3 in the end, for example? I don't know, actually. I don't, I I don't get the impression d3. that he has seen it. No, I think he might have missed bishop d3 in the end. Yeah. He saw knight d7, queen g3, I think. Bishop b4 played. Yeah, he's got a take on a6. He's gonna do that. There's no option. No reason not to, yeah, also. Yeah, you have to. Takes. Yeah, you have to go to k5. If it takes f6, is uh, not not mm. enough. It's a cool endgame. Okay, yeah, bishop d3. Has, has he seen that move, I wonder? Yeah, that's wonder gonna that. be interesting. Well, you need to play this move as white, because otherwise knight g4 just ends the game. Then. So, of course he plays it. I'm sure, no, Magnus plays it, but my question is, has Richie anticipated all of this and planned rule this e6? Or has he missed this, this idea? That's the question. You can miss it. It's a few moves deep into the line. You're already tired, nervous, all of that. Uh, very forgivable that you miss. Uh, yeah, he missed it. He missed it. He's yeah, like, he missed it. He's like, yeah, again, I'm not winning the game. He Unbelievable. Missed he missed it. He just missed it. He can go for the uh, end game with uh, uh, this rook d1, let's say. Knight g4, queen takes f8, knight takes g4, or knight takes g4, I guess the same, yeah. Knight g4, rook f2, yeah, probably knight g4 is more normal. Rook f2, knight f2, play this position. Oops. But it's, um, yeah, this position is looking very good for white, but not the game, it's bishop c4. The game certainly continues here. No, this is. Totally unclear, right? I mean, white is completely in the driver's seat, but uh, it is not, not. Uh, but this clear is a win. very distant uh, memory from, or a very distant. Uh, Plate, by the way. This is a very distant. What's the word? Um, image for, of what Richard was had in his mind compared to twenty minutes ago. Yeah, and this is going to happen. Now. It's happening. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. That's also why he's the best, because he finds that ultimate resource. Uh, the good news is, mm -hmm. my Easter egg is back, al back alive. Yeah, no, the Easter eggs are jumping, you know? You're very alive here. You're very alive. Yeah. No, my Easter egg is... Uh, it's just become a chicken. Okay. White still has a very good winning chance of the bishops for knight g4, knight e3. Knight g4, knight e3 is a nice maneuver. I need to dislodge the bishop from guarding the e6 and d5 square. These are the vital squares. I need to dislodge the bishop. This is very slippery, this position. It's very, very slippery. Against a great defender, and Richie is facing um, just that. It's very, very slippery. Yeah, this is this is not uh, not ideal. Uh, okay, bishop c4 played, and Richie will play knight knight. G4, yeah, yeah, knight g4. Uh, it's clear. You, th these are the squares you need to fight for. Knight and f2 is uh, pretty poor, pretty poor. The only uh, alternative uh, path for the knight from f2 is maybe you are uh, maybe you want to get it to e5. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are like, okay, have your bishop on d5, but I'll have my knight on e5 and rook to f7. 
Actually, that looks to me even more winning. To get knight g4, rook back and knight e5. That would be nice. But I don't know if I'm in time, though, to do all this maneuvering. But if I could, knight to, if I have rook to the f-file, I'll be doing, uh, I'll be doing very well. Yeah, agreed. Knight g4 played. Now I'm curious what move Carlson will make. I don't find this position clear. I guess bishop d5. I don't know. I don't find this. Uh, I don't find it easy now to make a move for black. Richie could still win, huh? Oh, definitely, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. I know I've been singing Magnus's praises for the past few moves, but Richie could. No, I mean he has. Uh, only thing that happened so far is that he he hasn't converted the position into a win, but. He's still in a in the driver's seat, and he is still much much better. Um, it is not like Carlson already escaped, but let's just say Carlson is escaping. We are witnessing his escape alive. Like he just ra escaped the prison, and he's running. The police is chasing him still. He's still chasing. We just have to shut the borders. But you know this guy. If he already escaped, usually it's bad news. He's got all, of course, already police bribe and everything. He's coming out. Difficult moment. Critical Five moment. Five minutes. Critical left moment, for actually. Carlson. Because a bad move could be the end of the game. Yeah. Yeah, not a good move, bishop b3. Not a good move according to the computer at all. Bishop b3, not a good move. No, because it doesn't do anything. I just go rook d2. Yeah, I think he's just trying to think of a plan as well, which is, you know, understandable. The computer doesn't like bishop b3. But maybe he has got some. Uh, maybe he's got some point. Some human points he's got that the computer doesn't understand. Let's let's have a, a, a big close up right here of the players, if we can, uh, in this tense moment. Our Okay, we haven't got a close up. Here we go. Tense. You, I like the I like the the the, the side on view. You know, you you, you see the tension. Mm. Meanwhile, the Twitter crowd, uh, let's see, any tweets for Anish here? By the way, what did we get? Rook d2? Okay. <laughs> okay, we, we got some interesting uh, comments on the, uh, the artist uh, we were talking about before, Anish, about the Kunst, artist, the, Kunst, uh, the Kunstler. Kunstler. Yeah. yeah, I... Uh I, I'm not sure. I mean, I should get the reference normally. I do have a fine command of bad English words, but I don't, <laughs> don't quite know where you're going. It just says, please be quiet. Haters, please don't hate. Yeah, I, th I thought that was his idea. I thought that H5, was his idea. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, you know what is, you know what's happening. Okay. He is absolutely um, terrified of the idea of knight coming to e5, the one that I told you about, rook e1, knight e5. So he is doing uh, dislodging the knight mm -hmm. at all costs. Mm -hmm. I he, like it. Computer doesn't, but I think he thinks that Forget this is the key. And he went bishop b3, so that after h5, knight e3, bishop b3, rook d3, like wouldn't happen. So. This is his point, yeah. And I thought that he wants to go h5. It was also the move that came to my mind, actually. I think Richie's going to go knight h2 to come to f3 now. But then bishop d5. I know you bishop d5. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, it's very interesting how computers thinking so differently about the game. And it's being so concrete about things, while humans, they just want to prevent knight e5. Such simple minded creatures humans are. Your computer was suggesting some strange queen f8 move. Uh, it was a little bit beyond me also what, what the, the idea was. It was very much beyond me. Some concrete business, but I didn't quite understand. Some queen f4 probably was coming. Queen f8, strange move. Yeah, a, a very cool solution by the way, the computer offers knight f2, bishop d5, h4. Yeah, that was looking at that. That's very, very cool. And the I point know. is, if you 
if you go G4, yeah, you just H1? Rook H5 just. Rook H5. And then Rook G5 check. And G H is probably your best, uh, your most G normal. H. And then Knight H3. And that's actually beautiful. Rook F2, Rook G5 swinging. Just getting mated there somewhere. Wow, that's that's pretty amazing. Curious if Richie will find it. He might it. find it, you know. I don't know. I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think that's a normal thing to find. Knight f2 played. Okay, so bishop d5 is kind of forced because knight e4 is in the air, right? Yeah, Carlson might have spotted h4. Might have just spotted h4. But it's too late because knight e4 is a threat. Yeah. And bishop, otherwise, he would have played bishop d5 instantly, but he saw now h4 is coming. I think Richie sees h4. Yeah, it's the only move that actually wins. That actually wins, uh, that kind, kind, of, kind of clinches it. Not just yet, but very close to clinching it. Because otherwise, if you don't go h4, black is alive. Queen mm -hmm. of 6 is coming. Mm -hmm. You've got some stabi stability. The bishop on d5 is stabilized. h4 really breaks it all apart. If you tell the move to anyone, immediately they'll realize it's the best move. But you just have to spot it. You just have to spot gh knight h3 idea somehow. Once you spot it, it's, it's not a usual idea. I can easily imagine a person missing it. Especially in a tense moment like that. Yeah, h4 and h3 is a very unusual, very difficult idea. Okay, didn't find it. Yeah, normal. I mean, we are here with computers, so we are slightly blinded. We're slightly blinded. Oh, my oh this, is a normal, uh, this is a normal way to convert, by the way, to try to convert. g4? Aha, uh -huh, some tactics. g4? Tactics. A g, queen, g4. Activating the queen, trying some uh, some tricks. Trickster. <laughs> trickster. He's a trickster. Yeah, there's rook f2 here. A g rook f4 wins wins the g pawn. Oof. It just wins. That's really just very very strong. Yeah, knight e4 uh, was normal. G4 a bit a bit rushed. Yeah, uh, g4 was a bit rushed. Uh, he slightly right. panicked into that move. Right. I think he missed rook of two, rook of four. Because after a g, you're just you're losing the pawn. Just I mean, he, he had some better attempts instead of g four. Mm -hmm. um, he got slightly, uh, slightly excited about this possibility. Um, queen g five, you know, some mm -hmm. perpetual ideas, and he thought, okay, anyway, it's probably lost, so I just. But he could he could try something something else. Though it was hard to find the move. Queen d five was rook e five. Queen f six was rook f two, and then rook f e two. Yeah, no, he wants queen g5, right? Yeah, yeah. No, now Richie has to find rook, but rook of two is okay. That, 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 that he, he'll find. This is just uh, easy math. Easy math. Yeah, rook f2. Rook e2. Ah, wow. Not found. Also logical to put the rook on e2, right? No, no, uh, okay, a g, rook e6, but. Then there's some perpetual or put, well, not perpetual, but. Some mating. Perpetual is not there because I have rook e1. Some but mating G3. net, yeah, some mating And net. white has a bunch of checks, but I will go to f8 and to, e7, and to f7 and then to f6. Yeah, I don't think you have a win there. I'm just going to stay there. Yeah, what does he want? Oh, he wants g3 maybe after uh, a g. g3. Yeah, g3. That's, uh, that's a nice move. Yeah, g3, g3. Yeah, no, this is, this is the way. That's what he wants. Instantly we'll play g3. Yeah, g3 is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah instantly, yeah. yeah. And obviously, that's how you must play chess, yeah. And now he wants to look at four, rook e4. Rook e4. He wants to win that pawn. He found a systematic way of winning mm -hmm. it. The other is like opportunistic, rook f2, rook f4, mm -hmm. because of the pieces on the g file. Mm -hmm. This is a systematic way of winning it. You first block it, and then you collect it. Yeah, Richie's still looking comfortable. Yeah, it's not, not over just yet, but it's very close. It's a very clean. It's very position. easy to collapse here as black, though, because you you, you just I mean, you have to find some. You have, maybe you have ideas. already collapsed. Yeah. That's the thing. Maybe you have already collapsed at this point. You have to be a computer to put up any resistance here at all. But even computer is collapsing from the lines that I see. Computer suggesting. Yeah. He's losing pawns. It's collapsing. I mean, there is some. You need the king on the h file. That's for sure. Um, for rook, f, rook e4, and then 
you put a queen on h6, and after rook g4, you have queen c1 check. That's the idea. So the defense for black is, after rook f4, rook e4, you want king on h7, queen on h6. That is sort of a defensive construction. Con yeah, let's say king h7 now. Uh, rook f4, let's say queen g6, rook e4, and now queen h6. Uh, rook g4, queen c1 check. So you're not collapsing um, things to this trick. And that's how you somehow still keep it together. OK, uh, now if rook f4. Queen d3, he wants. Rook g4. King f6 on the move? Or rook yeah. f2 check? Yeah. Rook f2 check? Yeah, yeah. You're king right. G2 slides rook out. F, rook f4. No, but just, yeah, rook g4, king rook f2. It's, 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 it's all over. Fly. No, no, he, he didn't find a defense there, no. Now, even that what I mentioned with this king h7, queen h6, it looks so terrible. No, it's, it's, really, it's not really holding. It's just sort of trying to put up some resistance. But of course, it was also collapsing. Computer also said it's lost. This is already lost. But you're losing the h pawn, the g pawn now with, with the check in all the lines. Queen d3. Yeah, but just rook g4. Now you play king f2. Can you show me why yes. why not rook g4? No, I think rook g4 is probably okay. Nothing wrong with it. Hmm. Hmm. A rook f2 check was not, not, not accurate? Oh, because the king is suddenly running, yeah? It's not completely meaningful. Right? Wow, interesting. King comes to c6, v6, cv king b6, so. Huh. Nice, yeah. The king f2 is... Uh, computer was saying king f2, by the way. This is a cleaner move. Very impressed. Yeah, it's a cleaner move. Because queen g6, you have rook e4. But it's a very... Very cool by Richie. Uh, very cool of Richie not to resist this. Collecting the pawn and giving checks, yeah. Because you think, okay, you win the pawn, but this is really, really nice. You also want to keep that king cut off. The black king. You don't want it to cross to c6 and get to safety. Yeah, still looks very bad for Magnus. One minute, 42 left on the clock. Very unlikely he saves this. No, it's co completely collapsing the position, right? Oh, white wants to uh, collect the e6 pawn, maybe. Uh, also. If, if it was my move. Maybe I just want to take on e6 and come back? And come back? Why not? Ah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want, actually. This is, looks very, very bad for me. Oh, the whole thing is falling apart completely. Yes, I think it's a uh, kind of resignable territory soon. Queen b3? Yeah, because you collect the g4 pawn and then you go rook g2 e4. You, you collect the e6 pawn with a check as well. Yeah. Rook g4, uh, rook f4 check. Yeah, he wants to win it with the check. Uh, rook g4 was queen d5, so he wants to win it with the check. Yeah, two pawns uh, and two rooks for a queen, it's completely winning. It's completely winning. Well, King G7 looks to me like more tenacious of the most, but I don't know. Magnus still has some hopes, it seems, yeah? I'm not sure. I think he might be acting. Okay, King G7. Yeah, yeah. King G7, I don't King quite. G4. About Queen D5? Queen D5. Oh, or maybe... Yeah. Queen D3. King G2. It's only one pawn, it's not two, it's only one pawn. Uh, the e6 pawn hasn't fallen yet. I don't need two pawns, one is more than enough. Okay, he will go King G2 here. Actually, conversion might be quite long. Like, I, I think he will convert, but it, it might take a long time to mm -hmm. win this position because mm -hmm. black is not, you know, collapsing sort of. Black, black is just kind of lost because of material, but it's not. 
not c6 makes sense yeah he's just sort of in general lost but it's not completely forced Maybe getting some time on the clock. I'm, I'm wondering, yeah, does he try? Does he want to try to to enter the seventh rank, like rook of two, rook is three, seven? Because I think that that could be could be wrong. Ah, rook f two, king e seven, rook g seven, like this. Yeah, because um, maybe with only one rook, your king is not as secure. I think he's going to go back. No, no, he's going for it. Oh, no, he's going for it. Hold on. Computer didn't like it at all. No, but no, no. But no. It, it has to be all very winning still. Very winning. I mean, white has two rooks and a pawn against the queen. That's a lot of material. That's just winning. Completely winning territory. Oh, rook g7, rook gf7. That's the idea. And then e5. Only move. Because I want to give you mate with rook f8, rook f7. That's really nice. That's, that looks like the, that looks like by the way like a forced win. Rook g7. And it would be a forced win. King e8, rook gf7. The point being that after takes, it's just mate. It's mate in two. But you have this e5 move, which, which is absolutely the absolute last resort. And then okay, then your king comes out, and you are just still technically lost, but not. Not completely, completely lost. Now this is rook of eight, rook of seven, rook e eight. So you must collect the other pawn. Okay. This looks so lost. But. But the evaluation is not, yeah, not like it's. You play b5, Magnus? Yeah, yeah, he has to, okay, he has to. D. Uh-huh. Queen d5. Yeah, you know this. It can go wrong somehow. Of course it can go wrong. It can definitely go wrong. Queen's There's no forced win here. Wow. There's no forced win. Oh my god. He's still... Uh, How does he do it? He already like... How does he even get here? He's not even the last line of defense. He's like way beyond. How does he even get He's here? He's burning down his own... How does he do it? His own... How many weapons. people would have lost by now? Yeah, I have to say though, of course, yes, Richard is playing very well this game, but he hasn't finished it off yet. No. He, he's not playing it like a computer. <laughs> I have to disappoint him. Richie is not a computer. This is the conclusion. What? He's very good. Richard is unable to play chess like an engine. And then it's very hard to beat Carlson. If you are not able to play like an engine, it's very difficult. Richie is trying. He's playing very well, but... Uh, Queen e3. He will go e6, I think. I think e6. How is the pawn endgame after e6? Yeah, this I have rook f8, rook f7. This is my point. I'm winning the pawn endgame. But he will not take. He will go e7. I can play rook f8 there. King h3 by Richie. Where is he going exactly? Okay, now he's going to push, for sure. But the problem is you can't create. No, no, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you should still push. Because king e7. Or, yeah, king e7. Rook f7, king e6, rook f6, king d5. You're escaping. You're escaping. Yeah, you walk around the pawn. Yeah. He went back Oh, this is uh, stronger, because now the pawn is unblocked. And king e8 is stronger. Very defense. Because your king guards the e pawn. Right. I'm not sure. I'm not going to send the move king h3 because now after e6, the queen e6 is always a check. So I don't know where exactly the king is going. Rich is trying to walk around and come up the board, maybe. Uh, Richie, by the way, I know the stage he entered now. Uh, he is in some sort of a tilt. Like you have that, mm -hmm. uh, you have this win, win tilt. I, uh, at some point, when your opponent defends for so long and so well, and you haven't finished off the game that you should have finished a long time mm -hmm. ago, you enter that win tilt situation mm -hmm. where you are like, okay, it has to be winning, and you start playing mm, thoughtlessly. Mm -hmm. And then you win or not, already by accident. Like it's just, he's in that tilt. 
I think he wants to push. Yeah, at, that, at this point he's just going to push something and he's going to see like, okay, whatever. If the position doesn't win itself, then okay. Well, how, who will win it? Right. Yeah. I think he's that's tilted. what he wants to do. He's tilted. King e7, not king d5, yeah. King e7, more resilient still. Yeah, king e7 feels like the move. He will play that, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. will play He this. already played the similar move before. Yes. No! Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. Now he's just gonna lost, go e6. Lost patience there. Rook d8! Big mistake! Where is he? Why is he checking him? What's he doing? Where what, is is, he? what is this check? King c5. Anyway, you cannot win by force. King c5 before king b6, so why did he give a check? King c4? King c4 even stronger. And even now, stronger. Oh my goodness. He should have gone e6, keeping the rooks together. Yeah. Uh, because now the rooks are not together. Oh, he's messing this one up, by the way. Oh no. Easter, queen g5. Oh no. My oh Easter no, egg. Oh no, my no. Easter egg. No, 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 no. But queen h5, queen e2 is there. He's gonna win the e6 pawn for free. Okay, he's winning. He won the e6 pawn for free. Queen h5, queen e2 is there. Rook f8, queen h5, queen g2, queen e2, and queen takes e6. Oh, and now we are, uh, now we have a position which is already, uh, that is very hard to convert. That is like legit hard to convert. To the point that it just might be a draw already. Also, the king has actually activated, even the king has activated itself. You can reason. lose this position. No, 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 you can't lose, but uh, you can definitely not win it. Yeah, if you try too hard, you can lose. Mm, yeah, some, I don't know how. Like, you, you know, when you have two rooks, you can always defend, but yeah, winning, is, that's what we need. That's not, not happening. He messed it up so bad, but I tell you, I felt the tilt. I, I also very often enter that stage. It's a remarkable uh, sensation. The vibrations. The, no, the vibrations are off at that point. There are no vibrations. No, you've been vibrating for so long. <laughs> You're tired. <laughs> it starts hurting and you just... Uh, yeah, and you just... The, the, the pain Richie's, is numb. Richie's just no, like, Magnus is thrilled. Richie's like... How's, no, it's in this belief. Yeah, yeah. No, after the, the, the tilt, at some point you mess it up completely, and then your head comes back to you, and you're like, "What have I done?" Yeah, rook f4 check is probably what he will try, but then king c. Is it king, king c3? Five? King b3. Yeah, king b3. I was sort of hoping that. I don't know what I was hoping. Yeah. Yeah, king b3 maybe also. Why not? D3 is not King C2. King H also. Incredible. Magnus Carlsen, another Houdini job. How many times have we seen this over the years? So he's going to. Um, yeah, by the way, computer prefers King C5. I also like King C5 more. King B3 a little bit exposing the king. King C5 better. But he might go King B3, by the way, at this point. Mm, I don't know. Bo both don't look bad. Curious what he'll do. Yeah, King B3, human, human. Human mistake. Computer says it's losing. It's a huge mistake, actually. Because your king is in some sort of a mating, mating net, actually. I will give a check on the third, then on the second, then yeah. on the first, at yeah. some point. So it is a very responsible move, King B3. Very responsible. Very responsible move. He should have gone to C5 and it would have been, would have been a draw. Oh, he's just sort of feeling it, yeah, Magnus? He's thought, okay, Things are going his way very much, so he just slightly lost, slightly careless. Rook d3 with just only two seconds he played that. Move. Yeah, no, it's, uh, Rich is uh, completely gone. <laughs> Rich is completely gone. C2, but how do you. No, he won't play Rook. I don't think he'll play Rook f3. He'll play Rook d3. He'll play Rook d3, Rich. Yeah, Rook d3 is coming. For some reason, that's a mistake. Yeah, that's a human move. I don't know why it's a mistake. Queen d6 check. Yeah, maybe g4. Maybe g4. Of course he'll play g4. Maybe king g2 also. Okay, play g4. Yeah, g4. Okay, now we've got... Okay, this is a nice king one. King takes b2. This is a nice one. No, 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 no. Uh, the rooks are unable to... If the rooks were to jump over each other, yeah, they would, would be mate in two. But they cannot... The rooks cannot, you know? G2. Now c5 comes. He could win it, I'm telling you. No, but then rook g, c5, rook g3, rook f2, king h1, rook g1 I want. Wait, c5? Rook g, so yeah, c5, rook g3, c4, rook f2, king b1. Luckily, you didn't have time for, uh, for c3, c2. Yeah, now king h1. Yeah. Almost made, but a check. queen h6 check on the move. And this is all happening, of course. As we, oh, oh, wait, wait, Magnus, Magnus did something. He did something, queen d5. Queen d5, no good. <gasps> but 
But now, he, now he gave him a tempo. But now, now it's made. Now it's made. No, oh, no, no, he, he blundered. He blundered. He, blundered. he, he realizes. realizes. No, now oh, it's just wow, made. No, it's all, it's all over. This is, wow. And now it resigns. Now, wow. it's, now it's just forced made. Yeah. King c1 only move. Uh, King c1 only move. Rook f2. Queen e5. Queen d6, queen e5. And then... You still... It's still tricky. A little bit, yeah. King c1 only move, I think. I, but maybe... Probably it's losing by force, but it looks like only move still. It's still tricky. Or queen e5 you can start with. Similar idea. Yes, 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 yes. With the... No, still... It's, they're still not... Uh, not no, no, this is not... This is not trivial. I do have also g pawn. I can combine it with a g pawn. I know, and I have c pawn. So, yes. And when you move it, then I have some more checks. So my win after... Um, it goes like this. King c1, rook of 2, queen e5, g5. That's, that's the win. You go some b or c pawn, and then I go g6, queen h8 check, king, g, king g2, and g7. I combine mate and g pawn, and I win. Queen e5 play. No, Let's watch this out. Let's just yeah. see how this plays. Oh, but he'll win it. Rook of 2 and g5. Yeah. King c1. And just g5. g5. King b1. King b1, he played. King b1. Yeah, he wants to give a path for the c pawn. G5, C4, G6, C3, G7, C2. Yeah. Queen. No, but then Rook of 1 and G8, Queen. Or Queen, yeah. Queen and Queen A2. Yeah. <gasps> What's he doing? Why not G5? Mm -hmm. Richie, G pawn. Richie, don't forget about the G pawn. It's your only chance. He's gonna, he's gonna G pawn. This is. He has no time! He lost on time! He lost on time? No. No. He just made it. He just seconds. made it. He was about to lose on time. I saw, it, I saw it live. Okay, he's lucky he can repeat moves once. Carlson will go maybe to d1. Yeah. He'll maybe go to d1. He should yeah. go to d1. Yeah, and then the king can yeah, go. Yeah, king e1 and be annoying. Be annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he should go definitely go to d1. Rook Come on. Two. Definitely go to d1. Also Don't repeat. No seconds. Definitely go to king, d1. King d1 play. Yes. Yes, 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 exactly. Okay, now it's less clear. G5, king d1. Yeah, no, this so is. Back to square one. <laughs> Richie, he doesn't see the, he doesn't see g5 idea. He just king doesn't see the idea. No, he doesn't, he see. doesn't see the idea. He doesn't see that the g pawn is pushing. King H3 played. He's trying to give checkmate, you understand? Yes. He doesn't realize that there is also the G5 King idea. One played. He's escaping. Escaping again. Houdini. Oh. Harry Houdini in the flesh. I don't know if Magnus is uh, Houdini, but Richie is definitely not a stockfish. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I can tell you that. Richie is very strong, he's not a stockfish. Magnus has been lost 55,000 times this game, by the yeah, way. Like, like, Richie was so close. In the end, like he just had to find. Before his natural Rook G1. Oh, okay. Now it's again, again, and he entered the tilt again. He's just making moves without thinking. Yeah, he's not thinking now. No, yeah. no he's not thinking. He's gone. Yeah, he's yeah, playing purely he's on intuition. Just no. Purely instincts. Yeah, and he's uh, totally tilted. And he knows he can't make a draw, so he has to try and find a win. Yeah, no, he's going to keep making moves, but it's already a completely mindless tilt at this point. King one back. Wow. Impressive move. I would think you can finally escape, but yeah, you can never escape. There's too many lateral checks. You know, Richie is, uh, yeah, Richie very shaky right now. But you know, there could still be a plot twist here because Black is, of course, you know, in some chronic danger here, yeah, with the king. But he does have a past pawn to push, so white that cannot, uh, white cannot stand forever. White has to try and create a threat. Also, white has to be careful not to allow the threefold. Isn't it threefold? That's it. It's threefold. Is it? Must be. It feels like, but maybe it, it wasn't. It feels like threefold. Like, since both players so casually stepped over that moment. No, probably. now it really is. Oh, he just, he just gives wow, him a draw. He gives him a draw. He gave it up, wow. Yeah, he had, wow. he had, had enough. He's had enough. He, at some point, the yeah, nerves just... Yeah, yeah. No, he's like, okay, he, there's up. no win also. There's no win. There's no win and he... Uh, well, with that... Wow, epic. Harry Houdini act. Yeah, imagine you're escaping so much that the opponent just gives up at some point. Not only has Magnus Carlsen become Grenka Chess Classic 2024 champion, I owe you an Easter egg. Oh no, we're even. That's good news. Yes, nobody owes anybody an Easter egg. How did he do that? Magnus Carlsen, he was dead. He was dust. He was 
there was no hope. The, there were 20 positions in which he was just dead lost, but he just finds a way, finds a way, the pressure, the, the occasion, everything. He handles his nerves better. You saw Richard at the end, he was just, he was gone. He, he, he was making moves, but he couldn't calculate a single thing. And with that, we crown Magnus Carlsen the winner of this tournament. Yet again, not his first victory here. As it turns out, we're not totally done because we've got... No, but I have to say, this game, like, I have a feeling that it lasted for like five hours or something. We've been here but a long time, yeah. No, but it wasn't that long, but it, it was like, such an eventful game. It was a good two, hour, two and a half hour game. Yeah, it was so, so many twists and turns. And one thing uh, we should say uh, in Magnus's favor is that it was never a completely trivial win. No. Yeah? It, it was multiple wins that Richie can find. But it was always with a certain difficulty level. It was never that he could just collect or just give the one threat. He had to always go slightly beyond a certain level, yeah? So right. it was very hard, very hard for him to win. Great news is as commentators, of course, we don't get a single moment. There you go. Straight in. Not oh, a, we're back. We're not back. 10 seconds nice. for a cup of tea nice. or a coffee. No, but it's, it's better. It's better this better way. This week? Just yeah, get it yeah. Done. We, have to, we have to get it done and Out start celebrating. Start All celebrating. Right. The, party, the party has to start. Is there a party tonight? I mean, uh, not, not for me probably, but for uh, probably for the winner of the tournament. There's going to be a party. He's going to have a party, I guess. Let's see. We've got the third place playoff. MBL versus Vincent. A 10 minute plus two second game. This should go relatively quickly, you would expect. It's like yesterday's match, yeah? I mean, the same pace. Yes. By the way, ah, we get an Italian with the same opening that uh, just happened in that last game we exactly. watched. The players liked it. They were watching as they well, probably. And they thought, okay, let's repeat this. Poor Richard, gutting, absolutely gutting not to win that. Yeah. No, and after such a game, you feel like you already forgot, like, you are like something weird happened already, like, what did I miss, everything, you're like, you're like, you know, somebody hit you on the head a couple of times and you're just walking around, like, in these cartoons you have these things flying over your head, yeah, that's how you feel. Incredible. I wonder if we're going to get Magnus in here, actually. Um, he might come. Is he coming? Is, he's coming. Norwegian television, okay. So it looks as though we're going to get Magnus Carlsen in here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what can we say? Maxim Just thinking so long? Ah. What's going on here? Maxim taking a minute on this move? Surely not. Uh, I don't believe Yeah, it. he's taking his time. He's, uh, <laughs> okay, you're 94, Maxim. That's the point of the line. You just saw it now in the game of Magnus, come on. Speed 3? Oh wow. Yeah, you can do that. But normally you do that against the uh, move like A6 where knight A4 is prevented. Mm -hmm. But he does it anyway. You can, you can always do that. I mean, you can always play this position. Bishop E3 and then... You can always do this. And do the reverse thing. Knight A5, Bishop B3. Colors reversed. You are the one giving the bishop. You can do this. Why not? It was equal then. It's equal now. Just you are on a different side of it. Play on the F file. Right. Funny, very unprincipled treatment of the opening. But just a way to get a position. All right, let's see. Bishop b6, Vincent having none of it. Mm -hmm. so yeah, okay. it's also typical. Black often doesn't want to play along and open the f-file. Especially because in the blitz game, it's very easy to play then. Yeah. You just double on the f-file and start playing. Let's see here. We've got two games, by the way, no matter what. 12,000 people watching on one channel, uh, but um, yeah. Uh, oh, Hans won. Hans did, yeah. Hans won. And did Arjun finish the game as well? Wait, because Hans won the open? Did Arjun finish the game? That's the big question. Oh, yes, Hans won the open because Arjun made a draw. Hans won the What a the beautiful, opening. beautiful finale here. Magnus and Hans both winning their tournaments. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? Unbelievable. It's beautiful. Like a happy end to a movie. But that means Hans plays this tournament next year. 
Yes. Oh, yes. You understand? Yes, that's interesting. It has certain implications. It has certain implications. Is anybody withdrawing from this one in the future? I'm going to ask Magnus on air. No, he will not like you. He doesn't like uncomfortable questions. Yeah, that's okay. No, he, just wants you, he just wants you to I'm tell him how fun. amazing he played now yeah. and how he epic. What, uh, what kind of epic is I think Magnus likes it when I tell him the truth. And he'll tell you, no, nah, I was just lucky. And he'll be like, no, no, Magnus, it was amazing. He'll be like, no, nah, I was just lucky. And he'll be like, yeah. <laughs> I was amazing, yeah. I did, I did put up an amazing defense. That's what I always do. Okay, castles. He will say his head wasn't working well today. You yeah. are. Castles, castles. Yeah, we have some sort of a similar thing as we had seen. But uh, Black, Black is playing it much more safe this time than the way Magnus has played it. Very conventional. No, no weird queen c8 moves, no bishop g4s, just bishop e6, trade, trade. Take 6, c4, okay. This yeah, is I'm trying to grab some space, but this space is not too relevant. No. Um, Black will, you know, send stuff the other side of the board, queen e8, usually they go, knight e7, knight g6 sometimes comes, or some rook f8 comes. Easy to play this position. I mean, it's easy to play if you decide it's easy to play, you just make moves. But if you start going deep, you can, you can also make it difficult for yourself. Wow, d5. Okay, d5 okay that's, uh, that's also possible, of course. I was expecting a slow play on the f file, like queen e8 and d5, knight f4, queen g6, all the stuff. And suddenly it strikes in the center with d5. I like d5. Very different, uh, yeah, very different approach. I guess queen c2. Queen c2 looks completely standard. I guess you have to protect the, the e4 pawn. Now, how bad is it to release the tension here, like this? It's very risky. No. You have some pressure on the h file, that's, that's what you have going, like knight h5. Yeah. But I think you could do it without releasing, that's even stronger. Knight h5 directly. You don't need to release, that's the thing. Mm. Yeah, because this is really a threat sometimes. Uh, very much so. It's never too bad for black, and sometimes it's very good for black. This exchange sack is always, uh, always in the air. Yeah, he just took. Yeah, this is not a very ambitious treatment. I guess he... He just doesn't want to... He doesn't believe in this position. No, no, CD, CD, CD. This is a really dis surprising opening by Maxim, by the way. This is a really, like, non-attempt at all. Uh, be especially because he seems to have no clue, yeah? Just has no idea. He has no idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't really have... He's going to love that when he sees yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean... Shout out to all my Maxim. Like, from Move 6. No, no, but seriously, he, he basically is just sort of improvising, I think. Yeah, it's totally freestyling. Freestyling, and then if you're freestyling in a blitz game, you can easily get worse with white. We've all, been, we've all been there. You just decide, okay, this game I'm just gonna play. No theory, I'm just gonna play chess. And then, before you know it, you're worse. So your opponent is not freestyling. Your opponent is playing some plan that he knew. He analyzed with Peter Ligua. <laughs> Queen d6 on the board. Yeah, Black has undoubled his pawns, super happy with that. Yeah. And it's very comfortable. The only question is if White can somehow, White will probably try to liquidate somehow. But I don't even see how exactly to liquidate. I guess ED and D4 somewhere. Try to just... Uh, and ED, not D5? Yeah, and D4 or something. Really? Okay, just try to make some D4? ugly draw. Yeah, and I did so, but yeah, Rook E8, Queen G6, yeah, so it's a little bit tricky. Rook E8. Yeah, it's nice. It's, I didn't look at anything. No, I, I, I don't think you should take on five. But I don't understand why. Uh, okay, the CD is very unprincipled. It's a good witness. This is the sort of position that can go wrong for white. Oh yes, definitely. Very comfortable for black. Very comfortable. I think the position would look very normal if you reverse the colors, and black would be having white, and white would be having black. It would look very normal. But I think black has that sort of little advantage because black has more space in the center and nothing to worry about and it looks as though he's playing with the white pieces I'm trying to think if it looks like a neither or not not really a neither something similar Q 
seems slow, by the way. Seems slow. It's, it's, uh, I think he's. I think I've got a feeling he's just not that incentivized somehow to to win. Um, could be wrong, but I don't. There's prize money, right? You yeah, I guess this. What, what's he fighting for? Extra prize money? Must be. Must, must be. be. Yeah, no. I think that's not exactly the. I don't think it's not incentivized. I think it is incentivized, but I think it's just the. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird setting also. I mean, they were just an epic game for first place, and now they have to sort of play, and mm, yeah, he, he doesn't have a clear plan for this game. And he wants to win, of course, but just, he, yeah, it's not easy to manage. Uh, I think also he didn't prepare um, no. uh, for the second the white game. He prepared the English for, yeah. game, for game one. I think that didn't work out, because probably no. he didn't expect something from Vincent. And he didn't prepare for the second white game. So he thought, okay, I'll improvise some Italian. And he's improvising it, kind of. Which is okay for Blitz. I mean, Blitz, you don't have to prepare anything special. You can just play something. But then you risk that opponent will just get a comfortable position. All right, rook eight. I mean, this is just... Yeah, but position plays itself, of course. But yeah. uh, all that said... He's going to play rook d white is, white is fine. White is, white's position really reminds me a little bit of an Eidorf. Yeah, I know the one you mean where you... Oh, now I see it. It is, a, it is just an Eidorf where you've gone like f4, it takes f4. That's what's happening here. And knight b3, a b. That's, that it's, it's simply an Eidorf. That's yeah, what's happening. Yeah, it could be an Eidorf. Yeah, it's an Eidorf. So, uh, white is kind of more or less equalizing, mm. but uh, not not too. Don't mm. know. White, white is kind of playing like black, and it's kind of equalizing. Well, what do you do against knight takes e3 and take on d3 at the right moment? You try to win the e5 pawn. Knight h4. Knight h4 back. I think he wants to invite. Maybe invite them over repetition. Maybe, maybe jump out with the queen to g4. I think he's inviting a move repetition, but I'm not sure uh, Vincent's gonna take up on that invitation. Queen f6 is the most normal move. Queen f6? Yeah, that's the most normal normal yeah. square. Knight f3 and uh, queen. The question, yeah, I was wondering, isn't e4, ah, e4 d and queen b3 check, yeah, that's nice. It's very nice, yeah. Queen f7. Uh, the difference is that now knight f3 is losing to e4. Queen g4, yeah. Thematic. Now up to knight e3, f3, very instructive uh, moment incoming. Rook d3. The difference uh, between the pieces is very uh, striking. And the knight on c6 is cut out by the e pawn. And knight from h4 is coming into, into the game. So this is very dangerous for, for black, yeah. And queen g4 is cool. Vincent shouldn't go for uh, 93. Yeah, Vincent, of course, still heavily incentivized to, to try and win this mini match. Vincent is even more motivated. Of course, he's in front of his he's home fans. And he uh, hasn't been doing this well for a long time, you know? He's had some tough days at some point, and now he's fighting for third place. Very respectable. Right. Respectable finish. So Vincent is really, really thrilled. No, Maxim. I mean, Maxim is also motivated. Uh, I'm sure. It's just that the, yeah, the game hasn't been working out so far, and it looks like he's, you know, not doing amazing. But he, he's trying. He's trying. What's your score against Maxim lifetime? Oh, I've played him so many times. People underestimate how many draws Maxim has made in his life. Yeah. He's made insane amount of draws. Really. Like, uh, for example, a couple. Like once I was commentating a game. Um, Max, or I was looking at Maxim Ar playing Ar Aronian, yeah, the one uh, against Maxim. Two of the most exciting players, yeah, you think? The number of draws they made, absolutely nuts. Maxim, uh, I played many games with Maxim, insane amount of draws. Insane amount of draws with Maxim, it's crazy. Even for my standards. He's playing very sharp, very fighting chess, but I've had so many draws with Maxim. Okay, surprising. 
he's not a big risk taker, you know, Maxim. Yes. He's not a big risk taker. He has a very sharp st style, very active attacking style. He um, plays active openings, but a lot of the activity leads to trades, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and he doesn't take a lot of risks risks in positions where he can take a safe road also. So many people don't realize it. They always focus on uh, on me, on Wesley, on Rajabov, uh, on those who play solid openings. It's easy to, to notice that there are a lot of draws in, in games of players who play like the Berlin defense and Petrov and all that. And they don't realize that, that actually um, you can make a lot of draws with playing the, the Nidrov and uh, the Grunfeld. Mm -hmm. So Maxim has made also a lot of draws. I think very high drawing percentage in his games. Okay, King H2 on the board looks fairly normal. Um. Of course, absolutely world-class player, Maxim. But also, it's also why. My, one of my coaches said, the more draws you make, the stronger, uh, stronger you are, basically. It's a sign of strength, the draws. Top yeah. players make draws. Knight f4, bishop takes a four, rook takes four. Somehow four. in the trade, uh, Maxim got cheated, oh, yeah? yeah? Maxim got cheated. He lost the pawn in, in the yeah. proceedings. Yeah. Because now after knight e5, knight e5, rook e5, rook f2, Rook c7, rook dd2, suddenly you're losing. Yeah. He got cheated in the mass trades. It's like you walk out of a supermarket, you count the change, you look at the bill. What's going on? Money is missing. He just, he just, he's, he's pawned down for no compensation. Amazing. He assumed that it's a draw, but it's just not. And now he has to... Now he has to start defending. Oof, rook e3. Ugly. Just a full pawn down. Yeah, even you, now both takes and rook d5. Both are. Yeah, rook is rook e3, f rook f7 is just a pawn. Hard to convert, but a full pawn. Rook e7 and king f7. Yeah, it's just, it's just a pawn. Suffering. It's just a pawn. Suffering. Yeah, we were talking some nonsense, and uh, Vincent's been uh, trying to hustle a pawn. Trying to hustle a pawn. Yeah, it's an important moment here to decide for um, for Maxim, uh, for rather for Vincent to take or go to d5. Both are you are pawn down here, you are pawn down there. Hmm, rook d5. Okay. No, I think I would. I think it was uh, easier to to take and go back. G3. Because now the e5 pawn is isolated, but yeah, still uh, yeah, very very good for black. Very hard to convert, of course, this uh, queenside pawn, yeah? Mm -hmm. Very hard to convert. Draw might still be a favorite, but uh, Vincent's very happy with, that, with this position. Absolutely, and remember, it's 10, second, 10, 10 minutes plus 2 seconds per move. Gonna be, it's gonna turn into a fast blitz game very soon. It's you already so? a blitz game. 2 well, minutes each. Not really. Two, 2 seconds a move? Is that blitz? Yeah, blitz. I mean, that's like long play. Try playing bullet, 30 yeah. second chess. Yes. Ah, and it looks like we do have a special guest with us. So I'm going to let Anish depart. And uh, we've got, uh, well, you'll probably recognize him when he eventually comes on the screen. Let's see. Ah, we're ready to go. Are we? This is a close-up. Whenever you're ready, we've got the Grenka Chess Classic 2024 winner, Magnus Carlsen. Well done, champ. Thanks. Um, Harry Houdini wants his, uh, wants his credentials back. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a that was an escape artist uh, dream. That last one. Uh, yeah, um, I can just talk about like something from a little bit from the start. E um, yes. 
Yeah. Um, no, because I did something unbelievably silly there. Uh, you tell me where you want to go. We had a this Italian with knight c3. It all looked relatively normal. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. yeah. So this was, I think. I thought this was clever, but I'm not sure. Okay. Anyway. Okay, we um, keep on going. Where was the first? Um, okay. This. H3, bishop e6. Yeah, so the whole idea is for me is to go is to go for g5. Right. And um, yeah, so the, the the problem was here that I mean when he played bishop a4, first of all, I mean I didn't consider bishop a4 at all. Uh, but it's it's quite a clever move. Right. Um, I mean, computer was ah. Uh, Oh, he wants b5 takes and then take uh, and then bishop h3. Okay, that makes a little bit of sense. Oh, this actually works, does it? Yeah, I think it works. Yeah. C6, c6, bishop a4, and bishop takes h3. That's yeah. clever because yeah. you can. I can take a an bit h. Of an yeah, I can take an h4 later. I I mean I saw this in other lines that the bishop was hanging, but. Oh, but this is just a draw, is it? Yeah, this is just a draw. No, because I was considering things like m playing king f. But. I, I don't know. I, I don't think there was anything particularly wrong with c6, but I didn't want to play it. And then I thought bishop d7 was was really simple. Uh, but then he has this amazing trick, like I'm just really unco c2. uncoordinated because I would obviously like. I mean, knight g6. I mean, I, honestly, I I might as well resign as play a move like knight g6. It's just. It's just really horrible. Uh, the position. We, I we saw you on camera, and we saw how you were visibly upset with yourself yeah because okay let me just go through what i what yeah. i want i wanted to play g5 yeah right. mm -hmm. and then d4 yeah and now the idea is generally you want to go knight g6 but th this i think just loses to d5 d5 knight e5 uh -huh. and queen d4 right. this is like an, a really unusual tactical theme but i've just put my pieces on such horrible squares that this just works um and I, I was trying to I was trying to make d4 g4 work, um, but I didn't really I didn't really like it that much. Um, yeah, I thought hg bishop g4 um, queen d3 and he goes knight h4 next, and I thought my position was was quite yucky. Um, but I mean this, so that's why I decided just to go knight g6 instead. But again, like even this is better than what I did. Now knight h two, like, um, yeah, this is like beyond horrible. Um, it just goes f four, and I'm just positionally completely busted. Uh, and yeah, okay, I mean, I actually missed like my best chance here. D four. I don't. I mean, I I, I don't know if it loses, but I think I should go d five here. Oh really? Um, and then knight e five, knight e four, and to hope for some bishop b four, queen g five trick. Oh, it doesn't even work. It's so queen c one. Okay, yeah, whatever. Um, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> position is not good. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Um, but yeah. You tried rook a5. I yeah, rook a5. This was desperation. Uh, queen d3. Yeah, d5. This is after desperation as well. But I just like. But there was one uh, idea here. You could have gone rook e8, and on rook f one to go rook g5. And it's not totally straightforward. Oh, so e5 doesn't win. E5 doesn't win. I tried it. Trust me, I tried it, and it just doesn't win. Take. Oh, take some bishop c6. Ugh. No, there's no, there's an important rook f6 e4. Yeah, yeah, of course. This I saw. But I thought d5 and... Bishop c6. But I didn't see bishop... Ah, I didn't see this. With the uh, counter-attack down here. Yeah. There was a draw in MBL versus... Oh, was it a draw? make a draw? Did he make a draw quickly? Just very quickly check. Yeah. Oh, he ran into a perpetual. Okay. Okay. Uh, so MBL escaped luckily with a yeah. draw there. We've got another game, but we're going to carry okay, on. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. So, so D5, we felt 
well. No, I mean, it's utter desperation. Uh, I mean, I should have gone for rookie 8, rookie 5. Yes. Uh, but I, d I didn't see bishop c6. c6. I only saw d5, rookie 5, and, okay. and knight g4. And, uh, like, rook g5, then rook f6, and he checks all the way to f6, and I'm mated. Yes. Take with the other rook, then knight g4. And, yes. And, um, I have just lost. Um, so yeah, but this is very clever, what he did, actually. Yeah, b5, we thought you were going to true. what else? Yeah, no, 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 this is uh, rook a6. Yeah. Because if he, if he doesn't have this trick, then I can sort of... Wiggle. I can sort of wiggle, yeah. Queen, so queen of 3 but this is just... D6 is super Yeah, strong. D6 is so good. Um, obviously, the point is c5, then g5. That was my whole idea. Right, exactly. Yeah. But here, I'm just... Yeah, you did um, what we thought. Yeah. And now you played the only move, actually. Yeah, it, it's like it's also remarkable how lost my position is after rook a6, d5. Uh, for instance, g5, rook, e, uh, rook d4, queen e7, queen c3. Yeah. I just have no, yeah, this is like beyond lost. Like you just can't find yeah. shelter. No, no, no. Um, Brutal. But you found, the, you found the move which. Yeah, but I. Which, uh... Bishop c6, queen of two. But I was shocked that he didn't... Um, that he didn't go for knight g4. Yeah, but that uh, with rook takes g2 at the end? Yeah I, it's yeah, I think it's fairly straightforward. Fairly straightforward? So this yeah, is the, the line. Queen e7, queen e7, queen e7 is right. four, is knight of six. Rook e2, queen g3. Uh, yeah, first of all, like, rooks, rook c2, then ah, yeah. d5. And Rook, rook c2 we looked at as well, and d5, but this yeah. is clinical. Because after this you've got rook 4 f2. And importantly, after takes, takes... You oh, I didn't even see this. You did? What? Yeah, I didn't see this. Somehow I just thought... Rook f2 first? Ah, instead of, you mean here, rook 4f2. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, queen f2, uh, and then d5. And yeah. d5, and queen d4 at the end. Yeah. yeah, it's absolutely correct. Um, uh, no, but I, I was intending to take the queen, but I, I didn't believe in it one bit. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he t he t so he takes everything on g2. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, without, no, oh, you're sorry, taking wait, wait, bishop wait. too much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it takes everything. Um, and yeah, queen e6 I thought was the best try of it. I mean, it's, ugh. it's horrible, but you know what? Yeah, You've I mean, I'll, go, I'll go c6. And, but I, 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 I had no faith in my ability to hold this. I had faith in your ability to hold yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, judging from the game, then <laughs> it's not unreasonable. <laughs> Uh, um, okay, yeah, bishop b3. Bishop b3 played. Yeah, still now, good enough. Now I had, now I had some hope. Yes. For it. Um, g5, rook f5 only. Then, yeah, the next series of moves are just only moves here. Yeah, no, he could have taken the pawn on e6. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, after I go bishop d3. But yes. nobody, nobody plays like that. But I, I, I didn't see what to do after that. Um, rook e6 and. Bishop f1, knight f1, and I just have nothing. No discovery, nothing? No. And uh, I mean, his queen is finding e5 very quickly if I try and do something. Uh, but, but yeah, rook d1 like, still keeps a huge edge. But I, I had some hope. Mm. Yeah. We felt, sure. we felt the hope yeah. on the screen. We saw the hope. But fair play to Richard, he played well this next phase, it was not bad. Yeah, I wasn't sure, sure. I, I wanted to prevent him from putting his knight on e5. Right. I thought if he gets the knight to e5, I'm just getting mated. Right. That's what Maybe I that is not so. Apparently you've got some just ridiculous move here, which I don't understand. Yeah. I, I thought what I did was logical, but... Yeah. Um, Queen of f8. Tricky. Yeah, Very tough. I thought what I did was logical, but um, here, knight of two, 
all logical. Uh, now he's 94. Really, this is a really nice move. And then H minus. Uh, and if it takes knight h3, is really over. Um, yeah, my bishop is suddenly out of play. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're not this good. Um, but knight e4 was also kind of. Yeah, knight e4 is also. Good enough. Yeah. And Anish was slightly critical of your next move here. Yeah, uh, no, that move was too impulsive. Yeah. Um, but. I mean, it's really sad for me regardless, but maybe I can, can sort of at least pretend to try and hold. Because yeah. I, I, I'd completely uh, underestimated g3 afterwards. Ah, all the way here, yeah. so it takes. Yeah, um, and this was a good move by Rickard not allowing g3. And yeah, yeah. Fixing things. What did I do here? I did queen f5, rook f4, and then king, yeah, king f2 is excellent. Yeah. And here, what did I do? Yeah, queen b3. Uh, so, I mean, it, it is gone here, but... Yeah, no, it, it, it is, but I mean, it's he not... He still has to win. It's not resignable quite yet. And then, I mean, c6 was insane as well. It does nothing to improve my position, and it just weakens my king. Okay. <laughs> Um, but you have to find a move. Yeah, so I have to do something. I could have gone like king. How bad can it be? Um, yeah, okay, he went check. And this is where he. Yeah. Like, around here, this was in good. Yeah, no, I, I mean, honestly, I, I hadn't seen e5 from afar. So I thought, like, if he finds rook f7, I'm just going to resign. But then he spent a lot of time on it. So I thought, maybe I'm missing something. And then, yeah, I saw e5, and I was thinking to myself, huh, already then, maybe it's a good thing I didn't resign. <laughs> so, key to beating you in the future is play quick, with real confidence, yeah. don't give you time to think that your opponent found a resource. Yeah. No, no to Magnus challenges. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, yeah, here I had a little bit of hope. Yeah, somehow I also... I mean, unfortunately, I cannot take the pawn on e5 because right. um, then I lose the queen, but right. queen c5, and I'm, I'm not losing... I'm not losing quite yet. No, absolutely. Um, so what did he do? He played this is rook fine. f5. Yeah, queen e3. Queen e3, I think, was a bad move. Um, queen is too exposed there. Um, I guess it doesn't matter that much, because now he played king h3, king e7. Yeah, this is where we just yeah. started to lose a bit of the plot. Yeah, no, no, this here. is not ideal. No, this whole sequence was not good. But so the question is, what was what was better? Um, no, already it's. Yeah, I mean these positions are surprisingly hard to win. Right. Okay, we can just go forward yeah. a bit. Um, we'll like the... things happened, of course. Here, here, I thought I was holding. Um, yeah, I was at least now. Uh, this was yeah. Yeah, queen e five, and now, now I thought I was. I didn't think I was out of the woods, but now I thought the position was probably objectively, objectively drawn, uh, since I'm winning the pawn by force. So this. Yeah, uh, we. Thought okay, this was over. over. Yeah, overkill, right? <laughs> yeah, over because thought. you did end up losing. Uh, yeah, because I know from experience, like I've seen these positions before, like king and rook. The, those positions are very often drawn, like king, two rooks, and one pawn. Like you cannot actually shepherd the pawn easily. No, like often, like actually, like having a knight instead of one of the rooks, sometimes better. Um, because the knight protects yeah, the, the knight, checks. Yeah, the knight protects the checks, and the, like the rooks are remarkably, um, remarkably bad at that. Um, but yeah, I was just yeah. King, king three was a little over. Yeah, that was a bit overzealous. Yeah. Um, but he he was so short of time here as well. Yeah. Uh, so what did he do? Rook f three. Yeah. You took. And here I, I thought I was completely fine. Yes. King g two. Five is and rook g3. And <laughs> now I made this. Queen d5 was a big blunder. Yeah, yeah, now I made this insane check. Like, I could just push. Yeah, you can just push. Yeah, I could just push, yeah. But queen d5, I thought, like, this is super easy. Uh, 
I'm just giving checks. But okay, would it? But it's 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 just horrible. Like uh, I was way too too relaxed here, and now I thought I was just lost again. Um, Twenty-five. Yeah. Rook f2, king b1, and now I have no clue why he didn't push he just the pawn. Put, yeah, just push I have it. no idea. It's just a straightforward win. Yeah. There's just, yeah. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing, no. Uh, yeah, he got nervous visibly. He, yeah. Maybe he was, all, I mean, Anish commented that, you know, against you especially, but players get a bit annoyed that you haven't folded yet. No, but I it? haven't folded. Like, I but made it all the way back. And then I got my king in a mating in that <laughs> for no but reason. You see, but you still find like a queen e5, yeah. but you still Yeah, thinking. yeah, but I mean this was this was like fairly I guess like you want to win without a race. That's the thing, but he probably thought he was gonna win a lot earlier as well. In, oh, in for, the game, for sure. Right? No, no, absolutely. So he was already yeah. the nerves and so on, and then yeah, he just Yeah, this Around here, it was clear he was playing on autopilot without thinking. No, no, here he was, yeah, I, did, I think he'd stopped thinking long ago at this yeah. point. Uh, okay. And now king e1, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm back in the game. Yeah. Uh, rook f5. Oh, this is a blunder as well. Okay, but this is less obvious. Yeah, this apparently still wins. I was thinking about it, like, maybe queen e4 is bad because my queen is exposed, but I'll act. Like, I, I couldn't think. Why does this lose after king e? Uh, why does this lose after king e two? Just g five and that's it. Yeah, I mean, g five and my pawns are. And the king hides here. Yeah, but my pawn pawns are helpless. Like his rooks are brilliant on the third row. No. Okay. Um, rook g one. Um, yeah. And then yeah. Now it's finally. <laughs> now he has nothing. <laughs> All right, well, pff, wow, I mean, tough tournament. You know, even though it was a rapid tournament, so tense, I felt. Um, how do you assess, in general, your level of play? Because I can say you had maybe, maybe one bad day, but the rest of the days were pretty, pretty decent, I would say. Yeah, I think if we exclude, like, the last game and, and the first four probably I, I think like yeah. in the middle I played really well um, and I'm very happy with the level that I showed there even the first game today I thought was um, uh, was quite it was great uh, great was opening quite good. preparation yeah uh, it was quite good how, how deep just out of interest I'm not going to get the game up but just so people can cross reference how, how deep did you go no I, you, I only you? knew like uh, he plays a lot of things like you don't necessarily expect him to repeat lines that are <laughs> that are like considered a bit dubious so I, I only like I knew that this queen h3 and bishop h5 was was one idea okay. and I didn't know like what to do after g6 but I sort of assumed that you know uh, it's operation dark squares after that operation dark squares <laughs> yeah <laughs> provoke yeah. the dark squares all right um, look you must be tired uh, I know your family's here as well, so we won't keep you for long, but uh, it's been fun watching you again, I have to say. Yeah. Thanks so much, and uh, congratulations. I think overall, definitely deserved the win, and uh, yeah, have fun. I don't know if there's a prize giving now or something like that. There's a ceremony. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, enjoy that, and I'll catch up with you a bit later. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Magnus. Magnus Carlson. Brother, Rinka Chess Classic winner 2024. And, you know, to me, he's just, you know, God, he sees a lot of stuff. He sees a lot of stuff. Yeah, of course, and he understands. He really uh, understands well chess to a pretty yeah. good level. Yeah, I'm slightly, slightly pity we missed the after if I D D of course was also a move. That's the funny when you're looking at the computer you don't realize that. If I D D. Yeah, the, of course you have to see D bishop c6. That, ah, is, uh, that is the bishop thing he missed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny. Um, okay, Vincent. Uh, Vincent actually drew the first rap. Yeah, game. something happened there. Uh, you want to go through that or no, no need? Let's just let's just. Uh, well, we can't do that. I mean, what is this? Very briefly, maybe. Very briefly, we've got. Uh, this is the other game, I think. No, this is the second game. Second game, yes. 
some random anti No, this is the current game, yeah. Yeah, this is the current yeah, 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 game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is 2 Grimfield, yeah. I faced it a lot. A5. Oh, A5 Cute is move. rare, yeah. Probably try to move. try to surprise him. Yeah, I like it. But he didn't follow it up with the A4, so <laughs> very strange actually. Which is very strange. That makes a little sense. Yeah, they're just freestyling something. Very un unusual uh, position, just freestyling something. Mm -hmm. But now it's sort of like this uh, Karokan thing, where mm. you... this Kalsbad thing. It looks good again for white C4. Yeah, it does. It does. You've given up your light squared bishop, so... How good is it? Okay, C4, yeah, now transition to pawn structure. Yeah, you get the nice hanging pawns there, yeah, with the 995. Vincent with a chance to clinch the third place suddenly. Yeah. But it's a little bit low on time. Play play three. Okay, he didn't go for the transition of the pawn structure, which was very, very attractive. Bishop a3 is uh, logical, improving, improving the bishop. White is missing light, the light squared bishop, otherwise white would be doing tremendous. But even without the bishop, still some trumps. I like this knight on e5, yeah, always nice. Rook e1, e5. Somewhere you go for some kingside play with h4. Yeah, now definitely uh, some kingside plays uh, is called for, yeah? Some g4 action, definitely possible. Yeah, play, good. Bishop e6. Yeah, now c4 is, c4 is now very well timed, yeah? Queen f3, that's the move I would have played. Queen f3 first. Runs into a horrible... Oh, lots of things, bishop h6, bishop 94 h6. is, is oh, a massive nice. issue. Oh, he just blundered, blundered into that. Oh wow. my goodness. C4 was really good there, huh? Yeah, C4 was strong, but this is really strong. Yeah, now it's a total takeover. And Vincent shaking his head. Yeah. yeah, a complete takeover town. 94 is uh, massive. No, massive turnaround. A boy's position is somewhat collapsing. Why is losing material, isn't he? Just losing material here. Okay, so Maxim might uh, actually clinch it. If Maxim wins this game, it's all over. He's taking the third place. Absolutely, yeah. So G4, Bishop H6. Um, yeah, very difficult because now 94 is coming and it's, it's just... Uh, all the options are bad. Uh, very hard to choose which uh, bad position is the best. Yeah, and also there's B3 points. You can uh, go for some kind of exchange sack somewhere, or you can go for total retreat strategy, like queen d3, knight e4, knight ef3, retreat with your pieces. This is just horribly unpleasant. But you don't lose material, probably. You just are positionally busted, and you will probably lose material slightly later in the game. Um, so yeah, yeah, I would, of course, uh, encourage an exchange sack instead, but I don't really know how to sack it. Vincent down to less than two minutes as well. Not a long time on the clock. This is MBL's chance. This is his chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maxim is, uh, is there. Van, Maxim is dialed in. Rook C2 played. Yeah, but 94. Now, now you can win the... Okay, this is nice now. You could have also won the uh, C3 pawn, but 94 is very strong. Yeah. After taking only 4 B3 pawn is hanging. Exactly. Black is winning material. White's position is collapsing. Collapsing. Absolute collapsing. Look at this. Yeah, rook b2, bishop d5. That's c4. Okay, c4, give up that exchange. Bishop b4, queen e4. Okay, and yeah, you technically lost, but some hope. b6, c5, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some, uh, some hope. Rook b7. Look, after what we've just seen with Magnus, you uh, can't give up. No, that game, I mean, uh, he, he, he said it very well. When you said that Richard... Uh, Stop thinking at this point, and he said that it, he stopped thinking a long time ago. That was, that was, yeah, at some point, Richard, Richard sort of. When do you think he just basically stopped thinking? Um, after, I, I, after, after E5. So the moment uh, he was going to win the game, yeah. he was nicely winning the game, then he thought there is a rook g7, rook f7 thing, then he saw E5 is there, and that's where he stopped seeing it. Like, he just sort of, he sort of, there, there's no longer a forced win or anything, and from that moment on, he started just playing, just playing on instinct, and um, he, yeah, he didn't mobilize himself to find that G, G4 push, G5 push. 
We have this position, bishop takes b3 will be played, I'm sure. Also, some positions you cannot really be thinking, like what is there to think about? Like there's no more horse to win, you have no time, you just have to play. So yeah, what do you want him to do? No, Richard had a difficult task. Uh, we are following that uh, forced line that we have uh, outlined already. But Vincent is quite lucky in the end that he is not uh, completely lost after missing the entire sequence. He's not completely lost. There is some chances there. Okay, he has to go rook b2. I don't know why he's... Um, Burning too much time. 26 okay. seconds. I, I know what he's trying to do. He, he wants, he's he trying wants to, to queen c4. f7. Some, yeah, yeah, some, some kind of queen f7, bishop b2 thing. Like c4, bishop c2, queen f7, king h8, bishop b2. Something like that. G5? Oh, mamma mia. Ah, cool, cool. What is, what's the point now? <laughs> bishop g5? No idea. Okay, it's almost made. Bishop g5, c4, bishop c2, queen f7, king h8, knight g6, a g. Almost made. But yeah, rook h4 is, is not quite made. It's, it's almost, but it's not. It's not. Yeah, but after g5, bishop g5, there's nothing, right? Computer doesn't find anything. What does he want, though, bishop g5? I think he's just desperate. Yeah, but what, what, what kind of Trying ghost? Again. What kind of ghost? Oh, he has 14 seconds. Yeah, he has No, he time. just made a move. Yeah, he just made a mm. move. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no, no trick. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize he has 14 seconds. I don't know what, what happened. Where did all the time go? It's, of course, a very fast game. Yeah, no, it's so nothing. Well, Maxim is collecting. Maxim is taking the third place. He's collecting. There's nothing. C4 triangle. Yeah, no, yeah, that, 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 that mate is not there. Yeah. yeah, bishop b2 or something he'll make, but it's just, it's just not there. There's no mate. No, you cannot play bishop b2. I collect the rook. Yeah, no, now rook of 8 or any, anything. Rook of 8? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even just, yeah, no, everything. Five. He's up a rook, yeah? Rook. Black is up a rook and uh, has a better position. No, this is a game over. I can resign here. Bishop c1. No, this is completely uh, game game over. Well, Maxim is uh, winning the final game of the tournament. There you go. MVL. He'll probably take on e5, though. Yeah. D rook d8. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah. Nice, and Vincent nice. just could not. Yeah, one big mistake allowing Bishop h6 and. Yeah, he just all collapsed and after one move. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So. With that victory, we have got clear final standings. Winner is Magnus Carlsen, as we've already seen. Second is Richard Rappel. Third is Maxime Vachier Legras. Fourth is Vincent Keimer. Fifth is Ding. And sixth is Daniel Friedman. And there will be a closing ceremony now, no doubt. We can see Sven Noppers on stage. Um, I don't know if the production team want to keep that going. However, uh, that is up to them. But I think for us, we're going to sign off. And maybe they'll just keep some images of the closing ceremony. It's been a pleasure, Anish. Thank you. It's yeah, been really it's been good been fun. I hope we can do this. Tournament? Yeah, I, th I hope we can do this again someday in the near future. Not too yeah. far. Um, and I want to thank, of course, everybody watching at home. Uh, we've had a big turnout today. Uh, so thank you, everybody who's watching, wherever you were watching, across all the channels. Thank you to the team here, the guys in the studio, of course, Tadeus, Tatiris, and everybody else from working from home, um, the whole uh, chess.com team. And everybody here, Sven Noppers, the whole Grenka team who uh, made this possible. We've had a thrilling tournament, yet again. Lots of ups and downs, all the excitement and drama that you could hope for. But it's more of the same status quo. Magnus Carlsen <laughs> wins yet another tournament. Uh, but he, he made this one look exciting he, in the end. He made it exciting. He, he had to fight very hard. Good content, I think. Good content. Fantastic content. He had to fight hard, but he got there in the end. Magnus Carlsen, Grinker, Chess Classic Champion 2024. We'll be back again next year, no doubt. But from me, Anish, and the rest of the team, I bid you a very happy Easter, happy Monday. See you all very soon. Thank you. 
Every chess master was once a beginner. Ich möchte dich fragen, möchtest du meine Frau werden? Ja. 